Hello, welcome to Sewing Street. Oh, we're all very, very excited for today. It's, um, you know, I know it's very, very early, but when you've got, <laughs> when you have Wendy Orlando sat next to you, here she is. Oh my gosh, I must say, I, I saw yesterday on the schedule that I was on with Wendy and I thought, I'm going to message her and then I thought, no, because then she might swap off or she, I, because I've not seen you, you've been avoiding I'm so me for excited. about a year. I'm so excited. <gasps> well, you were like, <laughs> Last time I saw you, and now you're like nearly, they're nearly one. Yeah, I know. Where have you been all my life? No, Wendy? where have you been? Oh, we've got so much. Oh, we're very excited to have Wendy here. We've got Jane Green up here as well. You can't, you couldn't write it. We've got such a fabulous, fabulous day. Uh, and we're going to get straight into Wendy's show in just a moment. But first, we're going to do the early bird special. Now, this is a very, very last. Um, minute, very last minute early bird, so it might not appear um, as it normally does on the website. So you're going to have to get in now. If you would love extra wide backing fabric, I say backing fabric, just extra wide beautiful cotton fabric that you can use for all sorts. This morning we realised we didn't have an early bird, so we've messaged Hayley, asked if we can do something amazing, um, and we thought maybe we could do it on one of the other fabrics. Didn't think we'd be able to do it on this because this is brand new. This has never been to air before. I'm thinking like really big, extra large bean bags for the garden or, you know, to back a beautiful quilt. Or if you do want to back the quilt that Wendy's making, do you need two meters? Two meters of extra wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 12 pounds 99, um, not today. This is going to be so special. Honestly, for fronts of cushions, for backs of cushions, for linings of bags. Bearing in mind, this is double the width of your regular fabric cotton for $10.99. Wendy, do you want to hold the oh, one side of it? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see the other side of it. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that lovely as well? And you know when they say backing fabric? That's ridiculous. You presume it's lower quality, but this could be the front of a quilt. It's this gorgeous. could be the front of a bag. This could be the front of cushions. You can have this however you want. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Dressmakers as well, imagine. Because it's got a really dress. beautiful drape to it. Yeah. Lovely. 100% cotton, cotton weight cotton. Even if you're sort of fussy cutting some of these small elements. Oh, it's lovely. Bearing in mind, thank you, Wendy, for your normal, you know, 112 wide quilting weight cotton you're generally paying about let's be conservative and say 749 or 699 even a half meter you're getting double the width of your regular and it's this lovely royal blue i love that i tell you what that's going to look really nice as well with your kits from today it's going to look really really nice oh lots of you who are multi-buying 10 pounds 99 no, that's not our screen, I don't think. Wendy got very excited <laughs> thinking that we could see all the names <laughs> coming in then. Um, just £10.99, a half metre. If you are multi buying, remember it's going to be cut off the bolt for you. So, for example, if you are backing the quilt from today's show, that's four units, two metres. Which, if you actually start thinking about the saving when you're multi buying on units, you're saving eight pounds if you're buying four units. And this is brand new, never even been to air before. Last minute early bird, make the most of it whilst you can, while stocks last. Um, yeah, very, very popular. This is a better early bird than we thought it was going to be. So the fact that we've got brand new fabric, fantastic. I do love the mandala. Me too. Really nice. That would also be a quilt on its own right, because the one thing I love when you use the extra wide is that it, it turns the quilt into a double-sided quilt, ah. which is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. So when you great. want it just plain, just turn it over. Yeah. And then when you want to see the pattern. I'm thinking for anybody who's, you know, got the new fancy sewing machine that's got the stitch regulator, or if you want to be able to practice your free motion quilting and you don't want to be doing you know, lots of patchwork on the front. You could just literally, like you said, use your extra wire, do it front and back and quilt it and practice your free motion. It, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. It'd be great, especially as we're getting to that time of year. We are getting to that time of year <laughs> where it's going to be more spring and summer, going out and, you know, having a picnic blan blanket or something would be really nice. It'd be lovely. Perfect. Imagine. Oh, imagine the sun. <gasps> It was really lovely yesterday. And then all of a sudden it just started pouring down out of nowhere. And I looked to the right of me and it was 
blue sky, like completely sunny, and the other side was just black clouds. Did you look for a rainbow, was it? We did have a rainbow. Good, yes. Me and Maze were like, come on, let's find the rainbow. It's got to be a rainbow. There's got to be a rainbow somewhere. You sound like me. My family think I'm crazy because <laughs> as soon as I see the front of the house sunny okay. and the, the back, I'm out there looking, looking for a rainbow. For a rainbow. <laughs> okay. We're going to leave that with you. Keep going through for that. Remember that that is your early bird today. Right, so today is a little bit different in terms of timing. So I want to show you the menu as we have got lots of guests and slightly different timing. So this hour, whole hour with Wendy Orlando doing the Entwined with Love quilt. This is one of those kind of illusion blocks, illusion quilts, which you are gonna absolutely love. Now, when Jane Green, I've looked at it, she says, oh my word, like how on earth do you do that? It looks so complex. It looks really complicated. Look at this. <gasps> We're gonna break it down and it's really easy. It's really easy. Wendy's nodding at me like, yeah, you're all gonna be able to do it. And I'm gonna call it, it's one of the most affordable quilt kits I have ever ever seen and that one includes liberty fabric so watch this space that's going to be brilliant that's the eight o'clock hour then at night it's going to be an hour and a half show with jane greenoff brand new march tiles and what bows to match we've got the tree of life back lots of people have been asking about the tree of life um we've got oh my gosh some beautiful samplers We've got, there's your tile, that's your March tile. I think that was the February and the March. There's January, February, March. And then we also have got in that show this beautiful wisteria. There's loads of treats as always with Jane. So that's nine until uh, 10.30. Then Wendy's going to be back for an hour, 10.30 to 11.30, and she's designed a beautiful pinwheel cushion where you're going to be able to make two matching pinwheel cushions. It's got really lovely... Um, so the texture, it's one of those nice, how do I describe it, Wendy? Tactile. Yes, it is. Because it, it's got bits that you can like, um, it's padded around the outside. So it, yeah. Three-dimensional. It's it's really Three-dimensional, that's the word, three-dimensional. Bit of origami going on there. Mm, yes. Very nice. Coming up later on at 10.30 and then 11.30 until one o'clock, we have got um, lovely Kerry back. Now, I've never met Kerry. Just been talking to Wendy about Kerry. I've just been talking to the team. And she is amazing, a fountain of knowledge, and creates the most... Wow, she's got the most incredible book that she's bringing to us. You're nodding. Yep. <laughs> well, crochet. I crochet. love crochet. You know. But have you worked with one of the books before? Have you um, seen one of the books? I've seen them. Yeah. Yes. Oh, lovely. Stay lovely. tuned. Stay tuned. They're going to be coming up at 11.30. Everything is on pre-order. Fill your boots. Go for it. Don't forget your early bird. But shall we start this lovely entwined with love? Um, hang on. I've got the... Um, yeah, we can start in the lovely Liberty colourway. These beautiful pinks. Okay. Right. Entwined with love. And I promise you it's going to be achievable. Look at the price. This is Liberty. I know that, Wendy, you did work with the team and you, when I said, well, how much is this going to be, especially with Liberty? And you said, oh, I'm really intrigued because I really wanted it to be accessible and affordable. And we've been very clever. Yes, it is Liberty fabric, but we've um, paired it with the, the planes, yeah. which means we can bring it to you. You still get that stunning design, but yeah. it does mean it's more affordable because this is... Um, this is larger than I would normally do. So this yeah. is a really nice size quilt. Oh, it is. I mean, I remember back in the day when we first started doing quilts with yourself, Wendy, and we'd have obviously, and we still do, have the boxes, the quilt kits, and you would be looking over 150, sometimes over 200 pounds for a quilt of that size. You would, yes. So, I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> now, in the Liberty, it isn't just a half metre. You have got a whole metre and a half so you've got loads of Liberty beautiful designer fabric. And then in the white, you're getting two meters. Is that white or cream? Cream. cream yeah. Well, it's, Sorry, it's kind of an off-white, off -white. isn't it? And then you've also got two meters of your lovely fuchsia or hot pink. So I'll tell you exactly the names of them in case you wanted to add extra because this is also uh, we've got the sashing in between, so you could do this as quilt as you go if you choose. So if you want to continue this colourway and make it even bigger, then that's pomegranate and did you say cream or ivory? You've got pomegranate here is that lovely pink, and then ivory, and the liberty is of course Emily Bell. 
uh, just $64.99. Loads of these in baskets. You do also get your instructions included. I mean, let's just break that down. That is ridiculous. Bearing in mind, your instructions today are available. And I'm presuming, are they, what, $14.99 or $12.99? Yeah? Are you going to do it? Oh, we're going to do it. $9.99. Brilliant. So the instructions are £10 anyway. And then a metre and a half of Liberty and loads of other fabric as well. This is enough. I mean, I'm presuming, I'm saying here, to be able to do the whole top of your quilt, including your binding. You've done a scrappy binding. I've done a scrappy binding. And it works it, with yes. the amount. I, I had enough to do with the scrappy binding. Uh, we never include the binding with it. Yeah. But yes, I, I squeezed it out of there. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> $64.99 um, and Wendy, I'm looking at the pattern and you can see here, I mean, this is squares and half square triangles, yes. it's, it's. which is absolutely brilliant because it's very, very clever the way you've designed it, that you've got this really cool entwined. Um, but it's square. honestly, it's just squares and half square triangles. <gasps> and I am going to say it as it is now, it's big, so there is quite a lot. So by the end of it, that you're going to be a half square triangle whiz. But how big is that block? The the block, yeah, um, is sixteen inches. Oh, right. So if you wanted to just do, you know, cushions, or if you wanted to do, you could do it as a small four four by four, and then and you this could is have when I design something. I always design it so that you can have something else as well. So you could make it into a bag. You could make it into a cushion. <gasps> Um, you can make it into a table runner, a bed runner. Yeah. You only have to use... Well, if you one. think of the block, you could do four, four patch, and have that over like a chair or something. Then you've got a four that's running down the side you could have as a, a you know, a bed runner. And then you've got four extra for cushions. So you don't have to make <gasps> a quilt this size. The only thing that I would say that it's been designed for the quilt and the fabric works yeah. perfectly for that size quilt. Yeah. Yes, if you've got um, maybe put some more in the basket of a certain colourway, you could always turn yeah. it into something else. Seven left, by the way. There's only seven remaining. Um, we had quite a lot of these. Mm -hmm. uh, just so you know, the finished size of the quilt is 52 and a half inches by 70 mm. inches. For less than 65 pounds, that is a whopper. Now, just so you know, there's over 20 of you have got it in your baskets. There is now less than and that 10. was really important for me <laughs> that we i made it as big as i could and kept the price down as as <laughs> as affordable as we could oh my word uh, the instructions are always ever so clear we're going to go through yep. the block obviously might not get a chance to do the whole block but we'll talk through as much as we can <laughs> um but oh my gosh a whopping quilt for less than 70 pounds and can i just remind you a liberty quilt for under 65 pounds Oh my word, that is just something to get very, very excited about. Enjoy. We do have another couple of um, bundle options. This one is about to sell out. There's two left. I think this is going to be a full sellout show, but we will still obviously do the, the demo. There's now 34 of you have got it in your basket. So we'll leave it there. The Liberty is going to be a sellout. Now, this is where it gets a bit wild. £65, you would presume, is going to be the price on all of them. Obviously, that is Liberty. So that is the more considered option I'm saying very loosely now the one that that Wendy's going to be working with and I must say this wouldn't have been my number one choice until I saw your block exactly can I just show of course how it's all coming together how pretty is this that is beautiful. Because I'm very aware that there are not everyone likes as bright as I do. Um, so if you've got a conservatory that's mainly yeah. cream, then you can just add a little bit of colour into it. So spring-like. It's the yeah. lavender and this lovely sort of powder blue. Gorgeous. Beautiful. I must say, when I first saw the kit, I thought, no, I'm, I'm all about this bright Liberty. I love it. But we've got something for everybody with the bright Liberty the deep moody blues which i love and then these are perfect okay are you ready to see the price on this as soon as we bring in those graphics just add it to your basket as soon as you can and check out we've got just to remind you a meter and a half of your beautiful quarter weight cotton and then you've also got two meters of your powder blue and you're getting two meters of white this time go for it ben just so you know, Liberty completely sold out as far as I'm aware. It's less than 50. Is this a smaller size quilt? It's exactly the same size quilt. Um, 
Is it white? Sorry, I'm, I'm asking because we again I've made it in the cream. Oh, sorry. You tell me the colours, Ben. You tell me the actual breakdown. But if it is in the cream, it is probably cream. Ivory, ivory, Brilliant. ivory. Yeah, because because I always try and put the the, the block colour. Uh, highlight the background and this is ivory not white so i want sorry it no that's my bad okay. thank you for correcting me wendy okay. so i just saw <laughs> i can't see it from here <laughs> you've got the uh the floral it's already gone straight into baskets third of the stock has gone can i remind you the finished size of the quilt is 70 and a half inches by 52 and a half inches it is a big quilt um i, I must say the value for money i have Oh, what's happening to the messages? Right, oh, this is a beautiful quilt. I can't wait to my, make mine. That's from Sue in Norfolk. That makes you very excited, doesn't it, Wendy? <laughs> I, did, I did a little. You, you see, not very. Not everyone sees my little happy dance. You were. <laughs> that was exclusive to you then. We love your little happy <laughs> dance. Show everyone again. <laughs> Forty-nine ninety-nine. Oh yeah, Ali says. I wish I just bought you live during the intro. Us both dancing as we were coming into the show. Dun, dun. Yeah. It's the sewing, sewing, <laughs> sewing, so it's the intro theme we love. Right, this is another gonna be another sellout. If you have got it in your baskets, just be aware. Entwined with love quilts. I, I did not expect to be waking up, you know, eight o'clock this morning and seeing a quilt kit this size for forty nine ninety nine. I love this. And what I like about this one actually, you could pick out any of these colours to do um the you backing. can. So if you really don't want this colour, um, it's it's for not. I love this colour. It's just so fresh. Um, then yes, you could use this yeah. in your stash. Yeah. And then choose another colour. Yeah. But if you notice that this goes absolutely perfect, there's a little tiny flower. Yeah. And it goes perfect. And then that brings that forward. It does. That's. I do love this blue. But I'm thinking for the back as well. If you're thinking of backing the quilt with, you know, one of the pinks, maybe that would be nice. We've got some. We've got loads of options to bring you with extra wide backing. Um, okay, we're virtually in single figures on this one as well. To have a quilt of this size and the amount of fabric, I remind you, this is a metre and a half, two metres of the blue, and then two metres of ivory, all for 49 99 and you're getting your instructions. It doesn't make sense. Honestly, these kits have gone above and beyond in terms of price to be able to get a quilt kit of this size. And it's up to you. I mean, once you've got the pattern then, this is a lovely block that would go on the front of a tote bag, on the front of cushions. Even if you're thinking, right, I love this fabric combination. I'm not confident enough to make a quilt of this size. Um, I think we could sway your decision with the quilt as you go method as well. So if you are um, a bit nervy about the whole quilting side of it and you absolutely know. that is the way to go. I have to say that I did make this quilt, this size quilt on this machine. Okay. So it wasn't long armed. No. I made it on this machine. And what quilting did you do? On so it? Um, it's not going to fall down, is it? <laughs> <laughs> For this one, I went through, I, so I quilted the sash yeah. and I did a diamond and also at the top, I turned it up the wrong way, I did these bits as well. So you can't see right. the stitches. You can if you go up close, but I did like a blanket stitch. So I didn't want to detract away from the quilt, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't use uh, a contrast yeah. and make it really stand out. Yeah. But you do need to be aware of the um, there's guidelines for how far you need the quilting lines apart because when you wash it, otherwise it the it moves inside. But I've all I've done is I've quilted round there, and then you could just quilt round here, and then the sashing. I know you but can only I did see it on the, that machine. You can only see two rows there, really, can't you? But actually, mm. it's a big quilt, isn't it? That, there you go, look. The down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's another. Oh, fabulous. So um, but with, with quilt as you go, yes, because what you'll be able to do then is concentrate on the block a block at a time. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to do much more quilting on it if you want to, and it will be easier to put together. I did put my machine on the floor when I did this because the thing that lets you down when you're doing a quilt this size, when you're quilting it, is the weight of the quilt will distort the stitches. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that the quilt is always fr freely flowing through the needle okay so that's I just took it down to ground oh, level and did it and it's, it's achievable or if you've got a big table then as long as the machine the the table or the floor can take the weight 
yeah. of the quilt. But right. yeah, it'd be That's perfect for quilt as you go. Having said that, there won't be enough fabric to do the quilt as you go method okay. that size. Okay. Um, because with quilt as you go, you have to double the fabric on the front sashing. Right. So there won't be enough. But you know, if you just put a bit more in your basket. So I'd need more of the sashing fabric. Need more of the sashing fabric. Right. Yeah. Remind me, Ben. Do you know what the colour this was called? Do you know? <laughs> no, can't remember. Flo uh, sorry, this colourway is called floral. We'll find out what th that one is called. Yeah. Floral blue it's called. So if you do it? want, I believe, wow. floral blue. So if wow. you do want to add more of those, you can. Okay, now, just while Ben sorts the graphics, can I remind you, today we had um, a very last minute early bird, actually. We picked out something, and we shouldn't have really picked this one because this is brand new. It's never even had a chance at 12.99. And today, we took it to 10.99 and a half metre. Still buy off the bolt, it's still 100% cotton, it's beautiful mandala print and it's today at an amazing price per half metre. So if you are just tuning in, if you missed the start of the show, that is today's early bird. Whether you're choosing to back any of the quilts with it or whether you're using it as the front, whether you're going to in include this in your piecing or for your bag making, for your dress making, for home furnishings, it's going to be suitable for all of those. Um, but it's just brilliant value for money. I always just ignore the fact that it says backing fabric. It's just extra wide, gorgeous fabric, suitable for. I'm even thinking, you know, if you're do, if you're if you do um, a plique, you've got beautiful mandalas here, and if you do EPP, you could fussy cut some of these really cool different elements. So it's a lovely blue as well, isn't it? It's gorgeous, like an electric blue. £10.99 discounted today as our early bird special. Right. So, can we have a quick stock update? Is there any left of the Liberty? Gone. Gone, gone, gone. How about our floral blue? Two left of those. Now, don't let this one pass you by because I think this is going to... I would love to see this made up, Me actually. Too. I Me think too. this is going to look really cool. Um, right, so you've got your instructions. You've got your deep navy blue, which with a dark... Um, so is this going to be for your sashing or is this going to be your background? Well, well, because there's two meters. There's two meters of each of the plane. Right. Yeah. So actually, there's no, I've done it like this because I, I wanted it to pop, but there's nothing to say that you want to change it the other way around. Right. You could, because there's two of each. The only thing that you cannot change is the floral in each yeah. of them because that's the one and a half. Um, but yeah, the other two you could swap around if you wanted to. Fabulous. So you've got your navy blue, your white, um, white? No. I think that one is white. White. I think cloud, I think this one's Ooh. called actually, cloud. So you've got your navy blue, your cloud, and then you've got this one, which is absolutely Lovely. gorgeous. <gasps> How stunning is this? This is very, 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 um, how do I put it? I want to say like on trend, these colors are everywhere. I want to paint my, um, shed this colour, I've got a new new Ooh. shed. I know, that sounds, I know that sounds so boring. And it oh. is, it really annoys me how much sheds cost. And oh, I'm yes. like, oh my gosh, I need to make it look really nice now. So I've been looking at shed paints the is last few days. Is it a playhouse shed? No, it's oh. not. I was thinking, we should have had one that's got an extra floor oh. at, at the top to be able to have us play. Oh no. They're really expensive sheds are, aren't they? I hate being an adult. So I was like, oh, we have to spend all this money on a shed? <sighs> anyway, so. This colour's lovely, this sort of lovely uh, sage green. And then this blue, oh, gorgeous. 49, 49.99. That's five and a half metres of fabric in total. And I remind you, 49.99 for a quilt kit is a bargain. I understand it's still 50 pounds, I understand. And you know, but you have to think about it in, in the, the the world we're in, whenever we have quilt kits, they're generally double the price. And if sometimes not triple, more. yes. Yeah. Sometimes triple. And I'm not talking about bigger sizes even. This no. is a big quilt. This is a 70 and a half inch by, did I say 52 and a half? Big quilt. I love that. But I know that you were, over half the stock has gone, sold out, but there's a lot of people who have got this in your basket. Please be quick. Um, for anybody who, has never done a big quilt before. Do you think that this is a good one or would you recommend this for somebody who's got quilting you know, experience? For someone who is confident in sewing and yeah. goes, yeah, I want to do that, absolutely go for it. The only thing that, um, it's not difficult, but it's more of a challenge, is the quilting part of it. Now, for actually something like this, 
I would actually get long armed if, yeah. if you can't do it yourself then I would spend the yeah. money and get it long armed um, but if you're confident with quilting something this size absolutely yeah you know have a go because the the piecing side of it that looks really sort of in, it looks difficult because it's got this sort of lovely sort of illusion. It's just placement. Oh. That's all it is. It's placement. It's where so. you put the half square triangles that create the illusion that the squares look like they've locked into each other. Oh, and you've done the hard work for us. Oh, yes. You've done the hard work for us. So you do get your pattern included, by the way, at that price. A few people were asking, OK, how do I get the pattern now? I've got the fabrics. No, that isn't the price just for the fabrics. That is also including your pattern, which is brilliant. Bear in mind... So, patterns $9.99, you're getting this amount of fabric for $39.99. I don't know how they've done it, actually, for this price. Well, it, it, it doesn't actually add up. So, you're, you are getting a saving, getting it as a kit today. $49.99, and I believe there are five of these remaining and 25 in baskets. To answer your questions, we do have instructions on their own. They, we do have the instructions available on their own, which again, I think are going to be a quick seller. I know that we're uh, eating into our demo time, but we'll make sure that we, uh, we do it. Instructions on their own, are you ready? £9.99. Go, go, go. If you want your instructions, like you said, you've done this for the quilt and the fabric was led towards the quilt. But when you're designing a pattern, you also think of bag makers and oh, cushions. Definitely. Because that's what you do, isn't it? That, that's, <laughs> that's, what, yeah, that's what I do. But I, I also want something that you can turn into a quilt as, go if, quilt as you go if you want. But you don't have to have it this big. It can be a table runner or a bed runner. It doesn't have to be a quilt. Um, but as I say, the instructions have been designed for the quantity for the quilt. So right. it's all there if you if you wanted to do that. Brilliant. Right. What are you going to show us then? Well, it's very simple. <laughs> it's a very, very simple uh, quilt. The only thing that's difficult about it is lining the seams up. That's it. That's all. It's that's a good point, actually, because you do want to make sure these points meet because you've got your lighter contrast background where your points meet. Though. Exactly. But and, and, you know, this one was put together so far. So don't look too close at it because I literally I got the fabric quite late. I'm so. looking really close. Yeah, no, <laughs> perfect. Win. Um, but it, it is a considered make because it takes it took me quite a while and I um, I sew for a living. But it's something that you can do maybe a block an evening or maybe a couple of blocks depending on your speed. But I wanted to show you, so the instructions have been again written for someone that has never done it before. So I've, you've got the chart in here to show you how to, to place them and they're all the same. And then how to make your half square triangles and how to put it all together. And um, I've done what I do, I, I now do is graphics because it's much easier with graphics to pinpoint exactly what you need to do right. in the certain things and there's a little bit on the back as how to quilt it now this isn't a quilt um, instructions it's a topper instructions but I have included it in there oh fab um, and then on the back which I again I've never seen anybody do this yeah I put it where I can because um, sometimes I've cut something, when I've had a pattern, I've cut something out. And then when I've come to cut the last bit out, I, the fabric's not the right, right. right way round. So this here shows you how to cut the pieces out, how to lay them out um, on each. And so you've got your metre and a half there, and then you've got your two metres here. And it tells you exactly, it doesn't tell you size, but the instructions tell you yeah. the size to cut them. But, uh, well, it does, but it doesn't tell yep. every individual one but these are all cut across the width of the fabric so I'm going to show you because a lot of people don't know what width the fabric is and that's just cutting from one selvage um, which is when they put it on the rollers you've got the two edges so they're the selvage so you cut across the fabric and then a subcut you then cut that width up and some people actually don't know how to do that well that is quite daunting isn't it when you're just given you know a meter and a half of fabric you're thinking right how do I you know Make sure it's all lined up. How do I make sure it's straight? And, and the Where thing is with this, the reason that we have bought it to you for such a good price is that I've made the fabric work around the quilt. So uh, if you can see on the diagrams, for this one, this is where I got the, the majority of my... Um, the edging. 
your binding. The binding. So you can see that I've got a nice big space of fabric there. So that's where I got the majority. Nice. And then I could sneak a little bit here yeah. and I sneaked a little bit there. So I've done scrappy binding. Looks great. And all that means is you just cut um, the lengths up, sew them all together, and then it's all different colours going all yeah, the way Yeah, I love that. And again, it's called scrappy binding. So don't be too concerned about, well, they've all got to be the same size. No. It actually works better when you've got really random sizes because then no one knows if it's right or wrong. That's my kind of... I like that you've done that. I've only ever really seen that on a dressmaking pattern. Whoa, really? Yeah, you know yeah. when you get a dressmaking pattern and it gives you your sort of pattern cutting guide where to position your templates. I've not seen that on a... a because quilt. again, it, it is it is a considerable... A £50 is, yeah. is, is, is a lot of money. And if you cut it wrong, yeah, it's like, oh, I'll just put it in put it in the basket and not do it. So you've got there a full metre and a half, is that a fabric? So th two meters? this one I have already cut some off of okay. it. Um, but I just want to show people how to cut your width of fabric. So I've got my selvage here and my selvage there. Do you do anything with your fabric when you get it home? Do you just press I, it or do you wash it? I don't, I, it? I never pre-wash it. Now with this one, they are similar fabrics. But if I were had fabrics that were completely different, so I have no idea how they're going to turn out when I wash them, then I will pre-wash it. Uh, but for this one, I haven't. Okay. Right, I can see you doing something over there. <laughs> um, right, oh, I put it. So. What's that? Well, oh, oh, with his, with his, what, right. what are you spotting? I'm spotting something happening on the screen. I oh. don't know what he was doing. <laughs> um, right. Don't worry about that, it's just the early bird. So, stripology. Yeah. <laughs> you love your stripology, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Um, now, I, I, it's my job, so I can justify it. I have every stripology. <laughs> but what I would say is go, go for the biggest you can afford. Because this one, I can do everything on, but the smaller one, I can't. Yeah. Uh, the smaller ones are great, they're absolutely yeah. fantastic, but this one I can do absolutely everything I need to. And I'm going to cut the width of fabrics here. So what I've done is I folded this, so we've got our width of fabric here, so I folded it in half, and then I folded it in half again. Have you now, given it a good press? I have. When you are doing this, it's really, really important that this bit here is really flat. If you've got any lumps and bumps in this crease here, and in fact this crease here, as you cut them, you're gonna get a distorted shape. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that it's as flat as you possibly can get it. I've taken up all the space here, haven't I? Am I, where's my... You're in the right place. Yeah, so I just, just move you over, sorry, because that is a big machine, isn't it? Right, and there we go, let's move him over. So I'm going to place the fold at the bottom and lay my stripology on. Sorry, the machine is massive. I didn't realize how big that was. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna concentrate on is the bottom. There's a solid line here at the bottom and I'm lining it up with the bottom of that fold. Now, I always just trim the edge off, okay? Just to make sure that that's nice and straight. So I'm going to keep your fingers away from where you're cutting and you put your rotary cutter in at zero and just trim away. Now, um, we all do it different, um, but I like to have my rotary cutter slightly upright rather than pushing it away from me because I want to keep the fabric as stable as I possibly can. And then if I were cutting two inch strips, I've already cut it at the zero, so then I would just cut two. If I were cutting five inch zips, strips, then I would cut it at five. But the beauty of having a stripology is you don't have to move it. Yeah. So you, but, right, you don't have to move it if you're cutting on halves or whole numbers. You do have to cut it if the instructions say cut on the quarter. Mm -hmm. Now that again is really easy because at the side you've got a quarter, a half and three quarter. So if I wanted to cut two and a quarter, I would move the edge of the fabric onto the quarter and yeah. cut it at two. So I've now cut two and a quarter. a quarter. So you can do it. But with these instructions, I've made sure I've gone on the half or the whole so that you don't have to worry about any of that. Brilliant. You and those of you that are quilters out there and you'll see the size of the finished square, you will know that I've probably given you a little bit too much because there's quite a maths when you're doing a half mm -hmm. square, the seven eighths and this and that, but I've gone a little bit more than I need because I don't want people to go, 
oh, I need to cut two and a quarter, cut it, then move it and move it. I just want them to just yes. to cut and cut. Fabulous. So that's what we would do. So I'm just, I'm going to cut two and a half. So I'll cut two and a half here. So now I have a two and a half strip. If I wanted another two, I would do it five, another two and a half, I'd do it five. And they have the little guides, don't they, as well? They Brilliant. have like um, a, a star or a square that mark yes. you two and a half because they're it's really brilliant, popular. isn't it? It is fantastic. Put your own jelly rolls. It, it, it is. I would not, this is one of the most used things in my workshop. Um, so now I've cut that one and the beauty of it is you wouldn't just cut one. You would cut yeah. what you needed to cut. But you know that it's straight, you know that it's accurate. Yes, definitely. And then what I do, don't know whether it's naughty, but it's how I roll, because I just like that. I always cut mine double width. Okay. But you, you know, I suppose you could. Oh, yeah, you way. could layer it up as much as you want. Make yeah. sure that it's all, um, it, it's all level. And then I tend to line it up with a line on the mat here. Okay. Because that way I can get all these bottoms lined up. And then I would place it on here. Now, when you're cutting the squares... For the half square triangles i always say be as accurate as you can try and be as accurate as you can but you do have a little bit of wiggle room when you're cutting the single squares that aren't going to be cut up into anything else you really do need to try and be as accurate as you possibly can because the more accurate you can be at every single stage your topper will just come together beautifully and now so i was four there eight 12 I've cut 16 squares in in seconds yeah, yeah. so and how accurate are they yeah um, if you do have a creative grid ruler that is absolutely fine uh, just make sure that you try and keep it on the same place because with this line it's like a millimeter wide if you move it each time then you might be a little bit out so if you can afford to go for the stripology then that is phenomenal. Yeah, the big one is underneath us on the website. We did run the graphics through for it. I think it was 69.99. We've had oh. loads of messages, by the way. Um, oh. Claire said, good morning, Vicky and all. Sue said, good morning, Vicky and Wendy. So lovely to see you both. Oh. Sandy said, lovely to see Wendy this morning. I was wondering where she'd be. I'm here. <laughs> You've been looking after your puppy, haven't oh, you? Yes, yes. Your shadow. Yes. <laughs> I should have called him shadow. I know. Oh, Cheryl goodness. said, good morning, everyone. What a beautiful quilt. I bagged the second option, all the colours of my bedroom wallpaper yes we've got we've <laughs> literally got kits for everybody although have all the kits now sold out can we restock any of them no we can't i'm so sorry if I you do want the instructions there's instructions available on their own if you want to put together your own colorways um Betty needs to do some housekeeping go on one of the kits the liberty pink not the blue one this one the floral Oh, okay. If you saw a picture that looked like this, it was the that's the next hour. Don't worry, you will get the right instructions. We've already fixed it. They put in these instructions, which is for the next hour. Don't worry, you will get that. We'll sort it out with the warehouse. Don't worry. Don't worry. So if the picture says this one or your description says this one, don't worry, you will get your you'll get the correct instructions if you got that second option cheryl you got that second option you'll get the right instructions lulu said good morning vicky and wendy lovely to see wendy i do love your demos you always explain so well lots of lovely messages for you i love my job i have the best it's not a job it's not a job is it oh well helen just says i wasn't going to buy any more kits but i couldn't <laughs> resist the blue well done wendy the blue one yeah yeah uh, uh so the dot the please 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 show us please because oh, yeah, we we, we haven't seen that one um, somebody in Northumberland message saying, it's so nice to see Wendy, she's such a good beginner teacher. Yes. Well, you were a beginner with quilts, weren't you, when we first met Wendy? You were saying, oh, I can't do all these big quilts. I, I, I you know, but I mean, look. And I've I mean, sewn for like 50 years. Yeah. But I've never really got into quilts. But it's, that's my ethos. Like with, with the trampoline coaching, I'm not interested in people that can do all the somersaults. I want to get the people that do, that just get up from a seat drop and are like, oh my goodness, I've done it. And that's what I want in sewing. Yeah. I want those people that have got the machines in the corner and what are they doing in the corner? Do you still do yeah. trampolining? No, no, no. Um, do you have a trampoline in your garden? I do tell, yeah. yeah. Children got too big. It was literally like, I would take them over in a somersault and they'd be like, oh, <laughs> you're up there. They just got too big. <laughs> um, 
But that's that's what I want. I want everyone to get sewing and not be scared and yeah. just have a go at it. Yeah. Because um, it is all it is is sewing in a straight line. Yeah. Exactly. That's all it is. So I'm a half squares triangle is something you know. If you can nail that, then you're going to get yourself in a bit of a production line, and you're going to find half squares triangles in loads of patterns. So they're how do everywhere. you do? Right. So the way that I do it, and um, a few methods, isn't there? There are there are different methods. Methods. There's different methods. Um, yes, yeah, so you can do four at a time, you can do eight at a time, but I like the good old fashioned two at a time. And for that, you start off with your two squares and you have one wrong side facing up. Now, this fabric looks the same both sides and because of my age, my glasses, I can't see what's what, so I'm quite happy. Um, and then the other one, you have right side facing up. Now, with if I was doing this one, if let me do this one actually, I will do this one. This one to me, I can see the line easier, but because that is quite a pale background, I could draw it on if I wanted to. And then you're going to draw a line from corner to corner. And I'm using a heat erasable pen. I mean, it is gonna be cut into, but I don't want to have anything permanent that when I launder it, it may bleed through. I'm going to do a couple. So I'm going to do that. And um, I'm, with my, half square triangles I always say to cut them down or to trim them afterwards um, I do a little bit of a shudder when I see uh, instructions that just go and join them together because as good as I am at sewing I have off days so I might go wonky on one of my lines and you've got to be really really precise with half square triangles they've got to all look exactly the same I don't know I've drawn it on that one <laughs> let's just get rid of that shall we there we go <laughs> brilliant so then you would put the wrong side one up, right side together with the other one. And because there is wiggle room, I don't pin them. Okay. Um, because I just like I just like to sew. I'm, I'm not a huge pinner. Um, I just oh, I'm making a bit of a mess. I oh, something in my basket in my basket. Oh, oh I wonder oh, what that is. McDonald's. Oh, was it? Did you was had a it? McDonald's this morning, Wendy, didn't you? I <laughs> have not had one of those for years, Vicky. I wonder who that was. Um, and then I've got um, this foot. I found this foot. I have no idea what foot it is. Someone out there will be able to go. Yeah, that's a what's his name foot. But it's brilliant for me because I can see the luck. I'm going to have a look. Yeah, what is that foot? No idea. Oh, I don't know. No is idea. it an open toe foot? I've no idea. Um, normally I have my universal one that's got okay. the acrylic bit in that I can see. Because yeah. I like to see the line. Because what we're going to do now, we've got our central line. I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch away and a quarter of an inch away okay. from each side. And um, there are, as you can see behind, there are a lot, a lot of half square triangles so the best thing to do is chain piece them and what that means is I have one in the machine I get to the end and then I feed another one through so instead of doing a one at a time I keep going and going and going I felt like Mary Poppins the other day go on because in there there's that little boy that has the the kite with the, oh, the big yeah, tail yeah. and it, honestly the tail was like <laughs> all over the floor and then I turn around and I go down the other side I am using a two millimeter stitch you want a really small stitch for this because we are going to be cutting into that seam and the smaller the stitch uh, the less unpick you'll get at the end that that wasn't how it meant, but it won't come undone. Whereas if you use a big stitch mm -hmm. and you're cutting into it, the ends will come undone. So I've only done two here, but that's what you would do. You would just keep going and going and going and then go down the other side. And then- Have you watched, uh, sorry, Saving Mr. Banks? Yes, about Mary Poppins. yes. Is it lovely? Um, uh, it's about the writer of yes. Mary Poppins. It's, isn't it? it's okay. Oh, no. It's because some people will love oh, it. Oh, they love it in the gallery. <laughs> they Ollie's saying, yeah, oh, it was, was so. I could it was stop okay. Crying. Really? It's really yeah. Oh, yeah, it was okay. Oh, okay. But Mary Poppins is my. Yeah. You, ca you can't beat Mary Poppins to me. And I'm going to cut. Right, so you cut in the centre. You don't I cut don't. either side. No. <laughs> cut yeah, because yeah, I've got the stitches either side. Okay. So cut the centre. So either side. Now you can do what I've done with a rotary cutter. Or you can use your scissors to cut it. But not a pizza cutter cat. No. Like, can I use it my pizza Absolutely cutter? Absolutely not. 
shape. Right, so we've got, a, we've got our half square triangles now, but they don't look much like half square triangles. And again, I'm not sure if this is on air today. We've got a wall pressing mat, Ben. Have you got the wall pressing mat in? We, we've got it in the second hour, but we could bring it forward for you, yeah. Wendy. Oh, I, you know, like when you, you think, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need that. But then when you get it, you think, how did I ever not? Right, so you convert it. Oh, oh absolutely. Be so why, what is the difference right. if you were to use your traditional pressing mat right. or your ironing board uh, compared to an this? An ironing board and a pressing mat are spongy, which as they should be because that's how they've been designed. But you, with a half square triangle, you want them to be as flat as you possibly can have them. Now, these wall mats are so compressed that they're, they're really yeah. solid, which means when you do press them, you're going to have the flattest centre seam than you possibly can get. So what you want to do now, set the seam, and all that's doing is we've pricked lots and lots and lots of little holes across that seam, and by putting a little bit of heating in it, just moulding it back into shape. And I always press on the dark side. Mm -hmm. Now to do that, have the dark side facing up when you press, and then all you need to do is finger press it back and Stuart told me this I never used to finger press it I used to the iron used to do the work but it is really worth finger pressing it because you can set it on its way before you iron it right. whereas if you use the iron and push it it can sometimes distort, distort it. it okay um <laughs> When I did know. this happen? I've not even seen this Alyssa <laughs> yes. iron, but I've heard so oh many gosh. rave reviews about it. When already. did that happen? Oh my goodness. Is it lovely to work? Is it nice oh. to use, yeah? And, and I'm a lefty. Okay. And sometimes I find, but I've just found out that- Oh, you, you can change know. the cord round. I know. change the cord. I know you can. I'm so pleased you said that because I'm a lefty and I thought, yeah. why do I always get tangled up in the- Yeah. Now I'm not going to change it round because I'm, I'm in a minority here being a lefty. So I'd much rather leave it for the righties. Yeah. But even on the right hand side, Great. it's not an issue for me. So I don't even think I would change it, to be perfectly honest. Tell me when, Ben. I've got breaking news, Wendy. Just... Hayley, we love you. Thank you. We've got more Liberty kits. <gasps> no way. Yes! Oh. oh, no. Don't get too excited. We've got 10. <laughs> We've got 10. Grab them now if you want them. Liberty kits, 10 of them. There'll be way more than 10 of you that want this. Everything else is sold out. Oh, my Thank goodness. you, Wendy. Uh, thank you, no, Wendy, for... That's fine. <laughs> okay. Hayley, you mean. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Hayley. <laughs> Look, everything is sold out, Wendy. Everything. <laughs> well done. If right, you manage to get then. it, there's <laughs> 10 left. You get your instructions. You get two metres of your ivory, two metres of your lovely hot pink, and then you get a metre and a half of Amazing Liberty, and it is less than £65. Just to reiterate, the size, finish size of the quilt is 70 and a half inches by 52 and a half inches. There are only 10, and there are more in baskets. So we'll carry on with the demo, and I'll update you when it's gone. Right, so this is now where the, um, if any of you have got this at home as well and only use it for cutting strips, it can do so much more, but it's fantastic for cutting your half square triangles. Now, so do you need to trim down these blocks? You do need to trim these. Um, and to, to my point before, if that wasn't quite the same in every single half square triangle, they'll all be different sizes. And the only way to ensure they're the same size is to trim them down. So I have given you a little bit more than you need. Now, what you need to do here is if you've got a stripology and you want to know how to use it to cut half square triangles, then we've got diagonal lines, dotted lines going that way. And then you've got these diagonal lines. We've got a 60 degree and a 45 degree. Now, this is a square and half a square is 45 degrees. So we're going to be concentrating on the 45 degree angle. Now, these ones already are, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line, so I'll try and bring it over, and line this up on one of the lines. Which is a 45 degree which is angle. Which the 45 degree yeah. dotted that goes beyond. So it allows my fabric to go beyond the zero and also beyond the size I'm cutting. So I'm cutting two and a half inch. So what I'm now going to do is cut it at zero and two and a half inch. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of waste here. And those of you that are, uh, know what you're doing with half square triangles, you know exactly what size to cut. In the cutting out stage, you can cut the fabric to the widths that you know. Yeah. But I want all those that have never done this before to get the perfect results every time. Now what we're going to do, we've cut it that way, we turn it 90 degrees 
and then we're now going to focus on this 45 degree angle here. Now, if you place it on that center line here, and we're doing a couple of things here, we're making sure that it's right into that corner and it's level here. So now we've got it level everywhere. And if I trim at zero and two and a half, there's something very magic happens here, is when I've trimmed it, I've got my fabric perfect at each nice. corner. Now yeah. that is really, really important. Um, it doesn't sound like much, you just say, oh, I'll just trim it to size. If you don't have these in the corners, when you go to match them up with another one, so if we need to match them up like that, when these are sewn together, they're going to be perfect. So that's how we cut our half, half square triangles. And with this stripology, it, it's cut. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this, Bix. Go on. I didn't like half square triangles. Right. I didn't like doing them because they took me so long. Okay. Then I got the stripology and it was yeah. like, well, okay, I love them now. Yeah, and well, them. you're gonna have to make a lot of half square triangles with this quilt, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so anything that is going to help you get the accuracy, yeah. yes. but efficiently and quickly, then is gonna be a, a bit of a lifesaver really, yeah. isn't it? So, and, and it's entirely up to you because of the, the limited time I had, I had to cut it all and make them all. So I did it all together, but you could do it in sections at a time. So yeah. cut and then make half square triangles and then trim them. You don't have to do it in the speed that, yeah, well, it's, that it's I did not, it. It's not like you said, it's not actually a difficult quilt in terms of the thing. So it's actually nice to be able to do something really, really well and nail your half exactly, square triangles. Exactly, and I'm hoping that this project is gonna do that for you. So we've got, uh, we've got in the instructions, there is a chart that tells you where to put all your different triangles. So when you're, as you're making them, and as I say, they're very self-explanatory, it tells you to pick the two fabrics that match the half square triangle and put them together to make the half square triangles. But then when you finish them, you place them all together. You place them down, in, I'd put them on the table. Um, and I have stated in here that you can, if you want to, mm -hmm. photocopy this so that you can mm -hmm. mark them off. Yeah, or great. you could put this in a sleeve, a yeah. uh, plastic sleeve, and just mark it with a wipeable pen. Oh, great idea. So that you know that you've made them all. Um, but I promise you, once you get in the flow, it'll be absolutely fine. And also what I have done as well, which is very, very important, I want everyone to be able to make this. I am not perfect. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Um, so at the end of it, you may not get 12 blocks exactly the same. Because let's face it, if we're tired, if it's hot, if it's cold, it's going to change the way we sew. So I've got a troubleshooting guide in there. Oh, fab. So, what you do is you trim them to the size stated, if you can, but you trim the block the same, the same either side. So you have a center line down here and you have a center line down here. So make sure when you're squaring them off that you have the same either side. And again, the stripology is amazing for that because you can put it under the stripology. Now it is bigger than the stripology ruler, but you can cut it and then move this down and then you would turn it round and do the same there. However, if yours come out smaller than the size that I state, it's fine, don't worry about it. All you need to do is find the smallest one and trim them all to that size. Yeah. So I don't want people to think this is really difficult, I'm not gonna be able to do this. No. If it doesn't come out the size of mine, all that will happen is that you'll have a slightly smaller quilt. If that does happen, just make sure that you adjust the sashing. Yeah. So if you find that yours is half an inch less, then you would have to reduce the sashing yeah. by half an inch. But please do not worry. This I want everyone to be able to make this quilt. I know this is already going. Lots of people have already spotted these, but we'll run the instructions as well for your quilt as you go instructions. Hundreds and hundreds. I'm going to say thousands of you have probably already got yeah. this at home. But if you haven't, this is about, uh, we've only got 30 today, but if you do want to learn how to do quilt as you go, obviously you'll need a bit more sashing fabric for this, but it's a lovely way uh, and manageable way of quilting. Um, it does work with this one as you've got the sashing. It does. Yeah. And then all it is a case of, you follow the instructions um, and you select all the squares for the certain rows that you're, you're on and you, you sew them together. So you join them together, So you're, and again, it does tell you how to do that, but you'll join the top row, and then it tells you to join 
um, that row, that row, that row, and then these three rows, because these one in here, if you can see that we've got a large block in the centre. Yeah. So that's the one that's joined together. So I'll just show you here, I've joined, oh, there they are, the top three rows, and I've joined the bottom three rows. Oh, yeah. And actually, it's not as daunting as it sounds, because if you see, if I twist these round, they're actually the same. The only way that you would need to worry is if you have directional fabric, um, you do need to make them the right way up. But the, the, all the fabrics that we've got, not one of them, because they're floral, flowers, flowers can grow anyway, can't yeah. they? So I'm just going to show you how to do the centre two rows. I've done this side, and then we've got the centre block. We've literally got a couple of minutes, Wendy, if that's all right. Sorry. That's absolutely fine. I can see, I can see Jane in the wings. How oh, delightful is Jane? She's lovely, isn't she? Have you never met Jane Green? No, I've never met her. I've never met her before. It's a little bit of awe, actually, over there. Um, <laughs> She's lovely. And you know, like when you meet someone and they're just the same as they appear on the telly. <laughs> just lovely. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do this one. I'm following the instructions to see how to put it together. Um, she says very badly. And then we have that one. And then all we get, all I would do, so I won't do it then if we don't have time. Mm. Um, you would join that one to that one, then that one to that one, that one to that one and then you would join the rows so yeah. that you've got the rows here. So that's what you would have. Yeah. But again, it would be the other way up because it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And then you would join that one to that one. And then you would join that block to that block. And then when you come to do these ones, now I have done rows one, two, three, six, seven, and eight. But what I would do is do one, two, three, join for, I join them down like that but it doesn't matter because you can see I've joined these three together yeah. and it's not going to make any difference to right. how the block comes together give it a good press and that's really 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 important to press it well um, because you want to maximize the width of the seams if you've got a little bobble or a little bit of a crease it is going to affect the overall size so give it a jolly good press Flat. and then you'll end up with this and then you would trim this to size and you do that with all your blocks yeah and then you would just add the sashing but it's it's honestly it's not a complicated quilt it's all in the instructions it's, it's, yeah and the instructions it's are very so thorough. very very thorough instructions yes well um, done everybody who managed to get the quilt kit i think we're in single figures of the instructions on their own everything is sold out the second batch of the pinks have also gone um just so you know ben has been as you probably noticed here he's been running through things like your 505 spray your best press your stripologies your backing fabrics they're all going to be underneath us on the web they're lovely backing fabric bundles actually these go perfectly with your kits so it's definitely worth grabbing hold of those during the break uh, in fact you can find them underneath us here if you click today's show deals you're making some savings as well. Definitely make the most of it. Right, don't go anywhere because eagerly waiting in the wings to my left is the lovely Jane Greenoff. We've got so many brand new kits for you. We're gonna be continuing the tiles with March's um, edition and the matching what bows as well. So stay tuned. Wendy, thank you. I'll see you later. We'll see you at half past 10. You will. See you then. See you then. Uh, right, stay where you are. Jane Greenoff's gonna be with me after this. <laughs> Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. 
Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the combine order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Every day our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye! Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one P&P with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Hello, welcome back, welcome back. Jane, I mean, what a day. You've never met Wendy before, have no. you? We've got all of the, yeah, we've got all of the noisy. big... She's very bouncy. She was, yes, this morning she reckoned she'd had three hours sleep and was bouncing off the walls. Yes, she is. So I had to wake up and pay attention. <laughs> How are you? Jane? All right, thank you. I feel like we've not seen each other no, for ages. Well, you haven't had the twins when I saw you. I can't last. believe you that. Bump. So it's been yeah. Well, they're nine months now, so I haven't yeah. seen you for nearly a year. Yeah, ridiculous, isn't it? Yes, I'm fine. Good. I've just been in London for a long time. Um, I, I, we had the Stitch Festival at the yeah. Design Centre. Yeah. And, How um, was that? It was very good. I'm out of practice. It's seven years since I did a five-day show. Well, you sort of moved aside from the well, cross the theory. Haven't you? <laughs> the theory you tried to retire how many years ago? Seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't really worked. But that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. I'm designing for the cross Stitch Guild. And um, Andrea hadn't been very well. And it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> oh, they're hard work. I did one oh. day at the uh, yes. at the NEC a couple yes. of weeks ago, and it is it's full on. It's deceptive. Yeah. The carpet, you won't know this when you go to one of these fairs. There is carpet everywhere, and it's that thick. Yeah. And underneath that is concrete. And if you're standing, well, we actually have a Persian rug. Oh, do you? On the stand. Oh, good idea. So you, when you're quiet, you go and stand on the rug for a bit. <laughs> and anyway, we set up on... The Wednesday, it took five and a half hours. Mm. We had a four metre by four metre by four metre. Those of you who came to say hello, thank you. It was lovely to oh, meet you all. Oh, it is nice. It's, it's lovely, it's lovely to meet people. But um, the Thursday was late night shopping. Oh, fabulous. So, so did you go in around? At, in at eight and left at eight. <gasps> did uh, you have a shop? Did you manage to get around? No. no. Actually, that's not true. 
I am lying to you. <laughs> I did buy two pieces of fabric and some little, lovely little Indian curios from oh, nice. uh, Bazaar. Yeah. Lovely, yes, yeah. But not for, that was on my way in and way out. I didn't really get around. Oh, yeah, I got way too anyway, much. I've been busy. Um, right, so today we've been doing our um, monthly tile. Yes. And they've been so popular. In fact, January is completely sold out. And we can't bring you any more of those today. But we have got February and we've got our brand new March. So you can see them here. They've already been selling on pre-order for anybody who is collecting them. And uh, have lovely. you done something like this before where you've done a monthly? We did a monthly thing last year, but they were little pockets and they existed already. Okay. Because we'd done them for Cross Stitch Guild members two or three years before. These have been designed by herself. Um, the theory, for those of you who need to know it, is that we're doing 12. They will all go together as a quilt. If you, oh, those of you who want to, and I know we've got two ladies who are saying, you're sure I'm going to get them because I'm going to do the quilt. So I've, I've made, there's, there's 12 obviously, they're all the same size, they have the same border. Mm -hmm. um, the palette continues through them all. So the first four are flowers, like these in little squares. The next four are a garland shape in the middle. And the final four, geometrics. Oh, lovely. But the greens and the lemons and the pinks, they follow They'll through. They'll work together. You'll see when you look at the two here. Yeah. Um, they're they not matchy-matchy, no, but they're they all complementary. Yes, they don't argue with each other. Yeah. Um, so we're ever so pleased with the response because when I said, oh, yes, of course I'll do 12 tiles. Oh, no problem at all. <laughs> and then I went, oh. Well, these are exclusive for us as well, they're, aren't they? Absolutely. <gasps> Which I love. Exclusive. Right. Should we start with the Ada? Because the Ada has been very, very popular on pre-order. And yes, if you want to do the whole collection, by all means, go for it. If you just want to take one of these yes, tiles and frame them like you have here, yes. um, then, then absolutely. It's only $14.99 and they are stunning. Absolutely stunning. So with the Ada... This is um, a you. common question that we get. What size is yes. the Ada? And it's exactly the same as if the linen, isn't it? If you look at it? this one, which is the linen version. Okay. Now, I haven't got this one worked on Ada yet. It's happening. Now, this is March, isn't it? You're this is us. March. Yeah. So this one is worked on linen. This is the one we're talking about today. Yeah. You can work it on linen or Ada. Yeah. This was last month's on Ada. Right. The size is the same. Brilliant. So would you recommend for anybody who is starting out to start with Ada? Do you find you, that people find it easier? Uh, yeah, I think people do. I learned on linen by okay. mistake <laughs> because I was given a piece of linen and knew no different. Yeah. So it's my fabric of choice. And I mean, I wear it and my curtains are made of it and sofas are covered in it. Uh, this little graphic shows you here that the chart is... The thing, the number of stitches is what decides how big something is. Okay. And you can see this is 11 count, mm -hmm. 14, 16, 18, 20. Right. So um, the Ada, what count is this? It would be 14. Okay, so... So it's... Duh, duh, duh. Uh, right. So it's so not teeny tiny. Not teeny tiny. If you want to um, work them on Ada, I mean, they're going to be the same physical size. The instructions are identical. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on the design that is difficult to do on Ada. Okay. Um, there aren't any fractional stitches on these, which are a bit of a pain because with a fractional stitch on linen, there's a middle hole to go through. Okay. Whereas with Ada, you have to pierce the fabric. Do You're you getting mind? into them, oh. aren't you? I can tell, <laughs> elephant spit. Do you mind if I open this up? Because I want to have a look at the, uh, the charts because these are so beautifully pretty. made. I they know. are really, really clear as well. Now you've thought of how everybody works. I know some people stitch by colors and some people by Symbols. And we put them both Brilliant. on here. So that's the chart. In actual fact, it's not dissimilar, is it, in size? Mm -hmm. um, the threads in this case are in bundles. And I tell you in the words, when you read it, which bundle to sort first. Oh, fantastic. So you're there, they're your bundles. And then you'd pick on, let me see if I've got the words here. This is where I find a. Is it Ethan who's done these for oh, you? Yes. Have you seen? Ethan's me? done your books. He's done the graphics yes. within your yes. books, and honestly, they are so. He, he was. He's clear. been marvellous because when I started, in fact, when I started, all the diagrams were like that, mm -hmm. with no grid showing, underneath. So how did you know 
where to put anything. Does that make sense yeah, at all? It does. So he, he shows the needle behind the fabric. Yeah. You know, and the thread behind the fabric there. Very clever. And that's that's a very useful graphic there, look. Mm -hmm. That's cross stitch on Ada because the fabric's woven in fours. Right. So you get a definite a hole in the corner. Okay. And that's cross stitch on linen. Actually it isn't. That's cross stitch on Ada as well, which is interesting. There's cross stitch oh, yes. on linen. Yes, it's worked in two journeys. That's going all the way one way and back. There's cross stitch on linen, sorry. If I'd kept my glasses on my head and, <laughs> instead you know, of uh, on the top yeah. of your head. Yes, so there you are. So yes, okay. it's not difficult to work with, but certainly if you've not done it before and this is something you want to have a go at, then the A diversion. And if I Okay, and where that, would you start? Do you always start in the centre? Well, you don't always start in the centre, but you do for tiles. Okay. So here's your fabric, and in fact, it, look at that, it's actually folded quite well already. So with, if I was getting this out of the packet, I would probably just finger press. Uh, a bigger project, I would also do some tacking stitches. So you're going to start there. Right. And in the destructions, I tell you, leave that little chap mm -hmm. and count to the first one of the crosses and work this shape. Right. And then I count over short distances. You don't really make counting mistakes until you count lots of empty material. So if I was going from here, I would probably then work that box having got to that corner. Okay. And each time I start another bit, I'd say, for instance, work to that stitch. Mm -hmm. You're less likely to make a mistake if okay. you count short bits. Right, so yes. you've got all your colours. This is, by the way, half the stock of the Ada has gone. We have also got this one and linen. And it also comes with your... Um, that's so you can sort your so, threads. Yeah, sort yeah, your threads absolutely. onto there. Brilliant. Yes, that's marvellous. Linen is now on screen. I'll show you the difference. Oh, do you also get your needle? Everything. Yes, everything. That's so good, isn't it? For fourteen ninety nine. You know when you're starting yeah, out a new hobby or a new craft or you want to have a go or you're kitting this as a gift, it's nice to have everything that you need. But also, yeah. there is a lot of um, cross-stitch um, kits that I see that are more um, childish. Yes. Whereas yes. this is something They're that... <laughs> you really have made a mess of this young lady. Oh, sorry. It's not sorry. Good it's the elephant out. spit, isn't it? It's the elephant spit. I can, I'm always then getting these back into packaging. So are these, is it all cross-stitch? So with let me look. Or have you got other stitches? This is cross-stitch with some optional. So if you didn't want to do Just them, you don't have to... Just be careful of your head. We're oh, seeing yeah, all I'm your... getting all enthusiastic here. <laughs> There's some French knots on the blue flower, look. OK, I'm just going to push this forward. The camera's here, <laughs> so I'm just going to shimmy you forward. You're not very good at this, am I? Right, so there are some optional French knots on here. You don't have to do them. OK. And this stitch I show you in the instructions. Oh, what's just this one called? It's, it's actually a broken road stitch, a big right. one. Um, and again, remember when you were doing counted embroidery, there's nothing on the fabric. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to do them, you leave them off. You can put your yeah. initials there. Yeah. yeah. So you can pick which bits you want because it's not printed onto there's the no linen. no transfer. No. So Brilliant. you can do your own thing. So within the linen kit, you get exactly the same colours. Yes. The same um, bundles of thread. You get the same chart, same instructions, yep. needle, everything that you need. This time it's on linen. £14.99, same price as well. Definitely worth going for it. Remember, this is exclusive to us. If you haven't yet got the previous months, don't panic because you can just do this on your own if you want, just as it, as it is on its own. Um, but also, if you do want to go back, you can also get February. There you go, I miss February. So both February and March, checked out. Love, just love them. And we're making the quilt wall hanging. Oh, well Love done. all of Jane's well work. Thank you. I'm pleased. Is this achievable to do within the month? So each month you oh, can yes. do it, yeah? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, I think that um, I've just stitched November and it was a day and a half. Oh, I mean, I know you're... No, no, speedy. but it was... I didn't do anything else, you yeah. know. Yeah, everyone else had to manage. Yeah. Um, and, and that one is quite a simple one. It's not quite as dense as this. I was thinking that if someone is going to make a quilt, be quite interesting to have four flowers in the corners and maybe the geometrics in the middle. I'm not a quilt maker. Mm -hmm. I have made a quilt mm -hmm. many, 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 many years ago. 35 years ago, I used some Laura Ashley fabric in the old days and did a, 
and it was the log cabin and it was a disaster. <laughs> well, it wasn't an entire disaster. I don't mind it on the spare bed, but a quilt would have kittens because the logs aren't the same size. <laughs> I mean, I did it on a sewing machine and wanted it done by Friday, you know. Yeah. Which is why I've not done any more. No, I mean, yeah, you're... <laughs> it is that you very defined. I mean, I was watching this morning those little, you know, I couldn't understand that quilt. I was in here, it made my brain hurt this morning. Oh, yeah, that is, it is the it's illusion. so clever, sort of vibe, the illusion. Isn't it? Yeah. So, well done, everybody who's managed to get either of those. Now, you also designed with these uh, well, flowers. Well, it was an accident. I didn't mean bow. to. Yes, what happened was with January flower, I said to, you know, I opened my mouth and put my foot in it. I said to Andrew, why don't we do a what bow with each one? And she went, oh, fine. I went, oh. Okay. Now, what do you use a what bow for? Well, uh, oh, we've got it. It's at the front oh, here. Yeah, I don't let know me grab that one. So oh, this is. Thank you. Well, that's just a little scissor keep. Oh yeah. You know, you can put you you can put scissors on the end. This one, I've done this this way because they don't in fact come with scissors to keep the price down. Okay. But if you look at that, you can see uh, we've got the Ada one on screen. Right. Just so you know. So if you're if you're doing. Look, that one there we go. If you're doing what, that's how you stitch a what bow. Okay. In three blocks. Well, because Very it looks easy. quite an unusual shape that it you would is. think, how yeah. is this constructed? Exactly. <laughs> so it's I'm just three squares. Yes, it's three squares. When I made the first one, I bought uh, a little key ring in that shape, a woven key ring at the Cross Stitch Night Market in Siem Reap in Cambodia. Okay. Thinking that's a useful shape. I'll have a go at that. How many sides has it got? One, two, three, one, one, two. <laughs> Count okay. the sides. So eventually I realised it was three and I cut, th I stitched three separate shapes mm -hmm. and then joined them together again and realised that it wasn't necessary. Oh, okay. You stitch three like that. Now this isn't just instructions, you get everything no, you everything need. everything. Da -da. How good is that for £10? For £10 you get everything you need. You get all of your, and now is this cotton? Um, yes, stranded use, cotton. Stranded so cotton. It, yes, it's in what we used to call embroidery silks, but it's mercerized cotton. Okay. Again, you sort your bundle. That's obviously the fabric, the Ada version there. Yeah. And this is a twisted cord which I made with. Now I've seen you make these on air before, and I have never seen this. So you don't have <laughs> to have one of these. No, How I'm... didn't you do it on a? Yeah, a pencil. You get someone to help you. Well, actually, <laughs> if you go on. Um, at Sewing Street's website, there is a twisted cord making machine. Oh, okay. Now, I had one I of those, this. but I do tug and I sometimes have quite long. Yeah. So I'm over here. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes on a roly roly chair. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got a hook on the wall and I've got great long lengths and I'm winding, winding. Yeah. And I broke two, oh, but okay. I, you know, I'm heavy handed. <laughs> so I found this at an antiques place and then that's glued in. Fantastic. Isn't it wonderful? Oh. It makes me smile every time I make it. It's very industrial. So a twisted cord like is actually, you want a, two, a length of thread. And it is just your mercerised cotton. Th yeah. Yes. In fact, in here, that's your twisted cord one. Perfect. Because okay. it's a long length. Yeah. And you're going to fold it in half and tie a knot. And you've got a hook or a person mm -hmm. at one end. And you've got a, a pencil. And you go la 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 la. And it stays like that. That's what amazes me. It doesn't unravel, does it? No. Don't leave go. Apparently, there's a tool like this on Jewelry Maker for wire. Ah, a wire twisting tool. Similar thing. I wonder whether you could do that with that as well. Yeah. And then you get it off the hook, mm -hmm. and you don't leave go because it yeah. goes. Bleh. And then you walk towards your friend, and it twists and makes that. Brilliant. The knot is, you have to knot it. Can I say that was go. a great demo, by the way? Was that a great demo? <laughs> <laughs> They're being very rude in the gallery, <laughs> I can tell. And the knotted end is inside. Yeah. Which I shall show you in a minute. Okay. So there you are, that's, that's what buried bow. in. Now, once again, it's on Ada, £9.99. We do also have the Watbow in linen, and it's a full kit. We'll show you how to uh, make one in just a second. But you've got, once again, I like that it's, um, how do I say this? It's uh, obviously not to scale, this is. So you, it's zoomed in that you yes. can see everything really, Absolutely. really clearly. Yes, you need to see what you're doing. Yes, I mean, I think it's huge fun. And I mean, they're very simple. I make a walk there in an evening. Absolutely no problem yeah. whatsoever.
I remember when I, when I, we were on air together years ago and you bought in a seed packet and you yes. said, I see everything in squares and it was yes. actually just a seed packet that you then designed. Yes, yes. In I mean, squares. It's, when, I'm, when I'm designing, when I'm drawing, I don't scan things because, well, two reasons. One is because copyright law is a bit dodgy and I'd be in trouble, you know, buying a nice greetings card and making a cross stitch and selling it would be naughty. Um, the other reason is that I did scan a Victorian tile once. And my husband walked into the office and said, oh, we scanned that then. Oh. And I thought, oh, right, OK, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. So I never do. But I draw on, sometimes trace, draw on squared paper. Yeah. Just a pencil sketch. Mm -hmm. Very simple, because you're adding the colour and things with your stitching. And then I square it off by going round... With a, with a black um, biro or mm -hmm. pen or whatever, rotary pen or something. And I make it so that everything is a square. Yeah. So sometimes you have to jiggle it a bit mm -hmm. because you're going round a round corner. And certainly dear Jo Versa, who sadly is no longer with us, she changed everything for modern cross stitch because she used a lot of half stitches. Right. I mean, fractional, so triangles. Mm -hmm. Um, to take make curves easier. So for things like, I mean, I, she did a wonderful um, sampler for an electrician yeah. with power, with plugs and cables yeah. and well, you yeah. know, you, it yeah. quite difficult to do. Anyway, yes. So I draw and then I transfer that line drawing onto my computer program, yeah. which has all the manufacturer's threads on it. And you can see that it has um, symbols if you prefer to work in that way, or yes. your colours that yes. you've got there. Um, We'll do the February tiles and then we're going to have a bit of a demo with the Watbo yes, if that's yes. okay. So let's do the February tiles that? because people sure. are asking about them. So the February is this one. Do they grow in sort of difficulty levels at all or would you no. say that you can dip no. in at any point during this? I think if this? anything, the last four, the geometric ones, are probably the simplest. Okay. There's very little backstitch, no fractional stitches at all. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, so no, they don't get more difficult and um, and they seem to live together well because yeah. it, it was drawing them um, and obviously not having them all stitched to start with because I didn't know we were doing this until sort of October. Yeah. Um, drawing them and, and making sure they work together has been quite a logistical consideration. So I've got them, I've got graphics of them uh, which I've printed off my computer and got them lined up on the wall to make sure no colour jumps, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. they all work out, complement each other. Not yeah. one stands out like a sore thumb. Exactly, exactly. Um, the one on Ada, there's literally six remaining. If you do want to get February, if you missed last month. Um, they are nearly six inches in size as well, aren't they? Yes, Five, about, 14 and a half centimetres. We could have a tape measure. It we says here on the front, 5.75 inches. Of course inches. it does. Of course it does. <laughs> Exclusive to Sewing Street again. So you can't. You didn't have these on the stand at the nope. Stitch Fest. No. Um, so if you are grabbing them, you're not going to be seeing them as well, which is lovely, isn't it? If you're doing this, stitching it for a gift for somebody. It, eventually, all of them will be available yeah. down the track a ways. Yeah. And I'm, I have designed another tile. So I've done number 13. Okay. Which is actually going out to Guild members oh, so nice. that they will get one yeah. that if they want it. That's a bit different. Who knows? Yeah. Um, here is your linen option. Remember, the same. Would you stick to the same? So if you've done February in Ada, would you do March in Ada as well? I, su I suppose it depends. I guess the quilters would say you'd want them all the same if you're making the double quilt at the yeah. end, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Um, I don't think it would matter. See, I think four, the first four would hang together very well or be four cushion mm -hmm. inserts. Mm -hmm. um, whether you'd mix them up, we won't really know till everyone's seen some of the second four, yeah, will yeah, we? Yeah. How people, I mean, everyone has loved the first four. I mean, they've been galloping out the door. Um, I'm hoping you're going to feel the same about the rest. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, I, I love how fantastic value for money they are. I mean, we obviously sell patterns regularly here at £10 each. So to be able to get everything that you need yes. for yeah, less than absolutely. 15 is brilliant. Right, the what bow. So we oh. said it's made up of three squares. So within yes. your kit, you have 
the that. right amount of linen or yes. either to be able to stitch on. In fact, there looks a lot here. Well, you, you, I want it safe. Okay. It's, again, start in the middle. So if we go back to the front, I would start stitching this in the middle of that pink flower there. Yeah. In the middle of the fabric. Okay. And then you know you're going to have enough turnings and everything. Obviously, that is... I mean, if I get my little bit... Now, this is actually one of the later ones. So you can Ooh, see a, geome peak, you can see a little bit of a geometric. There's a little bit of the geometric one there. So if I just show you, I've cut this um, and trimmed it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got three identical bits. Can you see? Yes. They were in a row like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I folded one over and I've just joined it to the side there. What stitch do you use to join them together? A sharp needle and just like that. Do you use the same needle that you get in the kit or no, would you use a sewing I'd use, needle? I'd use a yeah. sewing needle. Yeah. Yeah, use, we don't supply the sharp, but yeah. just any sharp needle. Okay. You're only putting one strand in, so anything you've got in your needle case should do it. But with a point. All the needles we use for cross stitch are blunt. Mm -hmm. Because with cross stitch you're parting the fabric, not piercing it. Okay. And going down the Ada hole as well, ditto. Um, so if I move that for a second... Shall I do that now? Yeah. So I've got a bit of, I don't know how far we'll get, so I'll just... Just so you know, we just have got the gold-plated needles back by Poppy's uh -huh. Mother. They are always asked for whenever we have Jane here. You're going to yeah. be using them, and they I are am. just a novelty, are yeah. they? No, they are just, even this sharp is a gold one, look. Oh, nice. Haven't used a nickel needle for 30 years, I should think. Okay, so I've joined the simplest one. And if that would, that could be a little, that could be a scissor keeper, couldn't it? If you yeah. think about it, it could be just that little bit, uh -huh. single sided. But to make it the three sided one, I'm now going to join, whoops, threads out of the way. I'm not good at this when I'm watched. So can you all shut your eyes, please? <laughs> so I'm going to line that up that way. Can you see? I've yeah. sort of got a bit of a thing going on there now. Now, with this pattern, it doesn't matter where your twisted cord goes. But if the flowers are on something, like this one, I have to decide where to put the twisted cord so they're all the right way up when it right. goes. Right. Yes? Does yeah. that work? Yeah. Some of you will be familiar with our Christmas decorations. Do you need to bury the twisted cord within this before? It depends where you want to put it. Right. I could bury it now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, or I could bury it now. Yeah. So I'm just going to catch this in. So all I'm doing is lining those up like that. Can you just bring it slightly to away from you? I know it's not natural I'm sorry, to sew it's that far away. That's it. Thank you. That's perfect. So I did it beautifully last night. Look at that. You couldn't see but I won't be able to do that today because you're all watching. So I'm going to continue down there. So I'm making pigs here. This is as expected. There we go. Sorry, just bring it forward just slightly again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jane. Hi, everybody. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm going, I've got the matching thread. I'm just going through the stitches. Like so. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So just doing sort of like a whip stitch. Just exactly. As I said, I'm not making it easy for myself. No, it's not very natural to do it that far away from me. Well, I'm a cuddler. <laughs> I cuddle my stitching. <laughs> so, so this is not perfect by any stretch of imagination, but you'll be able to see how they form. Obviously, you want to try and match the edges up. Yeah. So I shall unpick this in the green room when I've done <laughs> get back and do it properly. <laughs> you can see what's happening anyway. So I've got that little pointy shape. It is an unusual shape, isn't it? But yes. like you said, it makes a really handy little scissor key It's a nice part. little... If you want to make it heavy, which I quite like when I've got things that yeah. um, on the end of good scissors, 
Um, I use dry rice quite a lot. Oh, that's a good idea because that. Uh, what is it that sharpens your? If you oh, there's oh, I'm thinking something of, uh, emery powder is something that's used, isn't it? Yeah. I've heard of shells from yeah. nuts. Yeah, that you put in and they can sharpen your your pins. Your and pins needles. and needles. I like rice because, of course, I obviously don't spit on your needles because it's disgusting or your thread <laughs> ever, and I do, of course. Which is the end with the knot? And that's the end with the knot. So I'm just doing this by creasing. Yes, so I'll pop the little cord in there. That's the knotted end. Yeah? Mm hmm. Poke that in a bit. There we go. Oh, and that gets completely sort of buried in there. Buried in there. And we don't catch it while we're doing it, obviously. So w when you're doing the twisted cord, it does show you in the instructions, but the secret is just have a pencil if you haven't got a handy drill. Or, and don't use an electric drill. I tried it once. <laughs> too fast. <laughs> yes, really. Even on slow, it was too fast. Okay. Oh, fooey. <laughs> Does it reassure you all? That if, yeah, don't worry. It's it's one of those that if you try and do it on the telly, it's... It's, it's just nice to know that the old girl can still make a pig's ear of him, isn't it, really? <laughs> I mean, someone... When, when Andrea was taking over the, the Guild, which was sort of 2017, I think, and um, she'd been shadowing me for a year, uh, on and off, because she had a day job to do as well. And... Um, I said, you know I work when I'm awake. And she said, yeah, yeah. I said, no, I actually work when I'm awake. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill says she really does work when she's awake. The only time she doesn't work is if I take her out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She knows now. Oh, gosh. Well, you still, you still haven't stopped, have you? Well, it's, it is enough. Those of you who have not stitched before, this is where I warn you that it is an addiction. Yes, it comes with a big addiction warning. It's something that I know a lot of people who, who do still sew, make quilts, do all yes. sorts, but they still like something that they can take on the move with them. Yes. They like to sit in front of the television and do yes. something with their hands. I, I stitch in a car. Yeah, in not fact, whilst you're driving. On one occasion, now I wasn't driving, <laughs> I wasn't driving, I was on the M25 and I was stationary. Yes. And after 20 minutes, I thought, wow, I'm very bored now. Yeah. So I turned off the ignition and got my stitching out. La la la, tra 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 la la. Anyway, this motorbike police person went past, and he went past, and he backed up, and he looked in the window, and I said, "My ignition is off, officer." <laughs> you know, mm, and left. <laughs> yeah, when you sat for a long time. Well, I can't waste that off. time. No. Now, can you see Got where we? To be done. There's our thing. nice. Yeah, if you've Doesn't done any of the Christmas decorations, it's a lovely shape and it's such a it's great so easy. kit. I mean, all of, both these kits, whether you do it on Ada or Linen, are both only £9.99. And then you just use a little bit of stuffing or choose what you want to uh, stuff it with. These, I suspect this is an admission of theft now, ladies and gentlemen. Where have you stolen this from? I think these the tweezers came from when I was a nurse. Really? I did yeah. not know you were a nurse. Yes. <gasps> Horrid person. <laughs> I was a... Prize baggage, in <laughs> retrospect. So I gave up to have my son Piglet, James, who is 43 in a minute. Oh, my word. Honestly, when you think about... Well, your, I remember you always tell me about when you went back to work straight... when As soon as your daughter was... Oh. You didn't well, stop course, working even after giving birth. She was a whoopsie-daisy baby, <laughs> as she's often been called to her face, um, and I had four days off. Oh, my word, Jane, you're absolutely... Well, it wasn't... Boring. I didn't mean to. I mean, as I said, I wasn't expecting... You had packing a... and all sorts to do, didn't you? Well, the midwife caught me. It was very <laughs> embarrassing. I was in a big white Laura Ashley nighty and all of a, you know, lump. <laughs> How you feel when you just had a yeah. baby? I was home day, day two. So day three and four, obviously, I'm feeding myself. And I'm a wash. I won't go into any more details. <laughs> Anyway, I'm downstairs, baby's on the floor, and I, Bill had sent d delivery notes on our business stationery mm -hmm. to all our customers and uh, saying we had baby girl. And I had a phone call from the lady who remained nameless to say, I'm very pleased about the baby dear, but what about my exhibition? 
Oh, my word. And this was Friday. You and did so, not do the exhibition? Oh, yes. <gasps> so I'm there packing bubble wrap this in, is the, where the, in uh, the nighty. This is where the Persian rug came in. You're like, right, we need, <laughs> we need nice are. surfaces now. I've had a baby. See, that is brilliant, isn't it? So it's not clever. as tidy as, but you can see it's very simple to make. And then once again, you would then just do that whip stitch. Do that last bit up. And I mean, I like them wow. really well stuffed. I could put quite a lot more in that. I think they're nice if they're lovely and puffy. It is ever so clever though, strange, isn't it? Isn't and it? this is just a little sneak peek, by the way. If you are collecting the tiles, this is going to be one of the next ones. But they're all exactly the sort of same. If you do want to have a go with it. Something, everything's going to have a in. little something with it. Yeah. Um, there's, oh, a, there's a lot of Biscoe news. There's... A couple of little scissor keepers, and there's certainly two of the zigzag pin cushion, you know, the Biscoe new pin cushions. Yeah. But they're coming later in the year. Brilliant. Every month you're going to have a little something to go with your tile as well. If you've never done it, it's an ideal way to start. Dip your toe in. £9.99. Yeah. Um, yeah, go for it. Now, another brand new project is another beautiful, oh my gosh, I think this is my favourite, the pin cushion. It's a wisteria boxed pin cushion and how beautiful is this isn't it pretty i did like is this it. one of your designs yes i love this jane this is so so pretty look at that and these are all french knots <gasps> and look all around the edge it's a lovely shape as well it's, isn't it it's, and it's very easy to do if you can imagine the, the the chart is a square okay with a flap yeah Yes, so so you you stitch it, and the bottom is the only bit that you join. Right, and just join them the same. Oh, this is gorgeous! It's very isn't sweet. It? Isn't so, it? what do I get in the kit? So you get your fabric, you get your threads, you're going to get your th thread card, mm -hmm. the instructions, and how to make it up. These are beautiful colours. I bet you have so much fun because there must be a lot of colours to choose from. Well, my palette is about 128. Okay. <laughs> because if I choose a new colour. From the, the spinner, you yeah. know, the, the, yeah. the embroidery threads hanging up. Um, then Andrea, bless her, at the office has got to buy these things in cones. So obviously, if I choose a new colour, it's a lot of yeah. expense. Mm -hmm. So on a couple of occasions, not in the distant past, I thought, right, that's it. Dag nabbit, I'm going to have a new colour. <laughs> and I went up to the spinner and I picked new colours and went to my rack and I got them all ready. None of mine argue. It's, it, it wouldn't matter what you use from my range mm. that I use, nothing would actually argue with anything no, else. No, they all work. So, but. you know, the only time I sent out some work to a stitcher, it was the Swallow Sampler. And we were living at Inglestone then, so that's 27 years ago. And um, I sent it out, uh, used new colours, and when we opened the envelope, the whole family went, yuck. It was didn't yeah, work. No. So you don't... No, you've got experience. Don't mess, don't mess with, with it. it. Don't try and change what it's works. A, it's exactly. Um, so you have all of your bundles here, all the colours that you need. Now, you've split them into two bundles. This is yes. in Ada, by the way, your graphics. It's only... Hang on. No, 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 no. Isn't it nice? That's a nine ninety nine bundle. And it's, <gasps> and it's dry rice inside. Oh, my word. I am shocked. It's, like it's like a paperweight. It is. You that know, is a great project well, for £10. Yeah. Right, is this somebody who's got experience stitching? No. Really? I don't see any reason. I, I mean, I don't see any reason it's why... It's all cross-stitch. It's cross-stitch. Yeah. The knots are optional. And anyway, I teach you how to do them. I love Talking those. of which, I will show you a French knot in a minute again. OK. Because it's always a popular question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's another knot you can do too called a colonial knot, which I sometimes think people find easier. But anyway, I'll show you in a minute. <gasps> so is this one done on linen? Yeah. The one that you've done there? This yeah. is linen. So that's what it will look like um, on in linen. linen. And it'll be exactly the same size as that on Ada. There's something about linen, the colour of it, that I, I really, really it's, like. Yes, I it's hopeless asking me because I love it. Yeah. I mean, I bury my face in the fabric to smell it. <laughs> I do. I always, whenever I wear my linen, I always think of you. And if I think it's lip crease, I'm like, it's rich wrinkles. Rich wrinkles, you see? Rich wrinkles, Jane always told yeah, me. Rich, rich wrinkles. You know how linen creases? If you're wearing a top and it's a bit creased, it's linen. not creased, it's rich wrinkles. Silk and linen crease. And now you see, easy care fabrics don't. You see, I don't wear any polyester. No. I'm a lady of a certain age. Well, actually, I'm very much past a certain age. And I still... <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't. 
wear anything with anything in it. It's, it's the other thing is, you know, we're all looking at the environment, aren't we, and mm. touching about things. Why don't we use cotton and linen? It grows. Yeah, yeah. People have jobs. Um, the land is not blowing away in the wind because it's got things growing in it. I mean, why wouldn't we yeah. use more linen? Yeah. I agree, and I just think, it, and it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yes, it does look I beautiful. It, it goes does. with your colour palettes perfectly. You have your chart, you have your linen, you have all of your stranded cotton. You've got your instructions. Do you talk through what order to start your stitching? Where to start Generally, with it? Generally, I do. Where would you start on this one? In the middle. Yeah. And do you it, do the French knots over the top of your work? So you would do yeah, all of do, the house first. Do the house first. Do the house first. Not this one. And then. And then you'll be, you'll be doing these as well. In fact, I think we'll open this one. If you can, that would be great. Uh, this one's <laughs> on linen. Yeah, you do it, not me. I don't want to get told off for <laughs> ruining the lovely packages. Who packs all these? Is it you, Andrew? The elves. Yeah. <laughs> Could I have a pair of very sharp scissors, please, boss? Just £9.99. I am absolutely okay. taken back. There's loads of you who have got these in your baskets. They would make beautiful presents for people if you're just gifting them as they are. The amount of people that must say to you, Jane, oh, would you make this for me or you need to teach me? Or I tell just you get what, them a kit. It's £10, which is about the price of, you know, a bottle of Prosecco. I cannot tell you, at the Stitch Festival, I certainly had four individuals come up to me at the show to buy that. Yeah. And it's, I, I was a bit short with one of them um, because the, it's called the Stitch Show. Yeah. And there's a big basket of pin cushions. That's very good value for um, 9 99 <gasps> And I said, do you actually think that's 9 99 I said, clues in the title, the Stitch Show. Oh, well done, Jane. I love it. They're both sold out, by the way. So, oh. yeah, they're both sold out. So we will quickly the, show you that you get... I'll bring it back. That. I'll bring it back. You see what I mean about the chart? Yeah. And then you add the doings on top. This has got... Now, that's interesting because I'd forgotten this. This has actually got some fractional stitches. Do you see the triangles at the edge? Yeah. Uh, that's a stitch. It shows you how to do it in the words. Um, that's actually easier on linen oh, okay. than it is on Ada. On Ada, you have to guess where that middle hole is, mm -hmm. whereas on linen, it's there already. I and there's, there's the diagram. Those. Please Look. do bring us more of those wisteria houses. They're lovely. So that's the wisteria house, and they've all gone. Um, we've already had people checking out on this on pre-order. Well, I showed it at the start of the show, and this is gorgeous. Have you bought this to air before? No. Right, if you spotted this earlier, this is gorgeous, brand new on Ada and on linen. Full kits are under £20 today. Be aware these will sell out right on Ada. Um, I believe I've got it in front of me. I know that you just saw the... the um... There it is. There it is. Yeah, Let's there bring it forward. Talk me through this then. I love that you've got the alphabet on there. Well, that's so we can play with it, isn't it, really? Flat. Yes, this, well, the tree of life, I mean, I've got a few bits and pieces at home that are the tree of life. I've got a, a big wrought iron thing me bob on a wall. Um, Bill and I bought a very pretty mosaic, wooden mosaic in Jordan, which is the tree of life. Um, I've got a couple of other plaques about the place. And it's, it's such an interesting thing in itself in that lots of cultures use the tree mm. and the tree of life. Mm -hmm. uh, very symbolic. Oh, it they? is. Very symbolic. Um, and the little creek, there's a rabbit there and a snail and a caterpillar. And, I mean, it's, it's all stylized. This alphabet is one of my personal favorites, probably because it's the first one I ever drew when I was learning to design them. Right. Uh, but it just means if you wanted to, you could put initials in here. Great idea. Yeah. Well... Or across the corner. I was thinking, because you've got that alphabet, you could do for a family or for somebody, you could, yeah. instead of, you know, yes, you've you got that. you can make it up. And I mean, I could put Jane did this, <laughs> you know, or wrought by, and exactly. the, you know, so on. So it's, it's these little stylized birds and, ran, and obviously leaves and flowers. It's not in proportion, but they weren't. No. Yeah, no. The, and I love the colours the, in the tree that you've yes, changed the colours. It looks great. So with the Ada... In the kit, once again, you have, you've 
actually even stranded the cogs these in are, for us. Well, these are actually sorted. sorted. Um, the not stranded, sorted. That's yeah, it. the reason for this is not just to please you, all right? And that is, if you look at this set here... They're all very similar colours. Similar, I think we might have had to do four bundles. OK. And we would have got phone calls to say, I don't have any of that one. Mm. And in fact, they're both on the same hole. I'm with you. So in all honesty, to get it right, at, at, at this price, it's touch and go, really, because obviously you're paying someone to sit and do it. Um, you've got the numbers there. If you want to, you can put the symbols there as well. Yeah. However you work, personalise it to make yes, it easier make it for your, you. Yes, make it yours. Um, you've got black and white instructions, the threads and the needle, obviously. Fantastic. It's nice, isn't it? It's I was pleased really with it. It's nice. Really nice really to nice. draw. It's a beautiful, and like you say, I think Tree of Life is just so you symbolic. Can't really go wrong, really. No, you can't. And I've not seen you do a Tree of Life here before. No, I haven't done. Uh, I did one for my book I did for the Beeb. Okay. 30 years ago. Um actually based on sand paintings from um, Arizona. Okay. So a bit different to this. Yeah. But no, this is the first time for many years. Oh, I'd absolutely make the most of that at that price as well. Less than £20. Everybody who's managed to get it, it's a great size as well. But don't be daunted by that because you have also got your negative space. It's, it isn't... Yes, yes. You know, and it's a good Almighty size. amount of stitching. I'm going to do it again. But I'm <laughs> going to do it with scissors this time. We're approaching we'll single figures, FYI. Um, we'll bring the graphics in for the linen just whilst we're opening. Now, this is a lighter colour linen. Yes. Well, it's antique white. OK, um, so they're both... Yep, yeah, antique similar. white. And this is as close as you get with the... Eight. Well, that's not true. Let me start again. All the manufacturers make a white fabric. I don't buy it. OK. Ever. Um, because it's for me, it's too hard. Yeah. I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. but you know, the, it, some things people may like it. You see how big this is? Yeah. And see how big the design is? So you've, you've been got very lots generous. of room, mm -hmm. lots of room if you want to play. And then here's the chart, look. This is a bit, isn't it, you know, it's sort of sad really. I'm covered in goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, what is, what's wrong with a woman? <laughs> I mean, you know, I get, I'm thinking, You just oh, get all excited. I'm going to her home and design something. <gasps> oh, I mean, this is Isn't beautiful. Isn't it lovely? And what's great is that once you've got this chart, I don't want to say, oh, you've got the, all these symbols that you can use for other projects, but you've got all these, you know, yeah. the alphabets. You've got the alphabets, little birds, You've got creatures, lots of different creatures. Look, snails. your caterpillar, butterflies, and it's beautiful. You just keep them. Just keep them. Absolutely. And it's on really lovely paper it, that you can um, done. reuse it. They're really beautifully done. Lots of cross-stitch um, kits that you buy will not be of this quality. I think the charts are lovely. I have to say that that is since Andrea took over. <laughs> you've got your, again, you've got one fully... You with the sort of modern world. And yes. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't know how to do, you know, the software to be able nope. to create the, uh, the charts as you do. Isn't it they're beautiful. It's Only lovely. $19.99. Absolutely make the most of it, especially as you've got all of your pre-sorted cotton ready to go. If you are gifting this for somebody or making it as a gift, it's very, very special Let's try and put it all back together it's now. It's really limited on both linen and Ada. Um, there's nothing else like this. We have not bought anything like this on Sewing Street with Jane. Um, yeah, it is definitely one of our favourites. Loved the big map of the world. And then this is close second for men. <laughs> he says, I think this is my favourite, actually. I love it, isn't it? Gorgeous, gorgeous. Good, good, good. OK, shall we do... Let's have a look. <laughs> what have we got next? The Traveller's Pocket. Here we are. Now, this is really <laughs> Very cool. different. Very, very different. And you've got lots of accessories to go with it, haven't you, as well? Them. We'll do the Traveller's Pocket first. Now, this is, again, on Ada and Linen, I believe. Yep. Yeah on Ada and Linen. So is this another one of your designs? Yes. I mean, this is I, don't ask me where they come from <gasps> because I just don't know. Well, you just dream about them, don't I you? Do, well, I do, really. And driving. I've decided I'm doing a dragonfly sampler. <laughs> For those of you out there who might be interested, it came to me in the car. <laughs> so there's a steamship, yeah. some stamps, um, a sailing ship, obviously, very old sailing ships. And that was just a, I just fancied that idea of the, the birds flying over. 
So have you designed this as a travel wallet to put your well, bits and bobs? Or have you designed a box? Okay. We, there, is a, there was a box uh, as well, which is no longer in production. We don't do any longer. Um, and the pattern was so nice. And I just thought, if you're going away, if you're going on a cruise, let's say, what a nice thing to take your stitching in. Oh, well, exactly. I was going to say, you either design it as something that you're going to put your, so, you know, yes, check-in, boarding passes and things all of like those that. Things, or or your, use your it as your project. And it's got, uh, got buttons on. Because a lot of people do oh, lots of people travelling. You know, whilst they're uh, stitching, they take their, their stitching. They stitch you with them, absolutely. On the go. Look at that, look. Oh, with the buttons as well. That is gorgeous. Okay, so let's talk through the kit. What is it that you get in here? Because this is a big kit, isn't it? So pre-sorted. Brilliant. You get the little linen, um, this stuff. Okay. And you get the lining. Yeah. And you've got the threads on bundles. Yeah. Um, you've got the chart in colour and black and white. Do you well, prefer to work in colour or black and white, the chart? Oh, that's because a lot of people use like a highlighter or something to cross yes. off. Yes, if you ask a stitcher, generally stitchers prefer to work with a black and white symbol chart. Right. Uh, publishers want coloured charts because the books look prettier. Pretty. Yeah. So it's a compromise sometimes. I, I colour in with a pencil. If I'm stitching something like, for instance, this, the sails on here, Mm -hmm. I would stitch that from a black and white chart and colour in when I'd done all the wiggles. So, I, you know, when the phone rings or you're distracted or, you know, you come back, you know where you are. So I'm just looking at this. You've got lots of, obviously, you cross-stitch, but then how do you do all these outlines? That's, that's just backstitch. OK. It's very straightforward. And I suggest you add the backstitch at the end. Right. Because then you don't break it with a stitch, which you could very easily. No, that's uh, That's my idea. choice. But, I mean, th this is your hobby. You know, you do your thing. I love that you've got the stamps as well. Isn't that <laughs> lovely? Now, for somebody who's not a, um, you know, uh, uh, someone who's done bag making or purse making or things like that, if they're only used to make doing wall hangings or something that's two dimensional, doing something that is yes. 3D that you're going to use as like a purse or a bag, yeah. is that achievable not, still? Yes, it's not without hard. too much sewing experience. No, no, I don't think you need any sewing experience. I'm just interested to see if I made it by hand. I did. Okay. So it was made by hand. Oh, look at your silk dupion. Oh, yes, beautiful. lined with a silk dupion, and that's just slip stitched. I'm having to remember. Yeah, look, it's just slip stitched. Okay. And then it's slip stitched down there. So it's made by hand. Right. Beautiful. So there's no, you don't need a sewing machine to make that. Yeah. So you can see you've got just your slip stitch, literally. And that's the so sort of thing I can construct. do in front of a television. Yes, exactly. So I don't stitch in front of a television. I, I listen to stories. Do you listen to podcasts? Yeah. As you know, not no. yet. I'm, my children are still beating me up about it. I have old-fashioned Agatha Christie stories, and I love, love it. it. I <gasps> scuttle off upstairs. So, if you heard John Scott's doing this, uh, you know, his John Scott's Threads of Life, I went on to Loose Threads, yes. his show, which is basically a bit similar, not the same, but similar to, like, Loose Women. Yeah. Where you go and you have a chat about all different things. But you would be brilliant as one of he his panellists. He has blackmailed me into doing You've one. You've got to I do it. I haven't done it yet. You've got to it's do it. It's interesting, though. actually, because I'm, I'm doing my autobiography. Oh, yeah. Well, not an autobiography. Fabulous. I'm doing something called Following the Thread. Yeah. And this is how on earth I ended up doing this yeah. when I was a nurse. Yeah. You know, and, and some of the experiences we've had in the process. So, oh. yes, so John's been egging me on. Yeah, you definitely... It just reminded me, because one of our... I went and filmed for him last week, and we were talking about podcasts and things like that, when you're sewing, listening to something, as opposed to sitting in front of the television. Um, right, so, have you done the linen version yet? No, here we go, linen. So, on linen, you have got everything else that you need. It's a lovely size um, travel wallet as well that's yes. going to be able to fit all your accessories, which we will do next. But inside here, you've got all of your sorted... Cotton, mercerized cotton, the numbers there, which you can obviously personalize and, and, and do a little key if you prefer with symbols. You've got your linen, you've got your chart in color and in black and white and instructions as well, all for £32.99. This is something, again, is new to me. Have you launched this on air before? I, I don't actually know. 
is the honest answer. I wonder if that. this is new. Well, let's go and have a look. We'll have a look and see We're if this is new. Find out. This is the first time I've seen it on air. And normally, even if I'm not here, I'm in the loop of what's being launched and what's coming back. Um, it's been, it has been. You have bought this one to air right. before. It's been very, very, very popular indeed. So if you have missed it, it's thirty-two ninety-nine. Gorgeous. Now, if you do want to make accessories to go within your traveller's pocket, what sort of essentials do you take on the move with you, Jane? Well, I take my gold needles and a pair of very good scissors. Yeah. Actually, that's what I take. But you've got a tape measure. Perfect. Oh, look at this. <gasps> this is gorgeous. And you've got a Pop little, little, little scissor minder. Oh, with um, I say it's not a what bow, this one. This is just your just little cushion. Yes, little, oh, little, look at that. With little the sailing ship on it. And a pink cushion. Beautiful. All of your bits and bobs. Isn't it sweet? All of your accessories to go in. Nice thing to do, even measure. if you didn't do the pocket, actually. You know, having a sort of thing a chap might like, isn't it? Absolutely. Lots oh, yeah, they're loving it in the gallery. There. Lots of blokes stitch out there. I love the starfish. <laughs> that is so cool, isn't it? And the colour palettes, again, they all They do are. sort of go together, mm -hmm. don't they? Don't argue. No, they're beautiful. Um, in the kits, again, you have all of these colours. You're not going to have to go rooting through your stash looking for the colours, the appropriate colours. You've got them all within your kits. You have all of the fabric. This one, I believe, is only on... Um, Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Which one we've got? It's only on linen. On linen? Fab. Yes. You don't yes. have the Ada version available. It's just on linen. But... You get the tape measure and the scissors oh, and the fluffy oh stuff. Oh, my word. Got the fluffy stuff, got the threads, got the little bit of that, which goes around there, look. Actually, it's a different colour. It's got... We've now matched it. So that matches the linen. Which is nice. I mean, that is great, isn't it? Isn't it You've got your wadding. This comes from Valpel and Heilenbeck in Wuppertal in Germany. And we were there at Christmas. And it's just amazing. The fabrics are woven on looms, obviously. But that, there'd be 20 of it being made at once on this great big loom. And you saw it being made? Oh, yeah, we always go and see. <gasps> yes. My daughter was in a buggy the first time we went there. And she's 36. Oh, fabulous. Yes, so you've got the fluffy stuff for padding. Yeah. These are padded slightly, you Which know. Which is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, that's padded, look. Yeah. Yeah. You lovely wadding to go behind, even including your sharp scissors look. and you've got your tape measure. And you always mentioned about having a nice pair of sharp scissors. These ones are great. They're small yes. but mighty, aren't they? Yeah, they're not children's scissors. No, they're really and good. And we used a little, oh, bit of the, little bit of the edge to, to finish off the tape measure. And the button still works. That's why I think it's so clever. Look. So even <laughs> through the wadding, you still got <laughs> your retractable little things. And little, little minds. I know. <laughs> Good. Twenty-four ninety-nine. Love this. Absolutely love it. Right. We have still got quite a bit to show you, and we've only got half an hour left with Jane. So let's move on to the pear tree, if that's okay. I believe it's up at the top. It's Ada there. and linen are available. We'll start with the uh, Ada version. So what are we making here? So this is this. It yes, it is. Let oh, it is. this is gorgeous. Another. A little sampler. Do you collect samplers, Jane? Yes. Do you enjoy stitching a sampler? Yes. Yeah. You can tell. Can't yeah, you? I can tell. That's well, why my palette is the way it is, I think. I don't know how many I've got now. I've probably got about 20, I think. Uh, nothing of mine's on the walls. Everything it, up to now is done by a child of eight or nine. On fine linen, you amazing. know, it's amazing. Yes, so yes, it's a, it is an addiction, and I do love to find them. I mean, and I do, it's sometimes I chart them and make them available as charts. Mm -hmm. Not always, sometimes I just don't have time mm -hmm. because, you know, each leaf is so tiny and you've got to be able to do it onto graph paper or something similar. This is very sweet. The trees are actually done in knots. These are colonial knots. Um, do you want to show us the difference now? This I might be a good. This might be a good be a chance moment, to do it. it. So you've got the French knots and colonial knots, which are they look very similar. I think when yes. you see them stitched, but they are different. They are slightly different. Look at even the different colours in the house that you've chosen. Yes. I mean, the attention nice. to detail in these are absolutely beautiful. Let me just get myself sorted out here. Right. So sorry. Um, it's Ollie. all right. We've got on. it in Ada, 
And just whilst you're sorting yourself out, let's yeah. do the linen. So the linen kit is available once again mm -hmm. with all of those beautiful pre-sorted mercerized cotton strands. Um, you've also got, obviously, Jane Greenoff's design, which has been put onto your lovely chart. Um, it includes your counted cross-stitch chart. You've got your... Um, mm. Well, everything that you need, everything that you need, including your needle. Um, your instructions are just £24.99. Beautiful sampler. You've got that lovely alphabet. Is this the same alphabet that you've used on the Tree of Life? No, this is a smaller one. Smaller. Oh, actually, hang on. No, this is, the, this is yeah. and that's a smaller one. So you've got two alphabets on here. You've got your lovely pear tree, a beautiful border, like this um, beautiful nice. vine design. I love that. The house with the little fence. And I do think adding French knots or colonial knots just adds the texture, doesn't it? Yes, it gives it a little lift, doesn't it? Yeah. And the other thing about it is you don't have to count them. Sometimes it's nice just to sit there and stitch mm. and you add them at random. OK, so I'm doing this on a piece of Ada here. So let's do a French knot first. Okay. So I've just anchored that on the back. Yes. Do you have anything under these French knots? Um, I think on here, all I did was the branches yeah. on the chart and then added at random in any of the greens. Yeah. Which is rather nice sometimes, not having to count and concentrate. You can yeah. just sit and do it. And occasionally, I don't generally use a needlework frame. I work in my hand. Um, but that might be an exception. I have a padded frame. If you can imagine a wooden shape and it's actually wrapped in um i think it's pelmet violin and then some fabric uh, it means i can pin a piece of stitching on really quickly do it and pin it take it off again mm -hmm. so i would probably add these knots yeah. with these on the frame yeah so i can just go yeah, yeah that's a good idea okay so i think we have some of those seat frames in all sorts ones that you, all sorts yeah, you can, yeah. There's some great ones so i'm going to show you um first of all i'm going to show you a french knot so let's just see if I'm anywhere near where I should be. So how many wraps do you do? Two. Two wraps. This colonial or French, sorry? French. And do you go back into... So what I'm going to do, if you were do, we've, we've pinched this from an embroidery, embroidery rather than a counted um, stitching. So I've pinched this from the embroideries. Now, if you're an embroiderer, you go up and down the same hole. Yeah. But because we're not embroiderers, and sometimes on here it's not too bad, but on some fabrics it's quite big, mm -hmm. um, and you would actually go through very quickly. So I don't go through. So if I put the needle, hold it with my thumb, round the point twice, I'm going to post the point next door. The thing that I find difficult is keeping that tension at this point. Well. What you need to do is ignore it until you get to that point. So you've actually let go of the needle yes. completely? Yes, it's standing there. Okay. And leave go late. And you just go down to the next hole along? Or if it's Ada, I split, because otherwise you get a knot and a stick. Do you do French knots? Sorry, I'm asking too many questions. No. Do you do French knots with the same cross-stitch needle, or would you use a sharp? No, I do, well, on the fabric we're using, I'd use a blunt. Yeah, yeah. So let me do this again. If I go round twice. So it's I'm, one that people get unstuck on and you're making this look so simple. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I was, I, I was designing a, a game sampler for a book I was doing and I was doing a crib board and it was two in the morning. I'd listened to Sailing By already. The television had gone off and I was doing fringe knots and they were all on the thread or the back mm -hmm. in tears. Mm -hmm. That weekend, I was at a demonstration in Gloucester Docks, and there was a lady there who'd done the most remarkable uh, perennial border, all in French knots. Oh, wow. Different threads, different everything. And she taught me. Yeah, because that's what I feel I'd run the risk of just, it would just be knotting on my thread yes. instead well, of you getting don't, on the... I think what happens is people try and take it off. Now, look. I've got a bit of a twist on the, on the thread, so let me just turn it upside down and twist it back again. Right, now, if we go round twice, 
Now post the point, don't try and get it off the needle. That I think is the first mistake. At that point you've got a muddle. Okay. So if I pull it up nice and snug on the needle, yeah. now support the fabric underneath a bit with your finger and go. So that's a French knot. What is the difference in terms of the look of it with a colonial knot? Well, if I knot? do some near, bear with me. So colonial knot, I go like that, whoops, like that like that and down the hole. Oh, that looks more complicated to me. Actually, I find that simpler. That's a bit easier. But who, I mean, it's horses for courses, isn't it? So do they look, are they smaller than I think. Shots? I think they, they're probably maybe more consistent. I don't really know. It'll be interesting to hear what you lot think, actually. We haven't heard from many of you. You're obviously all glued to your set. I have to stop and think whether I'm... Oh, you see, now that's interesting. I've right, you pulled that through. Yeah, so let's do it. Let, let's just ignore that one. Okay, let's concentrate on what I'm doing. Round that way, round that way, post the point. There you are. So, again... If you think a backward letter C, round the point, in the next hole, whoops, pull it down nice and gently. And the trick is also not to let go of that one too soon, because you can get knots on the front. Right. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. So practice on the edge of a piece of fabric. And so with your, for example, with the trees on this, these are French knots, but you could do colonial knots Absolutely. if you prefer. So it, whichever one you find the easiest, there's easiest. no there's We no had a bit wrong. of a sweepstake at a fair once, you know. This is some years ago now. We asked ladies who came for class um, to put down on a piece of paper what they did to avoid French knots. <laughs> um, and we had all sorts. I mean, I taught a hundred... Well, after I started counting how many I'd done, I t taught 170 people how to do a French knot. Yeah. Okay, I was cross-eyed. A gold needle is the other thing, because Let's the do those now. well, they slip. The threads slip off a gold needle okay. more easily than they do off a nickel needle. I've just nicked one out of there. Can right, I put we've it got back? the pack with the scissors in first. Yes. Um, so these are your wow, your lovely these, sharp embroidery scissors, but also you've got size 26 and 24. So this is a little starter pack, really. It's for people who's going to do cross stitch, haven't really tried other techniques yet. You've got a 24 and a 26. Now the higher the number, the smaller the needle. Okay. And these will take two strands happily. Um, How many do you work with generally? When generally, you... I would say I use two. Yeah. One for the back stitch and two for the cross stitch. Now that does change depending on what the fabric is you're mm -hmm. working on. Okay. I've got some 20 count linen, which is lovely chunky stuff, and that's three strands for the crosses. So it depends. If, you, if you've got a piece of fabric, it, this works with linen. If you pull, I haven't got anything to do it, but if you pull off a thread of your linen, mm -hmm. that's how thick your threads are going to be that you oh. work with. Oh, that's a good way of, of judging that. It doesn't work with the aider because obviously they're woven in fours. And if you don't know what needle size to use, can yeah. I borrow it for a minute? Sorry about this, everybody. The needle should go through the fabric without enlarging it. And I'm just but not fall forward. through. There we go. Ah, okay. So you, these two are the most commonly used sizes. For cross stitch, yes. Okay, because we've got a pack of all of the different colours. Yes. Now, just very quickly, I know a lot of people who are already just buying the, um, the, the, the gold needles, but... It isn't just for novelty, is it? They're not going to, the gold plating isn't going to come off. No, we, we introduced them nearly 30 years ago now. Excuse me. Um, and I tried to buy them in the UK and nobody would sell me them. So I had needles gold plated in Coventry. Uh, and the man who did it, I can't do his accent. My husband's told me never to try and do it again. But he was very black country. And he said, how much gold do you want? Yeah. And I said, I have no idea. What does it come in? Yeah. 
And he said, well, British nuclear fuels and the MOD use two microns. So you were like, yeah, that will do. That will do. He <laughs> said, do you want the gold to come off? I said, no, I don't. I absolutely don't. I want them to lose them first. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, they are not. you're not going to lose your gold. And they're measured. The gold is measured. We get a little certificate every time we have any platage. And if we had a fault, which has happened once in 30 years, where there was something wrong with the nickel underneath, not the gold, right? Um, they can tell why and what's happened. And the Ministry of Defence used this gold for detonators on grenades. <laughs> so they obviously want them to work, don't Fantastic. they? Fantastic. Um, there's only two left of these, by the way. A lot of people come in and they get them for gifts of people. They're, they're getting them... Um, they are special. Up. I know they're a considered purchase. Um, These big curved ones are great for those boxes that well, you Yes, exactly. You do. And in that set, you've got a beading needle, you've got one sharp needle, you've got 22s, 24s, 26 and 28s. Fantastic. They've all gone. But they're nearly all gone. gone. Um, right, should we do this one? Is this the one that you wanted? Uh, go on, you, ch you tell me. Hmm. Yes, I've got the Jacobean bell pull. Absolutely love it. This is... Uh, one again, I've not seen. I believe you've bought it to air before. We've got it on yeah, Ada sure and we've have. got it on Linen. Um, okay, so this is lovely. Talk to me about this one. It's only ever been well, on air once. It's it's sort of a, uh, my nod to the people who do cruel embroidery, which I don't do. I'm not a good enough embroiderer. I need to be able to count. Um, but this is a pretty pattern. It's uh, very stylized flowers, etc. Now there are quite a few additional stitches added, but they're purely optional. Okay. Um, you absolutely don't need to do them if you don't want to. But if you look at the honeysuckle, you see that's a very stylized honeysuckle. But that's taken from an old embroidery. Right. You know, it hunted out old um, pieces of early cool work to get those sort of shapes. Um, and um, I've added bullion knots and French knots and things. But as I said, that is an option if you want to do it. Um, you don't have to. Look, and the instructions are in the packet. Wow. It is nice. It's, I mean, it's a big, look at that. It's a, a lovely size as well, isn't it? It's, um, and we've all got a bit of wall inches. between doors, haven't we, that it'll fit. I don't know about you, but I'm running out of wall space. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is always, a, you know, that slither of walls. This is a nice shape. You might not have space for a big square, but you've definitely got get room a, get for a, a nice Get a long, thin job. Um, this has all been sorted for you as well. Your cotton, your strands um, of cotton have all been sorted. So you've got all of the colours that you need. You've also got your Ada this time. We have also got it in linen. Um, the Jacobean Bell Ball comes in linen and Ada. There's the linen. We've got so much to do in the next 15 minutes. I'm sorry that we are... Yeah. And an hour and, and a half sounded a long time. It didn't did. It? Well, we thought, oh, we'll be able to have a chat about everything and it's all, <laughs> yeah, runs away with us. Inspired by your Jacobean cruel embroidery, yeah. It is gorgeous. Sweet. It's very I nice. I liked it very much. It, and it's interesting, it didn't have a very strong position at the show. It was hanging on. We have a thing called our mouse house, all right, okay. which is a wooden, like a crate with chicken wire. Right. And it's to stop people stealing work models. <laughs> I hate to say it, but my flower book was stolen at the Festival of Quilts about seven years ago. And it was 11 months work. And the kit's £55. I Honestly, I can't believe that... <laughs> it was as close as I came to jacking it in ever. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I was so cross. Um, and, and, and two people had been involved, quite clearly. They'd obviously distracted me and it had gone. And I got home and my husband... I mean, I was beside myself with rage. And actually, it took me six attempts to put something on Facebook that was printable. Because <laughs> you can't get rid of it once it's there, can you? It's there forever. Yeah. I'd have to tell you, though, the, the funny side of it Did all. Did you ever get it back? No. No. No, someone stole it. I hoped it was a child thinking it was a rag book and a mummy would discover it in the buggy, but it didn't. Uh, the exciting part of the news was that by the Sunday night of that show, the Cross Stitch Guild members had seen the Facebook page and had already stitched, organised the stitching of two books. <gasps> One for me to keep at home or one for the next show. Oh, Isn't that wonderful? what a lovely community. It is an extraordinary community. To join the um, Cross Stitch Guild, you don't need to have been you stitching You don't have for to pass years. a test. No. no. You have to give us money. <laughs> it's really very simple. Cross Stitch Guild is there for anything that's counted. So that's cross stitch, back stitch, black work, hard hanger, hemming, 
anything that starts with blank fabric is what we do. Right. Um, it's a lovely community though, isn't it? I, I know you do all workshops, retreats and all sorts absolutely. of things. Absolutely. It was, uh, uh, of course, I was in tears getting these presents. Oh, I can imagine. But so the mouse house, which is what I was telling you. So sorry, now it's, you've house. got a grabber for anybody. Yeah, yes. So this was well, hanging then. on the inside of the mouse house at the weekend and we still sold out. It was lovely. Stealing of st talking of stealing things, we've got stolen moments. Oh yes. Nice little segue there. <laughs> very good, very good. Stolen moments is this sampler. Now I've taken it off its backing because I wanted to show it to you properly. Now let me just we're making a meal of this. Oh this is lovely. This is I, I love this goosebumps goosebumps. Um, because it's <gasps> like a little bit of hard angle. <gasps> so you this one you start at the top. And it tells you quite clearly how many threads to count, where to start. And this is, well, it's called Queen or Rococo Stitch. Right. But it's known in the guild as Bitch Stitch because you don't... <laughs> Jane, we've told you you can't say that on air. <laughs> it's called a Bee Stitch. Anyway, you can't unpick it. Yeah. You have to cut it out. <laughs> and then there's hen Sorry, stitch. by the way. Anybody, Sorry, everybody. I have to apologise. It's a female dog. Come on. Okay, zigzag hem stitch. Oh, go on, your head's in the way, sorry. There oh. we go. That's fine. We can see There that. we are. Anyway, zigzag it's a band. hem stitch, which is which one, sorry? That one. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And that is, again, you are. Everything. Do you cut between the stitches. It's what you're going to do here is you're going to remove horizontal threads. There, there. It, this is not for the first, first project. You need to have stitched on linen before and worked from a chart before. Yeah. And it is a class. So I teach you how to do each section. Wow. This is getting very furry now because this is getting old. This, this is the name now, Stolen Moments, is the name of the Guild magazine. Because oh, okay. Bill said I had to steal moments to stitch this. Yeah. And I thought that would be wonderful as a name. There's some acorns there, look. Love that one. With little knots Gorgeous. to make the, the cup. And I love the, all of these different these techniques. techniques, yeah. It's a nice a thing to stitch. A real sort of skill builder, isn't it? Yes, exactly. That's a phrase I shall nick yeah, for yeah. future reference, yes. So you've got alphabets on here, old English alphabets. And because letters. sometimes, I mean, I love Hardanger, and there is some amazing projects of Hardanger that you've, you've launched with us. But if you just want to dip your toe and try out these different yeah. techniques... But if you don't like a hit. stitch, you haven't got to do very many. Absolutely. And that's the kit. Look, that's right, so linen. it's another big kit. We've got it on um, linen available. Oh, I linen. believe just linen, yeah. Yes, because you need linen Have for these... Have you got these some metallic threads Yes, in a little there. bit of gold. What's Where's that well, under, There. It's on those stitches there and there. Beautiful. Oh, I do love the metallics as well. But you've got all of your lovely colour palette. You've got your linen, your sorted cotton, and all of your instructions and charts. Full lots, instructions lots of as instructions, well. if you feel the weight of that. Yeah. <laughs> and nice graphic charts. Fab. So you're, you're, if you haven't done these stitches before, don't panic. Jane will talk you through. It's £26.99. Um, that is that one. I think I've got one other kit to show you before we move on to the books. Um, and, oh, I know what it is. We haven't done this one. We haven't done the precious, um, oh, the precious needles. <gasps> this is absolutely beautiful as well. Let me show you. You've got the little button here. And it says, my precious needles. And it is, oh, look, you've even got places for your gold-plated needles, your beading, and your odds and ends. Absolutely. Isn't that lovely? It started off as a little sampler. OK. When I first did it, it was going to be a sampler. And then I thought, why don't we make it into something? It's nice to be able to have things that you use. Because yes. I bet, like you said, you're running out of wall space. It's nice to have yes. things that can be stitched. Absolutely. Again, this is lots of cross-stitch. There's B-stitch here. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of pulling out and clever stuff going on here. That's not a first project. No, okay. But everything's included: the lining and the button. Is this and on linen? To make it. It's on linen, and there you go. Got it on linen. What's the difference with uh, the? Will they all be the same colour, or is that two different? That's two colours. Two colours. So you've got that for the oh, inside. Oh yes. Oh perfect. So your two colours. You've got a black and white chart in there if you prefer to, to work with black and white chart, but you do also have um, the coloured and you have your instructions, full instructions to be able to do it. And that is beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it sweet? Really lovely. Um, very useful. Obviously, we're always going to need to be able to take our needles with us on the move. Absolutely. Move, so they're lovely. 
Okay, then we always ask because there's so many people who are who always request it. So we've included your books. Now we've got the stitch book, which is the fourth and final edition. It is the final edition. It is the final edition. We are due to reprint soon. Okay. Um, they are signed. Oh, brilliant. And I just want you to see these stitches. This is the wonderful Ethan. Do you still refer to this yes. book? Yes. I not to 30 I, years at I plus. have a fairly dog-eared version on my desk. Okay. Um, in fact, I think I've lost the back cover off mine. Um, it's got a proper index. I like the, the fact that it, it's a ring binder that you can lies work flat. from. I'm going to say it lies flat. This one is a bit bendy, so I shall investigate where it's been stored. Hmm. <laughs> so you've got the different stitches. Each stitch gets a page. I didn't know there were so many stitches in the world of it's, this counted is, embroidery. It's interesting. We call it the Cross Stitch Guild. Now, in America, Cross Stitch includes all these stitches. Okay. In this country, Cross Stitch is painted by numbers and you work it on Ada and it's red, white and blue. Yeah. And it makes me cross yeah. because it, it's not actually like it's that. It's any counted embroidery, it's anything is that right? counted, okay. yes. How to stop, how to start. And then you've got stitches in alphabetical order. Um, when we were doing this edition, um, we actually asked the members, is there anything else you'd like? And so we've got how to do the folded hem, which is the hem round stolen moments, how to make twisted cords, wow. how to make tassels to go on the end of twisted cords, how to make a biscornu, how to make a watch bow. Oh my gosh, this is a crazy value for money then, it's, it's very good, isn't, it? isn't it good? And I know that you said that this is the fourth edition because you physically can't fit any more pages within a it, ring binder it, like this. It, it, apparently, I can get two more pages oh, in. Oh, okay. After that, it has to, and I'm not doing any, I'm not doing a bigger binding. I mean, that's, I, I want it to go in your project case yeah, yeah. and come with you. Um, 120 stitches and techniques yes, in there. And it's, it's brilliant, it, isn't it? And as I said, if I'm learning, uh, well, no, if I'm, sometimes I go to do something and I sit there and go, okay. And, you know, and then I'm... Uh, well, there's a lot of stitches, isn't there? So I just look it up. And like you say, you can go straight to the index, yeah. find the, the stitch exactly. that you're after. Yeah. It's all really clear. Very, very clear. With very clear. the images and with the text which is brilliant, isn't it? It's only £13.99, and I think for anybody who has worked with any other patterns as well that aren't as descriptive as yours, yes. or if you just want that handy... Just ever so clever, isn't it? Yeah, we love this book. It always it. sells out when we bring it on air, so just be aware. It is the signed edition, and it's only £13.99. Another one of the techniques which we absolutely adore, is hard anger. We spoke about it. You may have dipped your toe in and just done a little... If you want to learn more about hard anger, you've done you a go. book. And again, it's in a little ring-bound book, so you can understand about the history of it. Where it comes from, why it's still in existence in Norway. And I've done, if we just scoot through a little bit further... I mean, you've gone right to, back to basics with it yes. as well as that's, really starting That's it. how you do the stitch. That's what it's going to look like. There's the knot on the end. That's how you change direction and do the stitch next to it. And this little section teaches you exactly how to start and finish, what gets pulled out and pushed out, and what happens to it. And that's what you make. Oh, beautiful. So the first thing you do is make yourself a scissor keeper to go on your scissors. Yeah. And if you can make that, you can make all of these. It just amazes me, like you say, they use it still in traditional costume. costume very yeah. much so. And if you I imagine think it's rather wonderful that oh. you could put the same costume on for all the family weddings. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in my house, you have to have something different. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but oh, it's a lovely book again, and honestly, this technique is going to be very addictive. But it's daunting, isn't it, when you've done all these stitches and then you then go you with your fabric. scissors. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you, if you, uh, my first attempt at Hardanger, they fell off. <laughs> you, because be I'm prepared. Yeah, yeah, I'm naturally mean, and I thought it was using too much thread. Right. So I was wrong, put it in the bin, and didn't touch it. And then my husband and I, when the kids were on holiday in Pawleys Island in South Carolina, and there was a shop there, a needlework shop, called The Counting House. And Terry Ballinger said, I'll show you. Come, come in before the shop. I'll, you'll do it before, before coffee time. Amazing. And my dog ate it. <laughs> I made a scissor keeper. 
uh, thrilled to bits I was. I cut it and, it absolutely, and I understood the technique. I understood the reasons why it had gone wrong the first time. Put a pair of scissors on it and dear Charlie, who was our first dog, well, he, he either ate it or put it in the, buried it in the garden. So that was the end of that. <laughs> so you had to do more. I had and to, had to, to do more. Had to do more. Love and it's it. wonderful. I love it. Um, is there anything you want to recap then? Let's recap the uh, the March edition tiles and what bows, if that's okay, Jane. Yes. So for anybody who has missed every month, we are launching a brand new tile that's exclusive to us, There's designed March. by Jane. All of the colours will coordinate each other. There'll be different floral designs, geometric designs to come as well. But this is March, um, brand new in today. It's gorgeous. I'm pleased with it. It worked well, didn't it? And the different border, different colours like work. Yes. Really, really like that border. So it's quite a traditional sampler border. And then we're going a bit wild in the middle, really. Fabulous. And then that's the little wattbow that goes with it. Um, which is one of the little, well, three of the little flowers. So if you do want to dip your toe in, maybe, get yourself the what bow kit. It comes with everything that you need, uh, which is only £9.99, or the tiles are £14.99. I believe the what bows on Ada have now sold out. I think we have the what bows on linen. Okay, literally 15 of them left. If you do want them, ignore that on linen um, and we've got more than that in baskets but it is a great little kit isn't it's a good it one to learn. if you want to learn to work on linen it's an absolute speech because you'll do it yeah without committing with, to buying a without huge going load. getting yes getting too scared um the march is available on both the tile is both uh, available on ada and linen at the moment at the moment 14 pounds 99 for the ada and just a reminder on the linen as well, everything that you need, including your needle, instructions, charts, black and white charts, coloured charts, everything, £14.99. Thank you ever so much, Jane. Have you got a date in that we're coming back? Yes, I'm back. I'm back in April. Don't ask okay. me when. For an April tile. Lovely, lovely. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Have you designed month. all of yours? They're all done. Yeah. Uh, two are being stitched. The final two are being stitched, December and November. Brilliant. They're all done and dusted. It's been fabulous to see you. And you, Thank sweetie. You so much. And you. Um, don't go anywhere because in a couple of minutes we're going to be bringing about Wendy Orlando. We've got another brand new project with her. We'll give you a couple of minutes during the break to check out on everything you've seen. Because every time we see Jane, we're just chatting away about everything. I, I think everyone's engrossed by it. So keep going through anything else that you uh, have got questions about. Get them in and uh, hopefully we can answer them for you. But we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Bye. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. 
You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one PMP throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard PMP is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Hello, hello, welcome back. Wendy, are you all ready for round two? I've, I've ding, ding. had my coffee, I've had, I've eaten, so I'm raring to go. These are beautiful, brand new to us. Brand new. Yeah, our pinwheel delight cushions. Um, I do love the fact that they're very tactile, three-dimensional. Once again, that sort of illusion of how have you done that? How does that work? Is it origami? Is it... No, a little bit of folding. A little, little bit of folding. <gasps> Fabulous. So we've got three kits, three kits. Now, am I right in saying that the kits will make two cushion fronts or... Two cushions. Two cushion backs as well. Two cushions. Back. The only thing you need is wadding and a zip. <gasps> Fabulous. Is there a colourway you want to start with, Ben? Purple, please. Okay, Liberty. This is your designer version. You've got here your instructions from Wendy, which we'll talk through with her. And then, right, so you've got a metre of your white. Um, I'm just looking at Wendy, checking that I'm right. She'll tell me if I'm wrong. You have half a metre oh. of your purple. Uh, magenta and then you're also getting half a meter of Emily Bell in purple now We have been very 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 generous here because your instructions say that Emily Bell Is a fat quarter she should have only been a fat quarter. You got half a meter there 28.99 You can make two Liberty cushions. How much are Liberty cushions? Um, you can get two of them in this beautiful unique design from Wendy Orlando today for 28.99 they are gorgeous, absolutely flying out and very, very limited. It is nice to be able to make two, I must say, because quite often we do cushion kits and you can make one. But personally, on a sofa, on a chair, on a bed, you want two. I'm very symmetrical. If I do something on my left, it needs to be done on the right. Yeah. But, um, and also with the fact that Sewing Street have been generous and upped it to half a metre, it means that instead of having to make two identical cushions, you can swap the colours around. Ah, oh, fabulous. Oh, yeah, so I'm with you. So see how you've got your um, piping, not piping? Yes. <laughs> this bit here. Uh, and then you've got the stripes here with your, your pinwheel. It's up to you if you want to flip it. I do like having... 
this one as your main fabric. But if you want to have Emily Bale, you know, in the background and then the purple as your main, you can. But it just gives you that room to be able to, to play around. Or also, it means that you've got some liberty left over in your stash. You're only going to need half of that, which is brilliant, isn't it? So um, £28.99, I think, is another fabulous price. It isn't just cushion fronts. They are cushion backs as well. And I do like that you've put the side zip in. These are great skill builders because a lot of people are scared of... Have you put it on the side? <laughs> I've got a zip on the side or on the top or on the, on, the on the bottom. I've never I like it on the side. It's on the side here. Because, I've got the... because it's symmetrical. You can have it wherever you like. <laughs> but she does also. If I just move this cushion, it's now on the bottom. It's on the bottom. We're happy with that now, aren't we? Yeah, happy, happy with that. I'm happy now. That looks so much better now, doesn't it? Well, on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you also have all of your instructions of how to do your, you know, your insert, your zip, things like that. Because lots of patterns, they just say, now, put your cushion together. Presume you know how to do it or do an envelope back. Whereas here, nothing is presumed. We're just, you know, going to give you the instructions as well to be able to do, to, to be able to do the more difficult version. $28.99, and that is your designer version. That is your Liberty version. I say that, what's this one? This looks very nice as well. That's also Liberty. Lib that's Emily Bell, okay. Um, okay, can you just forget this ever happened? Let's not mention this again, but just put the graphics in. This is $22.99. I don't know why this is lower in price. It shouldn't be. Can you hear him in my ear yeah. shouting no, I can why? hear him from the galleries. <laughs> um, this is gorgeous. Once again, fat quarter. Oh, no, 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 no. We have been very, very, very generous and you are getting the botanist's bloom. Half a metre. A whole half a metre of Liberty which is amazing. You're getting loads of fabric there for £22.99. Please remember, your instructions are available, £10. You're getting all of this fabric for £12.99. Two cushions. Two cushions. <laughs> and this really cool new technique. I mean, that is amazing, isn't it? Two cushions, £6.50 a cushion. You and would pay pounds. upwards of £30 in a store. But you're being conservative there. Oh, okay. Liberty cushions. Oh, upwards of £40. <laughs> love them. I love them. Um, and they are three-dimensional, really tactile. Zip at the bottom, they're lovely. £22.99. This colourway, this colourway is really nice. £22.99. Right, anybody who manages to get these, well done. Um, needless to say, very, 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 very limited. If you've got anything in your basket, go for it. And then last colourway is the one the sample's made up of. Lovely and springy. This is Ben's fave. This is Ollie's fave as well. $22.99. This is Wendy's favourite. I shouldn't have favourites. I love the Liberty. I must say I'm such a magpie for anything Liberty. Oh, I do have one. They said it's like children, you kind of have favourites. I'm like, oh yeah, I've got a favourite. But <laughs> it changes, it changes daily. But I am like... Oh, that's different. If it changes daily, that's different. It's whoever's <laughs> let me have more sleep. Yes. It's whoever's, you know, just being a good, good egg. <laughs> so you've got your instructions. Half a metre, once again. Half a metre of your gold. And then you're getting of your white one meter of white for your back uh, background and of course the back of your cushion as well. And they're big cushions, aren't they, Wendy? They are to fit an 18 inch. But of course, if you want to put another border on, you can go as large as you want. Ex absolutely. And then once you know how to do this, that'd be lovely in the centre of a quilt. That would be really lovely, wouldn't it? Oh yes. Um, Twenty-two pounds ninety-nine. Um, right, whoever manages to get these, well done, because they will all sell out once again. It's been another very, 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 very busy show. Um, 
pattern individually. Go for it. Go for it. It's absolutely flying out. Because, right, I'm going to throw caution to the wind and just say it. I have not seen a pattern like this before. I've not seen this foldy technique. This is really clever. I want to know how to do it. You've got to buy the pattern. It's only $9.99. Yes, you can do your cushions. It's got your full construction of the cushions, the, the cushions and the block, but also you are going to be able to use this on the front of a bag. You could put it onto, uh, well, all sorts. Could you know me, I, I designed something that can be used for other things. So yes, it could be a quilt. It could be a bag table runner the, the the only difference with this it has got that three-dimensional so you don't if you did have it as a table runner you don't want to get things caught underneath the true wheel true um it is like a fabric windmill isn't it these are really clever uh wendy's done it again by the way she's also included your cutting guide so from the fabrics you know that you'll get or Actually, is it from the fat quarters that you've And you've that's, why you're, that's why you'll see this time... Um, the green one the, there. Yeah, the, with the green one, that is a fat quarter. And the reason you can only get two identical with the fat quarter is the way that the strips are cut. But of course, because we've got now half a metre, what I would suggest that you do is almost treat them like fat quarters because that way then you'll be able to... When yeah. I cut this one, and you'll see I'm doing this one the, the opposite way round to that one, so that you get an idea. Um, <gasps> but it's the fat quarter that's the key in this. That's the one that you need to make sure you cut right. So choose which way you want to do it, whether you want to do it like Wendy has at the front here um, with the Liberty, you can see in the sort of background, or if you want to do it like this with the, the fabric, the, the you know, your floral fabric in the front, choose which one, cut the one accordingly into your fat quarter. So if you want, am I right in saying, if you want the main one, is that your fat quarter fabric? The, the floral one yeah. is the fat, fat quarter, yes. So you would cut it but, like that. So you're basically getting two cushions, your kit, and a fat quarter for free. But if you look at the instructions, you'll see that the, the blue and the green ones, if you treat them as fat quarters and cut them, yeah. then that's, those are the two that you can interchange. Right, yeah. But the other one you need to, because that's the metre. So if you are buying the pattern on your own, um, you'll need a metre of the, the white or the cream that we've got yeah. here half a metre of one and a fat quarter of the other. So if you've got your own fabric, yeah. you can use it. But I would say, you know, get half a metre of each and then you can have same, not same. So yeah. they look the same, but they're not the same. Yeah, I mean, that's great, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's just, um, yeah, so, so many options with this and such a fabulous price. Your instructions on their own, if you are diving into your stash, Go for it. It's only £9.99. There are less than 50, by the way. We had hundreds of these. What's the stock update now, actually? Because Ben did tell me there were less than 50 about five minutes ago. Uh, there are not going to be many of these remaining. If you do want to get your instructions, right, there are now 35 remaining. Over 40 of you have got them in your basket. Just be aware. Yeah, they will go. Right. Is there anything else you want me to mention? Because I've got lots of other bits on the desk. Uh, what have you got on the um, desk? <laughs> but we can come to those if you want as we get to them within your demo. So what have you got on the desk? I've got the list of iron. <laughs> have you? Yeah. Yes. Again, I've, I've only met this little chap this morning. <gasps> love it already. I've fallen in love. Well, it's essential, isn't it? I think it's as important as your sewing machine to have a good, good iron. Definitely. Um, and with this, because we're working in smaller pieces, a smaller iron is really useful to have. Don't get me wrong, I love its big brother. You know that, I, I'm a, a huge favorite of its big brother, but there are times when a smaller one, you can get into the corners and it, it just works better. Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, if you like a plique to be able to mm. isolate different pieces, it, it's brilliant. Now, obviously it is a more considered iron um, to our, you know, mini varieties that we've bought in the past. But my word, this is just next sort of level, isn't it? It's got your standby um, and safety auto off. It's also got this one here. Um, it's got the precision tip, so it easily reaches into the smallest seams and corners. It's got that lovely glide sole plate, so it lets you glide effortlessly over any sort of fabric that you want to, to press. It's also got a rest, so the um, the soul mate it's called um, you can rest it onto the uh, onto the soul mate when it's done so it's it's yeah she's brilliant she's it? put it on its soul uh, I mean it's a fabulous fabulous iron it's got lots of um, features and functions which are going to 
to make it really easy for you as a sewer. If you're a left-hander, you can actually swap the whole call round onto this side. You can see that little uh, oval here. You can change it. Also, you've got a torch. Why is that useful? I say a torch. It's got the light. You know, like on your hoover. Late where night you sewing. That'd field. be amazing in mine place because I, I do late night sewing. Oh, so. okay. So you don't have all your big lights on. You just got your. Little well, I do, light. and I still can't see. And <laughs> so that would be amazing to have that because then, as you're um, pressing, you can see the seam in front of you. Brilliant. And and actually, I'm doing something this time that I've never done before. I'm doing the cushion is actually quilt as you go part of it. Oh. Okay. So it's wadded, and we're doing that as we go along, which I have never done before. What wadding did you use? I used H640 because it's right. a fusible wadding. Um, is that just one one unit's okay? Or um, it's I'll show you how big it is. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. Oh, is it a metre yes. piece that oh, we've right. bundled for you? Absolutely perfect. There you go, a metre piece. That's fine for both cushions. Perfect. And it's the one that's sort of fleecy on the top and it's got the glue adhesive on the back. And you'll see it in action anyway. I haven't, I've always used fusible only because it's just so easy. Yeah. And this is where the smaller iron is going to come into play because, because we're doing a quilt as you go, you don't want the iron tip to go beyond the fabric. Otherwise it would get in the glue and get all messy. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing for this one. Great. Right. What techniques are you going to show us then? When I'm going to try and make as much of it as I can. Uh, so again, the instructions, this is a very simple cushion. You'll see in a moment how it's constructed, but they're all there for you. The, it's very, very thorough instructions. It shows you every step of the way. And there's lots of top tips in there because for someone that has never done this before, when you're just told to do something, you just do it. But if you don't know why you're doing it, then you're not going to be able to learn and grow your sewing. So a lot of my top tips tell you, you need to do this because. Um, so it's all in there for you. And this one is a zip. So I've put a zip in it. I usually do an envelope back, mm -hmm. but um, I've, I've now also shown you how to do a zip here. So this one isn't an envelope, this is a zip. You won't have enough fabric to do an envelope, but if you've got your own fabric at home and you want to do that, that's, that's perfectly fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is you cut out all your pieces following the guide. And this is really important uh, so that you can get all the pieces out. Again, I've, I've not been tight, I've been frugal, I've designed the cushion around the size of the fabric. I didn't want to go beyond a metre. That's why you can, you can see here, you won't be able to get an envelope back out of it. But the instructions tell you how to cut each cushion out, but the diagrams show you for two cushions so that you know that you can cut them both out. The, the, the fat quarter, if you have bought the instructions and are doing this at home, this is the one that you need to pay uh, attention to more than anything because you'll see that they overlap you can't just cut it in half mm -hmm. and cut the pieces out because you'll see that this one here goes beyond the halfway mark um, but the instructions in there it tells you all how to do it and then it's got step by step so this is what we're going to do we're going to work through the pinwheel Wendy, why do you highlight certain words in your pattern right this is not shouting at you <laughs> why are you shouting at me <laughs> It's not shouting, but it's saying, if you don't pay attention to any of the rest of it, you need to pay attention to that. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's in here, it's diagonally. So you don't want to be folding it in half. You want to be folding it diagonally. Right. So it's just, well, you'll be able to pick out the bits that you need. Because once you've made this once, you'll just be able to gloss through it again and mm. again and again. And as far as I'm concerned, I want everyone to make as many as they possibly can and sell them and get lots of, lots of pennies from Are them. Are you discreetly asking <laughs> Wendy if she would like a coffee? Would you like anything from the coffee shop? What coffee shop? <laughs> <laughs> would you like a cappuccino? <laughs> no. Do them in there? Cappuccino? A latte. <laughs> I was going to say that. We, you were in vision. We could see you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we're discreetly uh, asking. Yes. Um, My talkback's gone whilst we're discreetly asking. Oh, well, that, the, that's the, fine, the, isn't the, it? The, um, the magic of telly. So I want this to be, again, everyone, so that everyone can do this. It's not difficult. It's just about taking your time and working through it. So the first thing we're going to do, once we've cut out all our pieces, is work from the centre outwards for this. So we've got our pinwheel, and I've got my four 
backing fabrics of my pinwheel and my four internal. Now, when I've designed this, I've made it so that the pinwheel doesn't go right up to the edge and you also need to trim it because again, what I was saying earlier, Vix, is that if you trim something down to size at every step of the way, it's going to fit. Mm -hmm. If you were to sew these four pieces together, I can guarantee yours would not be the same size as mine. But if we both created it and then trimmed it, then it definitely would be. So the first thing we're going to do is take our pinwheel and you will see, I think you've got the other cushion. I'm just going to grab it here. Sorry, I'm just going to take that one. Is on this one, the pinwheel is the dusky pink. I don't know what if that's the, the proper yeah. name for it, but it's the dusky pink. And on here, we're going to make the pinwheel out of this one. So the first thing we're going to do is press it wrong sides together. And again, in the instructions, um, I've, I've shown you diagrams, but because with the diagram, um, I've had to shade it a slightly different color so that you can see it on the diagram, but it is the same side of the fabric. Right. So we're going to do, and that will be obvious when you actually read the instructions. So we're going to do the same here. So try and be as accurate as you can with the folding. And then when we've got that, we're going to put the folded diagonal to the right and we're going to take the bottom right corner over to the left and press it. And that's that created fix. That's it. I'm watching your origami. <laughs> I know you are. I know I love you it. are. But um, as I say, I, I've, I, I made a few because I wanted it to, um, I don't want the pinwheel to go right to the edge again because I think if, if something is a little bit out, we won't be happy with it. Well, hopefully this one is almost foolproof. Um, that one is now completely sold out. Oh, I love this one. We've got the sky blue uh, as your main graphic now. That's only 22 99 as well. And that was, that was everyone's fave. That was your this favorite. One. This one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Now, a little bit controversial here, I know, but that's what I'm like. Quilter's tape, have you got this in the show? Quilter's tape mm -hmm. is something that if we have had Becky and Alexandra Frost or who else is absolutely obsessed with it, it always just sells out. We might have it available. I haven't got it on the desk here. What, what do you use it for here? Well, instead of pins. Okay. Um, so I could use pins if I want to. You can yeah. use pins, of course you can. Uh, but if I can get away with pinning, I will. So I'm going to turn this over. Now, the right side is the uppermost side that's got the little flappy bit that's yep. got the fold. So I'm going to turn it over and put a little bit of tape on the back to hold it into place. Like that. And then I'm going to get one. So this will be right side facing up. But again, because it's the plane, it, it's hard to tell. I place it in the corner and I'm lining raw edge, the right angles of the raw edge to the raw edge. Okay. And we do that on all four pieces. You can pin it into place if you want to. So that middle bit is made up of four white squares. It's made up of four um, ivory squares. Ivory, no white. For this one, white, white in that, <laughs> white in that oh, case. Yeah. <laughs> I am a huge fan. I, mean, I know I'm a little bit boring with it, but I do <laughs> like to have a white or an ivory or a cream as the background because then I think it really makes the other fabric pop. There's a massive contrast, but again, if you're if you've just bought the pattern, you can do whatever colorway that you want. And I will just mention, I have best pressed these. Okay. Um, I suppose when you're doing folding, you want those folds to be sort of sharp. Nice and sharp. It's not like any sort of starch that you may have used on your shirts and things in the past where it makes it really stiff or leaves residue on your needle or anything. It is a specifically sort of and it's designed yeah. sewing. It's exactly. designed to be sewn. It is available underneath us on the web. I think we had it on the show in the last hour with Wendy. I think there's the lavender and vanilla scent, which looks Ooh. purple, but even if you're spraying it on your white, it, 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 it won't leave any, you know, colours staining onto your fabric. It's lovely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of having pins, I'm going to do a tacking stitch around the raw edges. Now, because it's only to tack it into place, what I'm going to do is start off the edge of the fabric uh, where the two fabrics meet. 
and I've set my stitch to a five. And I go off the edge and instead of turning around the corner, I'm just going to start a little bit in and that saves me having to sew off the fabric because machines don't like to be to sew sewing on there. nothing. Yeah, they like to be sewing on something. So all I'm doing is making sure that I've got stitches on the two raw edges and I do that again or you, I mean, you could pin, but I think pins get in the way very often with me. Uh, so I like to eliminate them. How are you getting on with your jute cage? You still love it. I absolutely love it. But I don't know if you know. I, well, no, you won't know because I've not seen, seen you yeah. forever. I've now got the smaller version as well. Oh, have you? Because this is a little bit, uh, I love it. I absolutely adore it. It's a little bit cumbersome to carry. Oh, and yeah. um, I have had a frozen shoulder for the last, like, nine months. It's just releasing, which is great. But it means that I've not been able to lift it. And um, so, do you tend to transport this big machine? No, I won't no. because I'm not the, um, I'm rather clumsy. Yeah. So I'm so scared of dropping it. Well, it's a it's it's heavy. weighty machine, it yeah. Is heavy. You want it to stay put. Well, and it's up 24 seven in my, in my room. So your smaller one is the one that you That's use. the one that I take with me. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Um, and it, it is, you know, it's the mother juki because there's something about jukies, isn't there? They're just incredible. They're like little power workhorses. So I've done that with, all four of them and then we're going to create the pinwheel now to do that you take your first one and there's a diagram in there that shows you how to do it so you do your first one and then you just rotate the next one 90 degrees and then you put that the same as that one and rotate it 90 degrees ah. and then you put that one and rotate it 90 love degrees love it so it, oh. it turns into a pinwheel um, Debbie says, morning from a very wet Northern Ireland. I've oh. made a couple of basic cushions. Do you think a relatively, you know, beginner sewer could make this? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. I love that because it looks really complicated, but you've just seen it's yeah. literally fold and, and stitch up down and it's the positioning of it. It is, but also again, what I've done is you make this and if it's not quite the right size, it doesn't matter because I'm going to tell you to trim it. Yeah. So if your seams are a little bit off, then it doesn't matter. So we're going to place the top two right sides together. Now, a little tip here, because there's nothing, this is why I designed things the way I do, there's nothing to match up here, so it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is place those right sides together, but then I'm going to flip it because I want to start at the bulky end with my okay. stitches oh, yeah. rather than this end, which is only got those two layers, because it just... It behaves better. I'm going to do a quarter of an inch stitch. Now, you will need to increase your stitch length slightly, only because we're going through quite a lot of layers. Okay, well, you... So I put mine two. up. Mine automatically sets as a two yeah, yeah, when it's... Uh, small, I It think. is small. So I've just increased it to 2.4. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to sew my quarter inch seam along the side. Now, you will see <laughs> I haven't pinned these, but that's only because I know we're going to trim them down. And this is why I've designed it this way, is that when you trim something down, you have a bit of wiggle room. And the, the last thing you want as a new sewer, is a beginner, is to fall at the first hurdle because mm -hmm. it hasn't come out the size I said you should make it. Yeah. Whereas I'd rather do it this way. Oh, I'm so excited for somebody who, you know, has just maybe made their first cushion, more sort of simple cushion, and you can then make this which is oh i mean you're gonna learn so many different techniques hang on a minute what what cushion is simpler than this <laughs> well <laughs> it looks so complex <laughs> wendy like it does it looks like you are you know very very advanced <laughs> so when you create something like that because you're thinking well how was that how, how yeah how does that how? work um and what i'm very doing clever. now is i'm pressing the back seam you've got uh two seams here you've got one that's got a lot of fabric and one that hasn't one's only got half so I press the fabric behind this long piece of fabric yeah and if you do that on both of them they will naturally nest now all nesting means is the the seams are going in opposite directions and they they, they kind of fit together and then again I'm looking to see which one I mean these are a mirror image of e each other so um, it doesn't really matter you just if you just make were to make two the same because mm -hmm. I'm just going to spin this one so but now because I've pressed that one behind that one and that one behind that one what machine is it that you're working on Wendy 
I'm on the Juki NX7. <laughs> Someone asked which one, which is the small version that you've got that you said about. And you do sell it here. I want, DX3? that's what I was going to say. I think it's the, the DX3. Um, have you got it yet? Oh, yeah. You've got it at home? Oh, yes. I've had it a long, long time. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're going to join the top to the bottom. So we place right sides together. And because one seam went that way and one seam went that way, they're going to clip. They, they just sort of, sort of like snap into each other. And again, you're going to see that I'm not pinning, but if you are new to um, doing this technique, just pin it. And also, do you know what? If you're not quite, if it doesn't quite match, just put a button in the middle. Oh, yeah, I love that, yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with sewing, there's always ways that you can sort things. You know, nothing's ever that bad. And we're going to press that open. Oh, it looks so cool. Right, there's the Juki wow. DX3. It's at the moment on offer where you get a free extension table, which is worth £89, which is great, isn't it? We were talking about having that extra extension table for your quilting. That's the machine. Is that right, Wendy? It's on five-way wow. split pay today. I've not even seen this machine yet. Did we recently launch it here? I don't know how. I think they've had it a little while, but it's... Fabulous. It is. And um, does it still, even though it's a smaller machine, does it still have, you know, that work called sort of powerhouse There's, there's something about a Juki that just takes it. It just, you, you can throw anything at, well, not literally anything, yeah. but it, it, yeah. it just works for you, which is, is brilliant. Uh, obviously, the, this one is <laughs> the next level. Yeah. Uh, so it does have a lot more features, but that is phenomenal. When you just want a little machine to go, yeah, you're not going to bother me today. You're just going to work for me. Yeah. Because um, I've had machines in the past that have just not wanted to play. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. And it does affect your sewing, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Well, yes, because I would have a tantrum and then just have to walk. I mean, I don't have tantrums often, but um, I would just have to walk away from it and then go back to it. Uh, and very often, more often than not, it was user error. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do now, we, we've created the pinwheel and we're going to trim it down to size. Now this is where these centre seams come into play because ideally you want to trim equal amounts each side. Do you give the measurements inside? I give the measurements okay. inside. So what I'm going to do now is put the halfway, so I'm going to trim this down and I'm going to put the halfway measurement on that centre line. So then I trim that side <laughs> and that side and again I've got my trusty my trusty um, stripology out fabulous I'm going to do the same here and I know that you recommended earlier I know you love the mini the mini is sold out um, at the moment I believe but you always say go with the bigger one that you can afford because you can do all the small things I couldn't do this on the mini no uh, this will go up to, if you were making a 12 inch block, mm -hmm. this will cope with it perfectly because it's 13 inches. The one that I made um, in my quilt is 16 inches. You can still do it, but you do need to wiggle it down, but you can still do it. I remember when we first launched Stripology. I mean, it was way back probably, oh, I don't even know whether it was sewing quarter days, but it didn't have the squaring up on it. It just had the strips, which yeah. actually this, you can do your squaring up as well as your cutting, yeah. which is great, isn't it? It's perfect. And I bet you use it a lot. I use it every single day. Wow. Every single day it gets used. Which creative grids, sometimes they are more niche for certain blocks that oh. they use for, whereas that is this probably one, one of the most useful. Because it can cut my strips, it can square off my things, it can do my half square triangles. There's so much you can do Brilliant. with it. Um, but as I say, I'm not trying to spend your money for you, but <laughs> you can do small things on a big thing, but you can't do big things on a small thing. So it's better to go as big as you can afford. I only want you to spend it once. But um, So now we've made our centre and we're going to do our well, did you go now? This is where lovely. This comes in. Now I have already marked the centre line. What do you mark it with? This one, because it's bobbly and it's glue, I've marked it with the chalk. The uh, the, the chalk you you have it, the chalk pencil. Yeah. Um, only because I found the the friction pen was dragging, but it doesn't matter. As you just find the way that works for you. So you're drawing on the dot size, not on the fluffy side. It has side. to be on the glue side. Okay because if you have the glue side that way, it's going to stick to the oh, table. Yeah. <laughs> so again, Thank sewing you. is very logical, isn't it? If you just 
if you think about it logically. Now, because I've tr I, did, I haven't gone right to the edge, as long as I go bigger than this square. And then this is very, very simple. We've got the seam lines. So all I'm going to do is line that seam line, that seam line, that seam line, and that. And I know I've got it central. Do you need any fabric on the back? No, nope, nope. because this is H640. Um, so I never put any fabric on the back with that. Fab. If you were using 8020, again, that my machine can cope with that, but I would not use craft wadding without a backing fabric because that's very fibrous and very lofty and it will go into your machine. Okay. But H640, I never do. Um, and I've put a mat behind it. I'm not doing it on the pink mat. I have got my wool mat. So now we're going to press this into place. And this is where you can see, because I've got the smaller iron, um, I'm not going beyond the edge. Whereas the big one, you do have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, you'd end up glue all over your iron, no, wouldn't you? You don't want that. Um, the wool pressing mats are available as well that Wendy is using. We mentioned it earlier on. What I love is that they are light. They are, you know, something that you can store just easily away without getting out your massive ironing board Store? And... Who stores them away? Mine's <laughs> up all the time. Well, that's it. If you have a designated <laughs> craft room like Wendy, you're sorted. But if you are on the dining yeah. table, it's great, isn't it, that you don't need to get everything all out. You can set up your little station of your machine, your pressing area, your cutting area, and it is that dense wall, which Wendy was talking about earlier, about having that firm surface to press against gives you lovely flat seams. But yes. also, because it's made from wool, the natural fibres press the, the heat back at you. So you're pressing with your iron down and the heat is then brought yeah. back up from the wool. It does, it does reduce your pressing time yeah. because it does do exactly that. Uh, whereas when you think about an ironing board, the way they've been designed, they have holes to allow the moisture to seep through. Uh, and then it's just going into thin air at the bottom, isn't it? Whereas this, it's all compressed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 100% wool. It says here can absorb the heat and the steam fast. So yeah. if anybody um, is, you know, doing the adhesives as well, pressing onto H640 or pressing onto something, you can be there for a long, long time trying to oh, get it to yeah. this, fix. The, uh, H640 is the most incredible thing in the world. But sometimes it's like, I'm not going to stick until I am ready. And yeah. I think it's Susie that goes one and two. And, and you literally have to do that because... And do you think this helps? Definitely. Make it I mean, you can see that it's... It's, it's a did. It but. has. Um, now, what I would do next and what I've done on all the cushions, and it states in the instructions, but for time-wise, I'm not going to. I then um, quilt this square to the H640. Now, it's only, uh, it's, it doesn't matter if you don't do this step, but all I did for this was I got my ruler and I marked, I drew a line from that corner to that corner. So it was a little bit away from the pinwheel. You don't want to be stitching over the pinwheel. And then I measured an inch and then an inch and then quilted it with, I think it was a four, because I like to do a four millimeter stitch with H640. Stitch length. Do you even do that? a five? Yes. Okay. Um, because what you don't want to be doing is doing a really tiny stitch because it will pull that down okay. and drag across it. So you don't want to be doing that and it will reduce the size of the block. And we don't want to do that. You use a coordinating thread as well, don't you? I did for this because I, I wanted it to be subtle, but you could, if you wanted to, do a contrast. What would be really lovely is to have done a dusky pink. Mm. That would have been nice. But again, I don't want people to fail. If you're a little bit off with your stitching, if you've done a contrast thread, it will really stand out. Yep. So, but I, so that's what I would do. I would draw a line from these two points here. Just with a friction pen? With a friction yeah. pen. Uh, those two lines and then mark an inch beyond and then do the same all the way round. But I'm not going to do that because... We're but you would sew that at this point? At this point, okay. you would do it now. In the instructions, it tells you to do it. So I would do it at that point. The next thing I'm going to do is put the inner border on. Okay. Just checking I am doing that. Right. Now, I said to do them side... Do you know what? If you did them top and bottom, it doesn't matter because then those one would just go that way. It doesn't really matter. This is a fully symmetrical pattern. I'm going to place these on either side. And again, you cannot use clips at this point mm -hmm. because I've stuck this to the bottom. So you do need to pin here. And I do state that to, to use pins. I've not actually put my extension table on today. I do apologize. But again, it's a quarter inch seam. 
and this time we're we're pretending that the wadding's not there so I'm sewing from the edge and when I'm using any form of wadding I start a little bit off the edge um, so that I don't catch the edge of the strip and again you do need to be quite <laughs> quite precise but at the end of the day if your cushion isn't quite the size of the back then you can always just trim them down slightly you don't want to trim them down too much otherwise they won't fit the size of the cushion and then we do I'm doing these I do say to do one at a time but I'm doing both of them because I'm very conscious that it's already nearly 10 past 11 where has this morning gone we knew it was going to be a good day, though, didn't we? Our oh, green yes. team here today. Yeah. Ben did a little skit, didn't he? He did. He was very excited to see you. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's the first time we've ever met Jane Greenough. No, I've never met her before. What a lovely lady. Isn't she? Oh, She's hilarious. Goodness. She's had me in. She is this a, such a lovely lady. You know, like when you meet someone that you've watched from afar and you've admired and, and they turn out to be exactly as, as they yeah, are. As you imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's very um, real. So now what we're going to do, yeah, she's very real. So now what we're going to do is press this back and be aware that this is fusible. Yeah. So you don't want to just press it back and then think, oh, I do, you want to actually press it back. And, and this is going to adhere straight it. away. Yeah, so we do our little one and two and one and two and... Now, I've cut um, in the instructions, and I've said it a couple of times in there, just to make you aware, that the pictures, whereas I try and get the pictures, the diagrams really true to life, because I wanted them bigger, it looks like there's not as much wadding around the outside. Okay. And I've said that you will have more wadding peeping. But um, I've made the wadding smaller than the finished cushion. So you'll see when we put the next round on that it's going to go beyond the wadding. However, if you are used to making cushions and you want the wadding to be all the way, cut it the size. and You'll see what the finished size is. Cut it to that size. Okay. Um, but there is nothing worse than if, you don't, if you've not done it before, you don't want all that wadding in the zip. Can I just remind you that the price on your screen is to make two full cushions and you'll have a leftover fat quarter. So if you do love it, I mean, a majority of the time when you're looking at this sort of price point, you're looking at making one cushion. The value for money in Wendy's kits today have been absolutely phenomenal. The quilt completely sold out and the cushions are gonna be, I know a close second, I think these are gonna sell out as well today. So if you over allocated on this colorway, um, they're beautiful, beautiful in all the colorways. The one that's on your screen is the Liberty Purple, which is this one. Now, it's the only Liberty colorway that's available. It comes with the Emily Bell half meter. The, cu the cushion actually calls for a fat quarter to make both. So you will have a fat quarter left over. And then you're also getting your lovely magenta and you're also getting a meter of your solid as well. So you having all of those fabrics, plus you're getting your instructions. We did the maths earlier. It's not that difficult. These are 10 pounds. <laughs> Take 10 pound off, that's 18.99. That means you're looking at six pound 33 a cushion. Liberty cushion. I mean, not even that. I mean, it's so good. And you don't even really need, all you need to add is your H640 and you're away, aren't you? Um, it's got the backing included. Add your zip in. Um, zips are available on a roll. Let's do the continuous zip because this is a five metre zip roll. Uh, it's going to go a really, really long way. It's only 9.99 for five metres of zip. And it means that you can cut it down to the right length for the project that you want to make. So if you do do um, lots of cushions or if you want to use them for bags, then these are ideal. This is your zip roll, five metres. Um, and there are lots of great zip pulls that we have available on the website or if you've got any fancy ones in your stash, they're just £9.99 for your roll. Ooh, losing everything. <laughs> um, we've got about 15 minutes 15, left. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we are going to do it. We are going to do it, she said. What are you doing there? So, so now I'm marking... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a funny five minutes here. It doesn't take much with me, does it? Um, I'm just marking the where, that's it. 
where the, uh, it's called the diagonal frame, I've called it, is going to go. And you mark it on the edge. I forgot to ask for a ruler, so I'm just doing it like this. So it's a little bit off, but you get the gist. Mm -hmm. um, that's, oh, that's quite handy, isn't it? I'll do that. Um, but this, again, this is been designed so that nothing meets okay. and that's really important because if things meet you have to make sure they're absolutely on point otherwise it will look a bit wonky so I purposely made them not meet because I want everyone sewing I want everyone to make a cushion and be happy with it because it's it's no good making something and then you're not happy with it because you will just throw it in the Work yeah. in progress, the UFO bin, won't you? This is a lovely springtime cushion as well, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It is. Nice look at service. So, and then, now I've marked these, you can see that this is but this is me at home. So I will use things that aren't designed to be used for what they use. So, but it's a straight edge and I'm happy. So I'm joining, joining these marks up on all four I had a horrible feeling. <laughs> oh no. I had a horrible feeling I wasn't using a fridge. You know, that's so weird that you said that because I looked at you thinking, uh, oh, geez, it looks like a biro, I don't recognize that one. That is a heat erasable, isn't it? Yes. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Oh. You I had did a that the other day. Did you? Oh no. I've got, in, in my pen thing, I've got pens that look similar and I picked one up and I marked all the fabric and it was like, why won't that come <gasps> off? And it was permanent. So, you know, I, we all do it. Oh, <laughs> We've dear. all done it. Anything, any question that anyone wants to ask is never too silly because you can bet your life that we've all done it at some point. We have got friction <laughs> pens available. We just ran one through. So if you do want to make sure that you've definitely got your friction pen, put some tape on it, highlight it. Yes, something please like, do. Yeah. Please do because, um, as I say, I, I got caught out the other day. But the thing is, when you're doing things at speed, and I had to do it quite fast. Yeah. Um, that's when you just need to go, okay, take a moment. So now I've got my diagonal frame yeah. uh, drawn out and it's all in the instructions. It tells you where to put it. I'm now going to make the diagonal bits. Now these are, you can have one to have a look at. So oh, they're, nice and they're padded, they're padded. Um, and I oh, just, is this that goes round? Does this just give you even more oomph? So it's padded. Because not only you've got the pinwheel that's uh, very tactile, you've got the, the, the padded bits, the frame around the outside. Oh, and what have you used inside there? Oh, I'm just going to make a couple for you. So we oh. get our, and again, you will see that I've given you quite a bit of fabric to do this. Yes. But the last thing I want you to do is fail and it not look nice. And you will get brilliant results every time okay. with this. So you cut them out and then we've got our piece of wadding. And this is how you do bag straps, isn't it? Yes. Right. Yeah. And then you place, this is the glue. So we place the glue side down as central as you can. So we've got a little bit at the end peeping and then we turn it up, just hold it, turn it up the other way and then we're going to press. So at the moment, the glue side is uppermost against the wrong side of the fabric. Please, please make sure that's the case. Otherwise, you're going to stick it to your ironing board or your pressing mat. But we don't want that. Right, and we'll do the same with the other. So we've got the wrong side of fabric. And then we flip this over so the glue is against that. Turn it over. And because I've given you a nice chunk of fabric, if it is a little bit wonky, mm. it won't matter. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the wrong side and... Pull it, I'm pulling it up so that it's right up against the edge of that wadding. Now just be a little bit careful here because we have got a little bit of wadding exposed. And I do say the in the instructions not to press the wadding at all because H640 is not great if you completely flatten it. It's not. And then, and then, this is where, I'm sorry, I anyone that doesn't use mm. this, I'm going to convert you today. Because it's not a double sided sticky tape, no, is it? No, please, please do not use double sided sticky tape. Because if you think, well, I've got some of that in the cupboard. No, absolutely not. Have you tried it? 
you don't, you don't believe me just, yeah. um, because this has been designed to go through the machine. Ah, okay. Whereas double-sided sticky tape will get you in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> so I've put my quilter's tape along this edge here and this time I can hand press it up in place, turn it over and press it. Up. Right, if I don't have any because it's sold out, it what can I, yeah, if, what can I use? Well, do you know what? If you don't, um, a pin, a pin is absolutely yeah. fine. So I will do this one without that. So what we do is we get the first side and I'm pushing it right up against the wadding. Uh, what I would do is this because I'm just a lover of it. At every step of the way, I best press. So I just give it a little spritz so that it, it, it makes it very slightly damp mm -hmm. uh, and then it will press. And then I'm just going to do this side. And then that's done. Oh, right. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. And then uh, you turn it over. That looks fat. Oh, that's not You turn it over and um, pin it on the right side up because we're now going to place it on here. Now, I will use the double-sided, uh, the um, quilter's tape only because it's quicker for me now. And then what we do is we place this up to the line and you want it central so that you've got a bit each side, a little tiny bit each side. Then I get my quilter's tape. I, I, all I'm doing now is just holding it in place instead of pinning it. But if you haven't got this, then just use pins. Placing it on that line, making sure it's central. And I am gonna just put a little bit of heat to squash that down. And I do that on all four sides. Now, is there anything on here that at the moment you'd go, <gasps> no. I'll do that. It's actually a lot. It's on, yeah. yeah. I'm pleased you've broken it down yeah. for us. Be because cool. I, my, I'm all about making something look a little bit difficult, yeah. but it's not difficult. It's absolutely not. And take your time if you've never done it before. I like the fact it's really creative. There's yeah. lots of different <laughs> elements to it. It's not monotonous, you know, no. there's lots of different elements to it. Um, and I did design that with um, my mum in her, in her later years. Um, she had trouble with her dexterity um, and sadly she, she um, had Alzheimer's, but she did like to, to feel things and touch yeah. and feely. And, oh, you've got it. <laughs> What's my, this? My strip, did you give it back to me? It's in front of you. Sorry. Yeah. So I thought I was missing one. Um, and she it, she loved things to be tactile. Yeah, yeah. So you've got the pinwheel in the middle and then you've got the, um, the the padding, but you've also got the piping, not piping flange. Now, you don't have to put that on if you don't want to, mm -hmm. but it adds another dimension to the cushion. So now what we're going to do, we're going to... Oh, I don't want that to... I'll just put that on there. Um, we're going to stitch this on. Now I've got my foot on where I can see. So if you have a foot like that, then that's good. And we're going to stitch from here to here. Okay. There to there and there to there. This time you don't want to be stitching beyond the edge of the panel. Right. Do you do a little reversey reversely or not? Um, I don't, only because... Um, we're going to trim this off in a moment. Oh, okay. And if I have gone a little bit over, then I can pull it away. So I'm going to, let me have a look. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a four. Because we've got quite a bit of fabric. Well, I was thinking, so got, are you sewing through the, the wadding as well? Um, and this is the beauty that? of it. I'm quilting as I go. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, and this, because I've not done this technique with people before. And... There is something about having a cushion that's, that's quilted that makes it so luxurious. And if you, especially if you are selling them, you can add a little bit on. <laughs> Keep it on to that. And I'm going round all four. You can do one at a time if you want to. I'm just for speed. I'm doing all four at the same time. And I'm sewing very close to the edge without sewing over the edge. I mean, if you really wanted to do maybe a satin stitch on the edge, that's entirely up to you. Or I guess, really, if you wanted to, you could just put a central stitching down the middle and that would really make them mm -hmm. flappy then. So once you've got it home, you can put your own creative touch on it. So we've done that one. And I say, I'm not going beyond the edge of the panel. 
and then we're going to do the internal ones. I just, when, as you're doing the internal ones, keep them flat. I would normally have my table on, but we're just going for it today. How long have we got left? Five minutes. Oh, oh gosh. Wow, good. You've done ever so well. We've got lots of... Um... Whoa. Well, I wanted to see, to show the, the main part of it. Don't sew beyond the edge. It is not how I thought it was constructed at all, which is always a nice surprise, isn't it? When you look at it and you think, how has that been done? It's, uh, as I say, I like to create things that are really simple. Yeah. I don't mean they, they look simple, um, but they're achievable for even yeah. someone that's starting out their journey but wants to move it to the next level then um, this is for them this is just great there are still liberty Whoa. versions available and the blue that's in front of me here is your main graphic at the minute which is £22.99 absolutely amazing to be able to get all of the fabric and your instructions which might I add these are really thorough comprehensive instructions oh, really? and I was only talking I was on jewelry maker a couple of days ago and they've started doing instructions you know with their kits and the guest designers were saying this is you know something that's totally new to them and how much time is put into instructions yes. um, and it's a different part of your brain isn't it to write be able to write instructions to be able to well I'm so so grateful for my daughter because she doesn't really sew and I run it past her and she goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Don't understand that. Yeah. Go, yeah, but yeah, you do. It's really easy. She went, you're talking gobbledygook. So I really break it down. So it's just like having a little mini me <laughs> on your shoulder. <laughs> um, and sometimes there's too much information. But for those that know what they're doing, they can just ignore me. But for those that don't, they'll go, oh, yeah, I, that's, that's what I need to do. All I'm doing now is trimming the edge level. Oh, I've done that one there. But how difficult did that look when you look at the cushion? And that's the main centre of the cushion mm -hmm. constructed. Now, I know that we're not going to have time because um, we need to get going. But if you want to put your flange on, your um, piping, non-piping, then you get your strip wrong sides together and place the, the raw edges together here. And then you're going to stitch within the... the quarter of an inch seam allowance because these are tacking stitches and in the old days they used to take them out we don't we just yeah. leave them in so if you sew them within the seam allowance and then we're going to do that one and that one and all four of those I mean it really lifts that doesn't it, it? does and then this is a lovely colorway all what you saw me do with the inner border yeah. you just do exactly the same for the outer border but this time it will go beyond the wadding that's that's correct because you don't want the wadding to be included when we put the, the zip in. Um, so that's that one. And then I just wanted to show you that you know what? If you didn't want a plain back, but you you can use some of your strips just to make oh, a really random nice. back, and then just trim it down to size. Oh, lovely! Um, and then with the zip, you create a zip with tabs because I didn't want the zip to go all the way along mm -hmm. because it looks much neater. You'll see it in here. Oh, on the side of your cushion. Yeah, on the side. <laughs> <laughs> if you have your zip, your zip yeah. end. Oh, yeah, it does. It's, it's easier to sew because you don't really want to be sewing over the end of the zip. But that looks so much, as you say, it looks so much more professional. And anything that can make it look more professional means you can up the price a bit more when you want to sell it. Don't panic that we haven't had a chance to show you all that because if you see here, you have got, oh, this section here, you have got full instructions of how to insert your 16 inch length. And literally, oh, you can have it longer. Okay. It's trimmed down to size. Uh, so if you've got a 20 inch. Oh yeah, that's 19 fine. inch. Yeah. yeah. So you, you trim it down to size, but you can't have it smaller. Well, right. you could, you could have longer tabs, but if you have a too short a zip, you won't be able to squeeze the cushion cover in. Fabulous. Oh, Wendy. Please, 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 could it be not another year until sorry, I, I see know, you again? I'm so and sorry about next that. Next time you're up in the Midlands, you need They'll to be come teenagers, and see me. They're teenagers, won't they, your they children? They will be. <laughs> and I said to her, just don't come near bedtime, because last time you came around to my house, she riled Maisie up so much that I was like, oh, my gosh, Wendy. 
it's nearly bedtime. Please stop chasing her around. <laughs> so she can you come at like lunchtime? <laughs> um, when are you back with us here? I'm not sure. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, next month. I am useless at giving my dates in. But so you'll I will next get, month. I'll try, I will get organised. We'll see you in April though. I'll try and get yes. organised. Thank you. Right, do not go anywhere because, oh my gosh, I'm not going to lie, I was literally like this. I know. I've been looking at it. Through that hour. I was going to say, this is right up your street, Wendy, isn't it? Top oh, yes. Here. And I am so excited to meet Kerry. This is the first time I've done any of these shows, and I've been told that I'm in for a treat. Get on pre order, have a look, but don't go anywhere because we're back with Kerry right after this. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.SewingStreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one PMP throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard PMP is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items, you can spread the cost over two, three, four, or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with SplitPay. 
Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one PMP throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard PMP is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says gift cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Welcome back, welcome back. My word, I've never seen a display <laughs> as beautiful as this. Yeah. Kerry, it's lovely to meet you. You too. When was the last time you were on air? Uh, I think about a month ago. Um, <laughs> Don't I'm, quote me, I think about a month ago. Yeah. Honestly, these are just absolutely incredible. And as soon as I saw Kerry, you know, setting up the set, I thought, right, I'm completely out of my depth here because I am not a crochet. Mm -hmm. And you told me you are the perfect person to be stood here then yeah. because this book is for beginners. You absolutely are. And that's what I'm famous for, Edwards Menagerie is famous for, and Toft is famous for, is basically bringing people into this craft. So this is the, this show is not just for crocheters. It's absolutely for everyone. You can learn in 20 minutes everything you would need to make all of these animals. And I mean, that just baffles me because when I think of, you know, crochet and I can do my chain stitch, but anything further than that really does scare me, especially when you start looking at three dimensional things. I mean, I've heard of Aragurumi. I've mm -hmm. seen lots of things on it. Well, it's becoming huge, isn't it? On social media and TikTok and all sorts. But this isn't necessarily just Aragurumi, is no, it? No, so that really is defined by a style more than anything. Okay. My style's a bit more realistic than that. So as you can see from what we've got here, I use a natural color palette. So it's 12 natural colors. So you can make all 50 animals just using 50. 12 colors. And then it's just one stitch. So this is what makes this super easy, super addictive, really fast, is the fact that it's one stitch a double crochet. And what's totally unique about Edwards Menagerie, um, and that's what we're really here to celebrate today, is the book being 10 years old, is the fact that I was actually a beginner when I wrote this book. Okay. Which is completely yeah. the opposite way around to what yeah. would normally happen. So normally you obviously become the best at what you do, and then eventually you might get approached and be asked to write a book. Um, for me, it was completely the opposite way around. So I was approached 12 years ago to write this book, and at the time, I was, I was a beginner crochet. So what, what was your beginner. background then? How did you get? So Toft is 18 years old as a yarn company. Um, so we've manufactured yarn for 18 years. I knitted first and then Edwards Menagerie was born when I was um, due on my due date with my son who went on to obviously be Edward. I didn't know that at the time. That right. wasn't anywhere in a plan like that. It wasn't <laughs> like that at all. Um, so I was on my due date. I sat down. I watched one video to learn this stitch, the double crochet stitch, and I was off. And I made Bridget the Olive elephant the first day I made Emma the bunny the second day I made Alice the zebra the third day oh they're literally that quick to make yeah well. and I made 14 animals in the 14 days before I was finally induced and Edward arrived <laughs> and then a year later so by a year later I'd made about 30 different animals which was when the publisher saw me at a show and said oh my goodness like this is huge like this is they are lovely would you be interested in writing a book so at the time I'd only really just started to write the patterns down properly. Yeah. Um, they weren't developed for commercial gain. It truly was um, a passion project. It was, I was making these animals for 
my son as yeah. I was waiting for him to arrive. Um, but it's obviously become a really huge thing. People love making them. Um, I still love making them when I make a new one now. Yeah. That doesn't die, even when you've yeah. made thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands They're of gorgeous. them. They're um, gorgeous. So, yeah, get involved. It's really exciting. I challenge you. Oh, yeah, a challenge accepted. Yeah. We are so excited because we actually have the new edition, which is launched... Well, it's not due for publication till Til the 9th of April. So, yeah, you're absolutely wow. ahead of publication. So the book was originally done um, 10 Here years ago. Here we go. Yeah, 10 years ago was when it was initially published. And then I was invited a couple of years ago to revisit it because obviously I've learned so much more in those 10 years as well. Um, so I've revised a few techniques. I've maybe written some instructions in a slightly different way. I've taken everything that I've learned over 10 years and um, dissolved it into this book. Um, so that it's even simpler to learn um, and it also means um, that you've got new patterns in there so if you have had this book in the past this new edition will actually include 17 brand new patterns so ones that aren't in your book at all and it also wow. has 13 revised ones so this is where I've revisited a pattern and thought you know what I think I want another go at that one like uh, say the Frisian cow would be a really good example that kind of black and white dairy cow yeah. where I've said actually I'm better at, I'm a bit better at crocheting now I think I'm going to yeah. try that one again so even if you have already got the book you will actually be getting 30 totally new patterns to you for you to start crocheting which is crazy yeah. because if you think even just like you say the 15 or the 17 new patterns yeah we're 18 pound for the book yes, so the whole book yeah. you know look pound a pattern less than a pound a pattern in fact you've got 50 easy, 50 total yeah yeah 50 Day yep. for seventeen ninety nine. Can we have a bit of a flick through? Yes. Oh look, Kerry is so right. I showed a fellow dressmaker how to crochet with Toft. The next week she'd made a mini bunny and is now um <laughs> she's got the vegetable book. Oh, yeah. now the so vegetable book. There's lots and lots of ranges, but this is where it all started. So if anyone's seen me before or seen Toff before, this is where oh, it's all started. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to just show. <laughs> For anyone that has had this book in the past or has seen it before, when it was first published, obviously I wrote it during that first year of Edward's life. So this is how he looks in the original oh. book. And then this is Edward now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he um, it might be the last time I get him to pose like this. I've got a feeling um, he's about to enter the teenage years. So it won't be the same um, from then on in. So as a knitter, because I know lots of people who are crocheters or a knitter yeah. and they struggle to make the transition to the other one or they, they choose not to. They're like, oh, no, 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 I'm a knitter. How did you find moving from being a knitter to a crochet? So I think that really is down to this style of crochet. Because you're just using one stitch, it's effectively like just using the knit stitch. Yeah. Never using the purl stitch and never trying anything fancy. Because all you're doing is the double crochet stitch and you're going round and round and round in a non-stop spiral. Okay. So you're making it get bigger by an increase and I'll get to show all of this yeah. in the show, I'm sure. And then you, the only other thing you need to be able to do is decrease it yeah. so to make it get smaller. And again. someone did say to me, it's easier crocheting they find than knitting because you could get row and row and row and realise you've got a hole and then yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot easier. It is, to it's be absolutely able to. easier to go step by step through and help yourself out and learn, um, especially using videos. And we do have videos for absolutely everything. So I want to stop Brilliant. on this page because this is a very, very exciting page really about this style of crochet. And that's because with this pattern book, you can make the animals any size. So all the ones that you've <gasps> seen on set, they're all using a double knit weight of yarn Okay. Um, which is our standard size oh. that we like to use the most. But if you've got lots of four ply or finer yarns in your stash, you could make them teeny tiny <laughs> like this, same <laughs> patterns. If you um, want to supersize them, you just use an Aran yarn or you use a chunky yarn. You don't need to make any alteration mathematically to that pattern whatsoever. You're just using a thicker yarn and a bigger hook. I'm, ho I I'm hooked, literally. And right, then I'm you can get make family groups just as easy and just as quickly. So it's not that making a big one is in a, any quicker or slower. Um, it's exactly the same pattern. What sort of yarn is this? Because it is beautiful. That, so it's a pure wool. Um, and that is obviously what came first. Like for me, the animals were inspired by the yarn rather okay. than the other way around. So it's a pure wool um, manufactured here in the UK. It's really bouncy. Um, and that also means that it's lovely when you're actually crocheting with it because your stitches can be really relaxed. So maybe you've tried this style of crochet before using a cotton or acrylic and you found it quite hard going. And that's because a cotton and acrylic have no bounce in them whatsoever. So it means that when you're trying to do this stitch and keep it tight so you don't see the stuffing, you have to pull really hard. But when you use a pure wool, you don't have to worry about that. You can just relax. 
because your stitches can be lovely and gentle because the yarn's bouncy. Obviously, we're going to focus on the book for the you know uh, for a bit of time, but just so you know, FYI, we have got kits, we have got yarn bundles or wool bundles, we've got all sorts, haven't we? Today? Yeah, we've got loads on the show. So the thing that's most exciting about Edwards Menagerie, and I guess my style of design work, is the fact that they share standard shapes. So all the animals that you're seeing have the same bodies and the same arms. Oh. Oh, and actually, this is really appealing, both from how they look when they're finished, because yeah. they all look like a family. Yeah. Um, they all share the same shapes. They look like a group together. But it also means that it's really easy and familiar for you when you are crocheting, because you return to something that you've done before. Do you find lots of people who are crocheting, they're doing it? I see people on the train. I see people who are doing yeah, it when they just need 10 the minutes yeah, yeah. on the move, picking up someone from a... Absolutely. And something like a leg of an animal like this, if you are doing it on the move, is probably... Probably 20 minutes maximum. I think our record is maybe six minutes, <laughs> something like that. So about <laughs> 20 crochet. minutes maximum to make yourself a leg. And then you know that you've used that time. You just put it in your pocket, save them all up and then finish it off at a later Fantastic. date. Fantastic. Look at the hippo. I just love these. They've all got real character. They have. They? And the big thing, so the, the book is structured in levels. So it's not that they're all just jumbled in together. What you might have noticed if I flipped through so far is they're all one colour. And this is because this is level one that we're in right now. And these patterns would all be suitable for a complete beginner that's never, ever crocheted before. Wow. So these are level one, one colour. You're not doing any colour changing. You're just focusing on doing those stitches, um, increasing and decreasing with that one double crochet stitch. Now in the back, you do have all the technicals, obviously. It's not that you haven't oh, got all of fabulous. this. This will teach you from the very beginning, right the way, including how to mark your lines, identify like how to hold your hook like that. So it's not that you're having to um, even find somebody to help you. The book will take you through everything. And then there's also videos for every single one as well. So yeah, nice. you're not on your own. So once you've done level one, um, then it starts to get quite exciting because you move on to level two. Well, would you start by, um, you know, picking one of these from level one and going so for it first? Emma the Bunny, honestly, is where 90% of people come to Toff. Yeah. Is here. Super yeah. cute. Obviously, this time of year as well, with Easter around the corner, she's even yeah. more popular. Oh, there she is. Um, so, yeah, Emma the Bunny really is the number one project that people go for, um, even though the elephant was the one that I first made. Um, but the, the big thing, really, if you're new to it, is just pick one of those from level one and then also try and use a light-coloured yarn. Okay. Only because um, if you are new to it, you're going to be identifying your stitches for the first time. Make sure your, your yarn is a light colour because it means it'll be easier Stuffing. to see the stitches. Uh, oh, just to oh see the stitches. okay. Yeah. Just to see them as you're And them. I was also going to ask, would you start with a small one or... That absolutely does not make any difference whatsoever. Does it All make I would say is don't go tiny, tiny if it's your first one. Probably go for the standard, the Aran or the Chunky. Don't go for too thin a yarn Gosh. just because your stitch is always smaller. Right. Yeah. Okay. So do you have to think about like your tension? And no, no, you really do. So long as the yarn will do the hard work for you. Yeah. So there really is nothing. You're not wearing it. So it no. doesn't really matter yeah. what size it ends up as long as you're not seeing the stitches uh, oh. through the, yeah, the stuffing through the stitches. So level two... So level two, you start to use loads oh, of cool. different colours and you're obviously combining different colours in right. your work. So the main thing that makes wow. it a level two is the fact that you're going to be using um, a colour change. So you're going to be moving from one colour to another colour using that double crochet stitch. Oh my word, these are adorable, aren't they? You've got the sea otter. You've, I mean, you thought of everything. The wildebeest, the bat. Yeah. <laughs> the actual choice of animals then, it really is everyone's favourite animals is probably the best way of describing it. That when people request animals that they'd like you to make for them, they will absolutely be in here. So there's a good mix of farmyard, like with the donkeys and things like that, the sheep. You've obviously got the zoo animals. So you go from the giraffes right the way through the odd, more unusual one, like the aardvark, the wallaby, mm -hmm. for example, it really is a mixture that means that if you want to make, say, a safari-themed nursery, yeah. you'd be able to make a good three to five different animals from it um, and put them all together as a little collection on a shelf. That's, yeah, do you know, this is, we all know somebody who's having a baby or, you know, grandchildren, friends. These are going to be things that you can make relatively quickly yeah, absolutely i think we've all fallen into that trap of yeah. uh, making blankets that take far too long yeah <laughs> it's about once you can crochet it's about three to five hours per animal 
So it means that actually it's a really doable project that you can make, not even just one. You might find you get carried away and want to make a few. <laughs> just so you're aware, um, this is the first time this has been seen uh well it hasn't actually been no it's not actually out yet. published yet no. no which is so exciting we have got the launch um until the 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 9th of april and haven't you signed all of these for us uh, so i haven't yet but i will be doing <laughs> that will be my job tonight before they Hundreds ship tomorrow yes them. so i will be um, they will all be signed as they leave HQ and um, we're all um, absolutely prepped for them to leave tomorrow morning. So yeah, order now and they'll be going out on, um, we have got a bank holiday um, collection from Royal Mail, so they'll be coming out to you immediately. Brilliant. Yeah. They'll be there with you, you well before the, um, the official publication date. Oh, which is just brilliant, isn't it? If you are wanting to just go for it and get on, we have got some kits and some yarn so you can literally just get started. But the fact that you've got 50 mm -hmm. in here, like you said, somebody's going to request an animal. Have you got a koala bear? Have you got a koala bear in there? Yes, there is absolutely a koala bear. <laughs> so yeah, we can play this game. Yeah. Yes. Actually, you know what we haven't even mentioned? Um, they all have names. Um, there's me flicking through, not even really um, pointing that out. So they do all have names and they actually also Hank. have stories as well. Oh, do so they? you can find out a little bit more um, you can even amuse yourself, uh, even if you've not le yet learnt to crochet, you can amuse yourself by reading the stories for a while and then choosing who it is you'd like to make next. Fantastic. £17.99. It's a gorgeous looking book. I think it's one of those that you would have on your coffee table and just flick through, right, which one am I going to make today? Yeah. And it isn't something that you're going to have to commit to for the next six months no, with a big project. It's something you can get going. I do love that it's for beginners, it's for experts, it's for everybody. But the fact that you can go from small, mini, mini sizes like this up to a whole family of elephants, whatever size you want. And it's the same stitch, it's the same body. It's just depending on what... Yeah, your yarn and hook size. So I can right. explain that a little bit more actually Fabulous. if you want to. So really, this is the same leg pattern. And like I said, they all share the same um, legs. So this is using a double knit yarn for which you'd need a three millimeter um, crochet hook. And the yarn bundle that we've got on the show that gives you a full kilo of the colors. So that's gonna allow you to make kind of 16 to 20 different animals. Um, you've got the double knit yarn, so it's a three millimeter hook you'd need. Then to size up into the Aran, that's gonna be the Aran weight will make the same pattern to this size. For that, you're going to need a five mil hook. And then the largest size is the chunky, which is the size of that big elephant that you've been seeing on the show. That's that one there. It's an eight millimeter hook that you'd need for that. Now to go downwards, I haven't actually got that one um, with me because I've sewn it onto somebody, my demo one. Um, that would be using our fine yarn. So the equivalent to a four ply and you just need a two millimeter hook for that. Just so you're aware, hundreds have already sold. We've got a certain number that we're allowed to sell before it goes, you know, to the official publication on the 9th of April. And we are already really eating into that. And we've only been with Kerry for the last, what, 15 minutes? 15 minutes? There is a little bit of a wait on the phone line, but if you have got it in your basket on the web, please do check out, because there are only a certain amount that we can do. Right, so, um, we have got, as I say, the kits and the, uh, the the yarns as well to bring you, the walls to bring you. Can you show us, just for yeah. anybody who is completely yeah, brand new? Yeah, let's go for it. This is my, fa my favourite demo from the very, very, very beginning. So let's go from the beginning. Uh, now I'm going to demo in, I'll leave that there so you've got it there. I'm going to demo in chunky yarn um, just because it will be easy to see the yeah. stitches. So this will be the biggest scale um, to make this one, ones. but the techniques apply to absolutely anything. So what you need to crochet is you need your balls of yarn, you need your crochet hook that matches your ball of yarn, um, just to make sure that the size of crochet hook is um, corresponds to the thickness of yarn you're using. Then the only other tools you'll need to make an animal is you're going to need some stuffing at mm -hmm. the end, and then you're going to need just a, a wool needle to sew them up, so a metal needle to sew them up. So what you need to start with is a slip knot. And it isn't that it's any fancy form of slip knot at all. It's the same as you will have learned if you are a knitter or if even if you learnt it in girl guiding. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is make a loop like that. Yeah. You go in through that loop and you get the tail end of the yarn and bring that through to create a slip knot. And before you start, just double check that it is the tail end of the yarn that controls that slip knot because that's going to be really important um, to the way that we effectively cast on or begin. So make sure it's the tail that controls the slip knot and then pop that onto your crochet hook. Now, I am a right-handed crocheter, which means that I hold my hook in my right hand and my yarn in my left hand. But the great thing about this style of crochet is there's no right and left. 
So it would never say right or left in the instructions at all. Ah. It will always refer to yarn hand and hook hand. So don't worry if you are a left-handed crocheter. Um, you don't have to translate or mirror or do anything like that at all. You can just jump straight in following the same techniques. So to begin, what we need to do is to double crochet six into a ring. So this is how everything starts with this style of crochet, is this little circle here. That's effectively your cast on, if you think about it in knitting terms. So to create that, first we're going to chain two stitches. So the chain, which you're familiar with, yep. you yarn over and then turn that round and bring that through that loop. So that's one chain and then a second chain. And then we're going to double crochet six stitches into that first chain hole there. Okay. So this is the stitch, the only stitch you're doing to make all the animals, the double crochet. You go in through the hole, mm -hmm. yarn over in the same way as you have been doing with your chain and bring that back through to the point where you've got your two loops on your hook like that. Then you yarn over and bring it through those two loops in one motion. That's it. Right. That's all you're doing. Go on. So then that's one of them. We're yep. going to do five more into this same hole. And what I always like to say is view that stitch as a little Lego brick. Yeah. That's a little square brick, which is how they form then in a 3D shape. So one, two, three, four, five and six in a ring. And then all you do is you pull the tail end like that. And that's what closes it off into a neat circle from right. where it begins. Okay. So then all we're doing, honestly, all we're doing is making that get bigger. So the first round of instruction will say double crochet two into the next stitch six times. So what you're doing, double crochet like we've been doing, but this time we're actually going to go into the stitches. Okay, so which, how do you see which, what you're... So the stitches are those Vs. Do you see yeah. that V yeah. that you can yeah. see around the outside? Mm -hmm. That is a stitch. So you put your hook right in beneath the whole V like that. And this first one can sometimes be a bit stiff. Just bear with me while I've, there you go, I'm through. I've not quite got it underneath there. My hands are also <laughs> feeling a little bit cold this morning in here, there we go. Right, so you get your hook in beneath the whole V like that and work a double crochet and then back into the same hole to do a second one. And then you just keep going in that same direction. So do you see the next V is there? Yeah. You go underneath and do one in there and then one in again, then on to the next one. So that V is there. Yeah. So you go one and one. And you see how the circle is instantly doubling in size. Do you know what I really like is that you don't have to do too much counting. No, you like really you don't have to, knitting. not with knitting. So what you're doing then is you're following your first round of instruction and the round of instruction will always have the number that you need at the end of it. So it always have the number that you should have in brackets okay. at the end of it. So what you need to do when you've done a line of instruction is you count around the edge of that circle. So you see the Vs that we've got there. You'd, you'd not count that live one. You'd count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now I've got 13 stitches, which is uh, pretty funny because that sometimes happens to me when I live demo. <laughs> it should be 12 that you have. I've just- Oh, but look how there. easy is it to take them out? So you just go backwards. Now the most important thing, and obviously this is all explained in the book, is the fact that once you've got the right number of stitches, you need a contrasting piece of yarn, and that can just be a scrap yarn of any description, and you just pull that through there. Now that means you can breathe a sigh of relief, you finish that round, you put it down, you can go and have a cup of tea, you can leave it oh, okay. for a few days if you want to. It can't ever unravel because it's not live like knitting stitches yeah. in the same way. And that then means you're never going to have to start again. Because all you would now do is you would just carry on on the next round of instruction like that. And just so you know, in the instructions, it's super, super clear. It tells you round one and it says DC2, double crochet yep, two. There you go, yeah. Next to ST. Into the next stitch. Into, into next the next stitch. stitch. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Six times. And then the number stitches. is in brackets yep. at the end. Yeah. And then you go on to the next round. And what RND or round means mm -hmm. is it literally means going around this circle like I have done there until you get back to your stitch marker. And I was then, going to say, how do you know when you're back at the beginning? So of once circle? you come back round where, where I put that little scrap bit of yarn in, you come back round, you work your stitch that has that in, then stop, pause and count them again. So count round the edge to make sure you've got the right number that's in brackets in that line and then do exactly the same thing, dip it down, pull that with you 
and then you know you can tick off the next line. All right. No. So if you um, if you do put this down now and you come yep. back and you can't remember what round you're on, how am I counting to see which round? So all you'll be doing is counting the stitches that you've got around the edge. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way around to when you get back to there. Right. And then you'll find that. In your yeah. And the great over. thing about having this tracking stitch marker running through is if you pick it up and you find that it is wrong, you've got the wrong number. As I did before, all you need to do is pull that back. It unravels really easily and nicely like that. And then pull it back to the one where you had your marker in and you know that you can go again. So going backwards and redoing is, is dead easy. It's not, not a big drama. You don't no. have to go from the very beginning again. It's just one round. That Even you when you're doing on. sewing, you would have to sit, oh, I've done it wrong. Unpick, unpick, unpick. Where and is that? Back <laughs> to the beginning, yeah. It's, you're just only ever going back um, that far. Now, with one last um, demonstration I can show you, you yeah. will have literally learnt everything to make yeah. any level one animals. Yeah. So the last thing to show you is how to make it get smaller again. So I've shown you the increase, which is that double crochet two into the next stitch. That's how it grows out of that central circle. To make it get smaller again, it's called a DC2 tog or a double crochet two together. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a knitter, that'll be very familiar to you as a knit two together. So what we're going to do for the double crochet two together is rather than going in beneath the whole stitch, so that's what we've been doing so far, is we've always been double crocheting in beneath the whole V like that. To do your decrease, take the front half of a stitch, so you're going to come up the centre of the V, and then the front half of the following stitch. So you've got two halves on your hook. And then you just do that double crochet again, but through the two halves. So what that does is it decreases the numbers that you've got in the round because obviously it turns two stitches into one, but it leaves the backs to fill in any holes so you don't see any holes or lumps in the surface of your fabric. So I'll just show you that one more time. I'll just recap everything that I've done so far. Mm -hmm. So the normal stitch and the only stitch that you're using to make them is a double crochet stitch. You go in beneath both sides of the V like that, yarn over to the point where you've got two loops on your hook, and then yarn over and come through the two loops in one motion. So that is a double crochet. To make it get bigger, the instruction will tell you to double crochet two into the next stitch. And what that means is, rather than moving on to do one in this V here, you go back into that same hole to do a second one like that. So that's how it will grow, that's how it'll make, make it get bigger. Then the final thing to make it get smaller again is a double crochet two together. You come up the middle of a stitch, down and at the middle of the following stitch, so you've got two halves like that, and then do your double crochet, but through those two halves. And that honestly is absolutely everything you would need to make a level one animal. So what I've done there, just to put that into context, is this is a, a leg, that's my six in a ring that I did initially. So there you say we'd go up to 12 stitches, there you go up to 18, and then where I'm doing those decreases, making it get smaller again, is somewhere like here, where it goes from being wider, is you'd be putting your de decreases in there, and that's what then gives it shape. I mean, can I just say, that in itself is a book. Mm -hmm. Like you have got, it isn't level one, you're going to be able to make one animal in level yeah. one as a beginner. This That's is 12. Be yeah. You've got 12 yeah. animals yeah. to make with, you know, this, this sort of method. Fab Demo ordered the book for my son who has decided to try crocheting animals. Yes. Give it a go. Yeah. And I mean, this is what's brilliant is that new hobbies and new crafts, if you decide, right, I'm going to take up running, buy the new trainers you get that it's mm -hmm. actually expensive whereas yeah, this is, is something that is there's really not a lot of equipment you, yeah. you need and I think that's what people really like it for is so long as you've got one of these in your pocket then you're off yeah. um we'll sort you out for crochet hooks don't panic if you uh haven't seen those yet hi ladies I bought Kerry's book and purchased um this one as well uh I love making these animals that's from Carolyn see I love the fact that a lot of people who have already got the book are coming back to get the new edition which the proof's in the pudding everyone's loving it because remember if you You've already got Kerry's old, you know, the same book but the older edition, then you've got an extra 15 new animals in here. Yeah, it's even so it claims 15 on the front, it is actually 17, but oh. 17 is not a nice number to write on the front of a book, is why it says 15. So oh. it's actually 17 <laughs> new Bonus. and then 13 revised. Bonus. Love, love, love all of Kerry's creation. I'm sat here now crocheting Georgina's head. Who's Georgina? <laughs> that's Sarah? the hippopotamus. So that's a really good choice. Uh, one of my absolute all time favourites. Is Georgina. that in what, what level, level is that? Level one. In level one. Yeah, Fantastic. Level one. Um, this one's with Julie. What a day. Three of my favourite guests. I'm my favourite presenter. Oh, thanks. 
I'll pay you later. That was obviously <laughs> one of my friends, Julie. Um, it's because Kerry, it's because of Kerry, the original book, that I've learned to crochet. Brilliant. It is, and without sounding, because it's something that I often feel a bit awkward about, really, but without, it obviously has been a best-selling crochet book for 10 years. Wow. Um, it hasn't ever dropped off that list. Um, it has t honestly taught hundreds of thousands of people to crochet worldwide. It's in um, dozens of different languages. Wow. Um, it really is a book that sets people off on a crochet journey, but equally, and especially with the extra patterns that I've put, it, I've put in the back, there's a lot of advanced ones as well. So if you are a crocheter, don't think that they're too easy for you well, either. Yeah. I was going to show you, can we have an even yeah, look? Yeah, because right at the it. very back, you've so got some- So what are the some, new ones? So, I mean, did? the new ones are scattered. It's not that they all went into level okay. three at all, but say, Jesse, that was a revised <laughs> one, for example, raccoon, because I've been looking at raccoons quite a lot um, since 10 years ago, and that's a revised one would be for Jesse the raccoon. <laughs> Um, same with Christoph the Wolf, actually. It's another revised one where I just thought I could capture the shaping um, a little bit more this time round. There's the raccoon. Um, Tash the Two-Toed Sloth, so that's a new one. Um, the Sloth. And this is my team member, a very, very much loved, very appreciated um, team member, Tash, that's worked at Toff for a very long time. She's definitely, well, as it says in her story, sloth by name, but certainly not sloth by nature. She's a very, very fast crocheter. Uh, so that's Tash. And so, I mean, sloth, that must be one that a lot of people were asking you for. Yeah. Because I love A sloths. lot of them have been requests. So say Nusha the cat has <gasps> gone in, um, because obviously a, a lot of people out there know that I'm quite famous for crocheting dogs. I have crocheted over 100 different dogs but oh, only four cats this, I was, <laughs> so far. I was gonna yeah. say this looks like my mom's Maltese terrier yep. as well you could use that as a little yeah absolutely but okay. yeah so there you've got loop stitches um the guinea pig's a new one that's um come in as well so that's your um, long head guinea pig Sybil These the sugar the glider ones. is another new one um this something like this you're going to be doing um a bit more complex color changing and then you'll be adding the wings on so just a little bit more challenging but still the same stitch Noel the chipmunk, he's new too, actually. I think we're in the new section here by absolute accident. So yeah, Noel the chipmunk is new. Is this another new one? Another new one. So is Jean the hyena. <gasps> one of my all-time favourite um, Ed's animals makes this one. Like if you're out there and you have made a few animals, honestly, challenge yourself to Gina because she's got colour changing and loop stitch. So it's a bit of a challenge, but she really is worth it. Then you've got the ocelot, uh, really fashionable animals again at the moment. Ocelot? I think ocelot, yeah. I think I've not heard of an ocelot. There's a nursery rhyme that's quite famous. Thank you to the lady who sang that to me um, at the show last week. Um, there's a, a nursery rhyme that's made that quite famous. At Were the you moment. at Stitch Fest? Yes. Yeah. Was, yeah. And then in, um, in Minecraft, I believe, there is an ocelot as well. So it's quite a popular one, the ocelot. Oh, Lots of colour changing. So another nice challenge for somebody that is a bit more ad of an advanced crocheter. Do you know, I have seen one at the, um, co the uh, Conservation Nature Reserve in Birmingham. Yeah. Mm. Then you've got the um, African painted dog, Savannah. So this is a brand new um, one for the book, um, not been seen before at all. <gasps> no one's seen these, by the way, because this isn't even published yet. This is why, I'm so sorry to interrupt no, carry you. on. There is a massive queue. If you do want this, we're gonna let the call center catch up. We've got Kit, we've got Yarns as well, but we're just giving you a 30 second chance to check out. Call centre are going wild. Sorry that we probably should have let the call centre know that we're doing this show. We need the call centre to catch up to do the kit. So we're just going to take one minute break. For those of you who are watching everything and haven't yet had chance, we're coming back with kit. You can obviously, um, you can catch up and you can make the most of it with the app. This is how you do it. <laughs> Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? then click the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. 
You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Right, hopefully we're all caught up with the call centre. Well done if you've already got the book. We are going to come back to the book. Oh my word, right, just so you're aware, loads of the books have gone. Um, we want to get going with this. So the yarn that you've supplied for us are absolutely perfect for this. I was just telling Kerry, I mean, I've got um, little children and these are suitable, aren't they? They are, um, they're suitable. So basically, so long as you're making them in toft yarn, um, which is what we're going to be going through next, um, and you follow the, obviously the sewing up instructions that go with them, then they are absolutely child safe um, from the very beginning. There's no safety eyes. I don't use safety eyes. I'm all about just embroidering the yarn, um, the eyes yeah. on with a little bit of black yarn. And actually that's what you just saw in that picture there is on top of that beautiful stack of yarn, <laughs> there's a little ball of black on top. And that is to be able to crochet your eyes, or well, not crochet, just sew your eyes, embroider them on the top. That's what makes them child safe, is the fact you're not putting any extras in. Now you've done us an absolute whopping bundle. I have. Because um, you know that yeah. people are going to get a and that's what I want to get out to show you. So basically, when we think this is 100 grams of toft double knit, so it's a pure wool, it's in a double knit weight. And to give you an idea animal wise is one animal will come from two thirds of this one ball. OK, so that means that from two balls, you can make three animals. Wow. And this is how it starts to roll. So obviously the whole of your level one. Have you included is one all of color. these colours? Yes. Yeah, so I've included all of these colours. The book is built just on these colours. So there will be every colour that you need here. Oh, and they've got a full lovely. spectrum, if I just arrange those, from light to dark. And to remind everybody, this is 100% wool. It's 100% wool. It's spun it's here in the UK. UK. And the big thing about it is the fact that it's bouncy. So as I was saying to you before... Can you crochet straight from this? You don't have to yeah, spin it You don't have to wind it into a cake or anything like that. They're donated. So it means that all you're going to do is remove the label and you just go straight from this. So one animal is two thirds of one ball. So yeah, three animals is two balls. And once you get to that level two, it obviously combines all these different colours. So what you're going to get in this big bundle is every colour you would need to be able to make a good 15, 16 different animals wow. um, from that collection, whether you're a beginner or whether you're advanced. So you're going to get cream and that is our lightest colour. It's not bleached. It's a natural undyed cream. Now you say this is double knit. So what size animal am um, I going to The ones, to everything that's on the show. So it's this size here is the yeah. elephant, but that's yeah. what every single animal oh. in the whole display is done in. Brilliant. And that's the most popular common size. I find it's my definitely my preference as a size. Um, it's the stitches are big enough, but the animals are a good size that you can fill up a shelf with them. Amazing, amazing. I love them. So in terms of colours, just to talk through the colours, because what's quite unique and what Toff's really famous for is our natural colour spectrum. And that's because although they are dyed colours, they're actually blended dyed colours. So the vast majority of yarns are manufactured by spinning tons and tons and tons of cream yarn and then dyeing it to a colour once it's spun into a yarn. We actually go about this the really long, <laughs> much more laborious way of we dye the fibre, so the raw wool, and then we actually spin these colours from that raw wool. So a colour like this, which is our silver, one of my absolute favourites, um, say the sugar glider that we looked at was mm. in this colour. This is a blend of white and black fibres, mm. and that's why it's not a Multi flat, mm. dead colour at all. It's really much more like a real animal. Yeah. And I guess the thing really is, these are the colours that inspired the animals. This yarn came first, the animals came second. That's a totally different way around to how people normally yeah. would do books yeah. or things like that. Is it, they would think about, oh, I want to make a collection of animals, and they'd try and source that yarn. Yeah. It was actually, the animals were kind of born from this yarn. I had loads of this that I was playing with as I learnt this stitch. Um, and yeah, the rest is history. And really. I do like the fact that it doesn't say, uh, you know, a gender, an age. Uh, it, it doesn't need to just be for young children. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> 
I would say probably in the majority, if not right up in the kind of 70% of these Ed's animals are made for adults, yeah. not for children. Yeah. My, yeah, myself included. I have <laughs> a rather large collection, especially oh. when they have names. And, yeah. and so a lot of people, um, if you can't think of someone to make for someone, a lot of the names will be in here. You'll think, oh, say Richard the pig. You'll think, oh, Richard would like him to sit on his desk. Yeah. Um, so they're made for absolutely so many different people, whether they're one or whether they're a hundred. Look at the sloth, yeah. look at the sloth. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, right, so just to, uh, you're getting all of your so you're getting kilograms. Yeah, so you're getting oh. 10 colors, 100 grams in 10 colors. The other thing to mention, which will be news to anyone watching um, that is familiar with Toft, is the 100 gram balls are actually discontinued. <gasps> so we will be moving in the future to um, just providing our double knit in 25 gram balls rather than the 100 gram balls. So all the colors will be there in the future, but they will be in small balls. So if you want to stock up your stash with these lovely big balls, so you know you've got loads of every colour, then this is the chance because we won't be spinning anymore. It's on split pay. It's on split pay, £60 on split pay as well. Interest free split payments, which is on three way split pay. £60 today, £60 in April, £60 in May. And then, you know, it is paid off, um, which is brilliant, isn't it? So you can enjoy crocheting and have all of the colours to decide which ones you want to do. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that's exciting when they've got that standard. I mean, I never tire of trying to arrange them in colour order. When you <laughs> You've got um, that standard form is you don't even need to really decide who you're making. You can kind of stockpile on like legs and bodies and then you just decide about which head to do later on. But yeah, that's the full range really from the lightest colours through to those dark browns and then you get that all important ball of black ready to sew your eyes on. There you go, your whole yarn. Does it come in the nice little bag? Of course it comes in a bag, yeah. Every single kit on the show will come in the tote bag. Fabulous, yeah. right. Um, what should we do next? Quincy. Yeah, Quincy the capybara. I was hoping I'd get to talk about him. So Quincy is not in the book. Um, and this really is to talk about the fact that even though I have made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds Sorry. of different animals, there's still more to make. <laughs> so Quincy the capybara is on the show as a kit. He's right here. So I'll pull is him in. Is this a so massive guinea him. pig? So <laughs> yeah, capybaras, they've been really fashionable on social media um, <laughs> recently. They are if you South say, American. Very huge. fashionable. They, no, they really are. <laughs> you wait, you're about to go down a, a worm, a wormhole. But I know you've said it, it's yeah. going to keep coming up on my feed yes, now, it is, isn't yeah. it? I'm just going to say it a few more times, capybara, capybara. <laughs> Um, basically, they're a South American, um, yeah, like basically a huge rodent, really, really cute. And this is the kind of animal that really gives me the chance to talk about how my design work has changed. So I've actually been aware of capybaras for a long time. I remember singing a song about them in, um, Come in on, school. Sing it to us. Uh, not, not, not sing on this show, maybe on the latest show. <laughs> um, but basically, with the capybaras, this, they're characterised, they're like giant potatoes, uh, without being rude about them. They're basically quite shapeless. So I don't think 10 years ago I would have had the skill to have been able to capture the shape when, it's, when it hasn't got a lot. Like, to okay. capture a character without a lot of shape is quite hard. So this kit will include all of your camel, and that's where you're going to be doing that loop stitch to put all that camel in place, and then your mushroom, which is for the little legs. You will, with this one then, because it's not in the book, you will get a printed postcard pattern that'll have all your instruction on. So it's a great one to go for if you do go for the book. It's extra. It's not that it's included um, in the book. It's a, my latest one that I've made. Which is lovely, isn't it, to be able to have something, especially if you say you've already got the book or you're thinking right I've got my first edition I want to just try you know a, a, another one different or you yeah so if yeah. you've already got the book and you didn't want to get the other one and this what's quite exciting for me is to say sit Bridget the elephant next next to this one is this is the first Ed's animal that I ever made and then this is the last one that I've Aww. made to date so it feels quite a nice way to put them side by side so you've got all of your instructions um, on your your printed pattern card and it is lovely that you've got the photograph on the front as well so this is something that you'll probably come back to and make more of yeah once you've absolutely made yeah. once you've got the pattern you can obviously and it would be great in chunky. I mean, yes. just throw that out there for anyone that fancies that challenge. I'd love to see pictures. So obviously, you've you've included the the double knit, but you the don't knit. have to. No. You don't have to do it. In you double can just knit if use you want. any yarn. Yeah, yeah, that's that is the really exciting thing. So if you just want a family of them, you could use lots of different thicknesses Fantastic. of yarn and do exactly the same thing as the elephants. Twenty seven pounds. That includes your pattern and your yarn. Go for it. We want to see them. So is this something that have, have you seen many of these all made up? Uh, no, I haven't yet because no. no I, in fact, I haven't seen any made up yet so there's another nice challenge for anyone that's out there I haven't seen a photo on social media of any of these made up yet so you could be the first we can find of course you on social media as well you yeah. say there's lots of video tutorials yeah there's things. videos for absolutely everything also um, mad projects that we take on like we recently crocheted an eight foot um, 
an eight foot zebra over 30 days as a team. So um, you can also see things like that. Like if you want to get into crochet, you can go in quite hard. Whereabouts are you based? Warwickshire. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, you're local as yeah, we well. Are. Yeah, we're in Dunchurch near Rugby. No, you're not. You're in Dunchurch. Oh, oh very close. I'm in Warwick, you see. Oh, yeah, so I'm really close. close. Yeah. Um, the just twenty-seven pounds, and that is uh, is not probably something you're going to find very easily uh, a pattern to do a cape no. Barra. No, it's niche. Yeah, but then niche. we are quite niche nowadays. <laughs> yeah, with Love certain it. ones. Twenty-seven pounds, go for it. Absolutely, go for it. And uh, I must say, the wool is beautiful. If you have, what do, what do generally people tend to learn to crochet with? And you were saying that sometimes it's yeah, it's so struggle. It's just this style of crochet, which is basically this non-stop closed double crochet stitch. Um, whether we say that. It's, that's amigurumi or whichever terms we use tends to be done in cotton mm -hmm. cotton is really i mean i don't like crocheting with it at all it's stiff Sticky. yeah yeah stiff you have to pull it really tight so your tension's got to get tight so you don't see your stuffing through it so your hands end up aching and right. then as a result the actual toy you make is stiff it hasn't got movement to it the big thing about using a wool is the fact that if you if you follow the instructions so you've got this nice very little sewing up nice soft movement in them it means that they're just really tactile you don't want to put them down often i find yeah. people stand and they're just holding them while they're talking to me because that's they why are they're tactile. great for for younger yeah. kids as well my i can imagine just my little ones yeah especially so um them. again there's videos for all of this and it's explained in the book is i only stuff the ends of the arms that makes it very very different as well when you look at it but it's perfect for holding on to them and yeah. then being carried around but it I also means that. that they all sit up perfectly so it's if you're going to put them on a desk or on a dashboard or for an adult sitting around the home they all sit up and perfectly balanced like that because of that position of the legs um, and not putting stuffing in them they are adorable right sloth please right so natasha the sloth is here um, and she's really with me um, to also say hi to um tasha our tough team member i'm sure is watching <laughs> um so hey natasha gosh. the sloth this is our aaron weight of yarn so it's the size up she's one of the brand new ones um, that's in the book and in this kit you will also get um a patch so coming on to talking about toff patches, um, toff patches are oh, collectible brilliant. things that people really like to have as a bit of a souvenir of their make. Um, so this is my team member Tasha's um, patch. You will get this included with the kit. So you can applique that onto, you know, whatever you want. Absolutely. You know, jackets, yeah, or, or you can have bags. it on your project bag. You can put it onto these tote bags oh, that they come idea. with. Um, so with this one, you're going to get lots of the Aran weight of yarn. So if you are somebody that's watching the show, but you don't fancy working in the double knit um, with that bundle that I showed your first time round. Here you're going to get the Aran thickness of yarn. So you will get 400 grams. Um, so you can try that size up. Um, obviously it makes them much, much bigger and it is a five millimeter hook that you would need um, in order to finish that off. So you're going to get 200 grams of the fudge, the cocoa and the camel. In reality, you will use very little of the cocoa and the camel. So you'll have that to go on to your next project in that Aran weight of yarn. Fabulous. You get your pattern as well, your lovely pattern card, um, all of your instructions. Very popular. Um, this wasn't in the original book then. This was wasn't in the one. original book. Yeah. This is a new one. Um, again, the, the hardest thing when I have to write those stories in the book is writing them about right. people that are real. Um, <laughs> because obviously it's quite easy to do the fictional ones, but then I hit somebody like Tash. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Toff team member Tash that I know a lot of you meet as well, then her story in the book really is about her. Look at the toes. Yeah. Yes. So this is the <laughs> yeah the definite two-toed sloth um, rather than the three-toed sloth, not to be confused with Harriet the three-toed sloth. This is the two-toed sloth. <laughs> Seventy-five pounds. This is a level three. Yeah, because you've got multi colours and and you've got the loop, got the loop stitches. stitches. Yep. But don't be put off by that because there's lots of video tutorials and things like there that. There absolutely well. is, and they're really it is easy. Like if you've ever crocheted, a lot of people say to me, especially at a show that we're, like we were at last weekend. Well, I've only ever made one of those granny squares. A granny square is much harder than this crochet. <gasps> yeah. There's no charts oh. involved in this. There's no changing of stitches. There's no trying to find the hole. This is easier than a granny square. Sewing the parts up as well. Yep. What do you use to sew them up? So you just use a metal wool needle. And what's um, lovely, because like I said with seamless. the stuffing, yeah, is the fact that when what helps make them baby safe as well as then make them easier to sew is you're just putting your stuffing at the bottom like that. And then what you're doing is just over sewing on one side of the top and then flipping it and over sewing on the other side. And that means that it's a really, really strong join. The stuffing safely locked in down there at the bottom and it's not hard to sew on because you're not trying to hold lots of 3D shapes together while you're sewing. You're actually just taking something flat and over sewing it onto something 3D. Which one are you doing next, sorry? Pangolin. Jane, so she's Jane. here on the front. <laughs> 
So I love that they've got, you know, this our human one names, is Jane. probably the most unusual make in the whole of the menagerie. Um, oh, and this kit is, so is cool. slightly different. So I'll just get this. This is one for somebody. Oh, I was going to ask you about toy filling. You've yeah. You've us out as so well. So we We've do do this. toy, the soy um, filling is separate on the show as well. But okay. this is for somebody. If you were buying this as a gift, it would be great. Um, especially if it is already a oh, crocheter. But you actually get the whole book in here. Now we're saying oh. that it is a Jane pack. That's only because I happen to have made Jane from these ingredients. This actually could be an anyone pack. Because what you're getting is the whole book included you're getting 100 grams of the camel you're also getting your eye threads and whoa, your whoa, nose whoa. threads you've got your hook you've got your needle and you get your bag of stuffing so if you get the book i can do the rabbit if i want yes you can do the rabbit you could do the rabbit you could do any one that you wanted that's what's <gasps> exciting is that yarn can become anyone we called it jane the pangolin only because she's one of the most unusual animals in that menagerie but she's right up there as one of the hardest as well so this would be a great box for somebody that was already a crocheter that you know might like the challenge of making jane the pangolin but nothing in here says that it's for a pangolin it's just the ingredients. So this could equally be Emma the bunny. It could be an elephant. It could be a hippo. It could be a pig. It could be a horse. It can be anything. This is a really, really good kit to get then. If you want to, you know, if you haven't already um, got the book, get the book. Or if you're going to gift it to somebody, if you've got the book already, that is a brilliant kit. Remember, you've paid your postage and packaging already for the day. That's £3.95 all day long. And you're going to get it in the lovely box you're also going to get your wool needle. To yeah, so it it's, it means you've got absolutely everything in there. Have There's nothing the right else you need to it. source or add in your basket separately or try and find. You've got all your yarn and that's enough for one and a half animals, as yeah. I said. So the whole of your first one and then half for going on to level two. You've got everything you need, even your eye threads and then your bag of stuffing will just come separately to the box. Fabulous. Oh, you get that as well? Yeah, you do. The bag of stuffing that you I've just had in your hand, you actually get that as well and that's enough to oh. make five animals. So that's oh. plenty to be getting on with. Brilliant. £45, go for it. Um, you've got the, you do get the lovely little bag as well. They are adorable. They're absolutely brilliant. And I must say, your crochet hooks are so soft. Yeah, they are. And I can't emphasise more what a great tool they are, not just for actually doing the stitches with this end, but actually for this style of crochet, what you're going to be doing quite a lot of is pushing stuffing in small, small holes. <laughs> um, and that's what the handle is great for too. When you've got this kind of soft grip handle, it means that you can push that stuffing down into the bottom of those legs before you sew them on really easily so you do get a three millimeter hook included, included in the kit yes, you do. so yeah. yes it says that this is the jane yeah. one but don't be put off by that if you think oh no but i'm a beginner because yeah. can i remind you with this color you could do the bunny what well, other ones are in level one where you only need one the color. wallaby um there's there's tons in level one you could even do a bear in brown so say if we look back through level one quickly because any of these would be just as easy for a beginner. So you could go for Emma the Bunny, the absolute classic, obviously. Um, the cat would work well. It'd be a yeah. bit of a ginger tabby in level one. It would just be, rather than being a polar bear, it would be a bear, bear. that would work in that colour. I mean, it's an unusual <laughs> colour for an elephant, but you still could if you fancy. Pig could be in that colour. You do get pigs in that colour. Milo the dog would work oh, really well lovely. in that colour. So you don't need to decide yet. Um, that would be the one that would just give you that colour and absolutely everything you need to make it. And then you can decide once you get... Oh, lion would be lovely in that colour. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do the oh, whole thing. still level that, one. Still level say. one. But it's loopy. you're not changing colour. Oh, I should get a chance to demo this because I'll show you just how yes, easy please. that is. That's that chain stitch. <gasps> You're just doing chain. Um, but that would work really well in that colour as well. You just do the mane in the same colour. Um, uh, and can you do that whole animal with that one ball? With that one ball, yeah. Brilliant. I'll oh, get this kit. This is such brilliant value. Yeah. It's a, that is a really good way to start because if you've not got any of the bits and pieces, mm -hmm. it means you don't have to think about those. Well, I'd be thinking, right, I need to make sure I have the hooks in. I need to yeah. get myself a needle. I need. To and get it's frustrating to not have the needle because you might do all the hard work with the crochet and then be annoyed yeah. that you can't do the final bit. Yeah, it's all there for you in that box, and it's only £45, which is fabulous to get going. Um, well done, everybody who is getting that kit. And just going back to the book, launching it today on Sewing Street. No one else really has this until the 9th of April, so we are really, really lucky as Gemporia Craft. I know it's going to be going on Hobby Maker later, and they are already coming in being like, iron everything up. I'm like, hang on, hang on, it's going on <laughs> Sewing Street first. This is ours first. It's only £17.99, and remember, that features all 50 animals all 50 animals I would make the most of this whilst it's in the live show because I don't know 
I don't know, once Hobby Maker take our stock later on this afternoon, I don't know what happens to it on our website. So go for it now whilst you can. It's just $17.99. And I do like that you've got it in those levels and you've got animals that... Right, such a range of animals. Yeah, it really is. Range. You're not, yeah, you're not limited to thinking about the fact that it's far, that it's farm animals or that it's um, woodland animals. You've got oh. a complete mix of different ones, so that you can try, yeah, lots of different techniques and start to build your own collection. I bet Edward is spoiled with all of these. Does he have all yeah, of them? Yeah, he, he is. Like, obviously, he's coming through the tail end of that now as he heads towards 12 and secondary school. <laughs> um, but my daughter, Alex, as well as seven, Aww. she absolutely loves them. So Edward now, he's quite picky. He likes the very unusual ones. Yeah. In fact, he admitted that his favourite was Richard the pig, which was a, which was a real... Like, during this photo shoot, he was like, actually, my favourite's Richard the pig, so I was quite surprised by that one. That's a level one. Brilliant, yeah. I love it. Um, 17 we will show how to do the, the lion's yeah, mane. Lion's mane, okay. yeah, absolutely. Right, what are your next graphics, by the way? Um, what do you want to launch next? Shall be the porcupine <laughs> we're going to come to in a moment. We're going to just show, is it all right if we do the lion's mane? Because it's a level one and it's something that you might skip and think, actually, no, I don't want to do that because of the mane. We'll show you how to do it. And you can absolutely do it with that box. And it means that with that starter box that says Jane, you could make Rufus the lion instead. So this is a um, lion. Um, it's not complete. He is one, one ear short and one leg short right now. But I'm just going to show you how you would add that mane on. And this would also go for how you fleece the sheep. So one that looks, it looks complicated, but it's dead easy. So once you've actually stuffed and sewn the whole thing up, all you do is you put your hook back in through the surface of the fabric like that. Get the yarn that you're going to work the fleece or the mane with, and you're just going to chain. How many? Is it will tell you in the pattern, okay. so it depends on the design. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it will never be kind of less than three, never yeah. be more than 12. Yeah. And then all you do is you just go back into the surface of the fabric like that. That's it. So you can watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, there really isn't a lot of counting involved at all. And it actually looks better the more random more you are. More sort of shaggy it yeah, is. Yeah, so, so long as you spread them out, it's not that you're doing them into every stitch. <laughs> the recommended technique would be about two stitches or two rows away. And that is how you create the lion's mane. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, we've got it. Yeah, we can yeah. see it there. Look, Ollie, can we show him? Look, what's his name? Rufus. He's a plumber, actually. A bad plumber <laughs> uh, is his story. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a Rufus bad plumber then? Uh, no, I don't. I do know a different plumber, but he's not called Rufus. <laughs> oh, so he's the bad one that yeah, you've now the actually one. just yeah. changed the name so he doesn't get upset one day when he finds out there's a yeah. there's an animal made after him. <laughs> so that is all you're doing, and that's why it remains in a level one. It great. looks really complicated. Obviously, it gives you a great texture, change of colour, but you're not actually changing colour or dealing with more colour at once. Did you, you just... say you use that technique in another one as well? All the sheep are done like that. So um, there's, there's some really stunning sheep over there. There's Hank and there's Simon. That's exactly the same technique. You just do the chains to add the fleece on at the end. Oh, my word. I'm so excited for you to all go on your crochet journey. If you haven't started, then Kerry has definitely inspired us all. And like you said, I'm not going to lie, when I saw this all being set up, I thought, right, I'm going to be so out of my depth here. And this is something that's just not going to be for me. Whereas, actually, this is for everybody. Yeah, it really is. And I can't emphasize that more that's what's made it so popular that's what's made toft as popular as it is now is the fact that people can't believe that honestly in the 15 minute demo i gave you you've got everything yeah. to make any of the level one animals that's Fantastic. it yeah. um right the toy stuffing does come a part of the 45 pound kit but if you do want it extra if you do want extra how many animals did you say that this five of the double knit ones so five of the size that i've got here in fact it yeah. does actually say it on the back um to help us all out one large one so if it's the aaron size the size of that sloth you'd need one of those right. and then you'd need two bags to do the giant size the giant right. size six pounds just six pounds it's worth stocking up if you've already um if you have already po paid your posted in packaging go for it and it is super super soft yeah it is super soft and it isn't um obviously there are so many different types of stuffing but what after you've done all that hard work doing all of those stitches don't be tempted to shove something clumpy inside okay. you do want it to be nice and soft big tips from me when using the stuffing is break it up before you put it in don't be tempted to roll it into a ball uh, okay. and then put it in because you will feel those lumps afterwards so keep it nice and loose and broken and then just use that tail end so say you were stuffing a leg like this what you would do is just use that handle of that hook and that's what they're great for because oh, it's not yes. just a tool yeah to use that end you can then just push the stuffing in like that and then that is ready to sew on your animal super quick oh i love it absolutely love it just six pounds for your toy stuffing premium toy stuffing and it comes in the nice little bag now you want to do the 
The porcupine. Porcupine, Shelby. So here's another new one that isn't in the book. So this again is for people that um, might already have the book, don't want to buy another copy of the book. So Shelby, he will actually be living in his it? bag as well. Oh, yeah. we've got the bag, come on. So he looks really unusual in his texture, but it's another nice, easy one. It's a black and white one. Oh, that's Blake there. <laughs> There, Shelby, that's him, that's him. <laughs> right, Shelby is a prehensile porcupine, a very specific oh, I did type of porcupine. <gasps> um, and it obviously, again, looks really complicated. What yarn do you use to do this? So what you're going to do... You're gonna, this isn't a different yarn? Or... Uh, no, it's actually holding two strands together. Right. So in this kit, it's a very, very unusual kit, it will give you the miniature weight of yarn that Toff do. So you're going to get three balls of your steel, which is the colour for his main body. You're going to get your oatmeal, which is for that front of his face and his ears. But then you're actually going to get 50 grams of toft cream fine and 50 grams of toft charcoal fine. And what you do to create the spikes is you actually just hold the two threads together as you're doing the stitches. So it looks really complicated, but it's all just still really Again, really the easy. chain stitch like you did the main. Like we did before, yeah. And so ah. it looks advanced, but it's actually really easy. So you've crocheted the tail and then you do that on top of you it. You do that on top, like I just did with the Oh, mine. brilliant. And why I wanted to include this is because this is the weight of yarn that would make those miniature ones. So if any of you have gone for the book and you go for this kit, you won't by any means use all of this fine yarn to do his spikes. And that means you could make small versions of zebras, pandas, <gasps> cows, and so it really, don't think about it just as the porcupine. I really wanted to give you both of these thinnest yarns. So this little guy here, this little elephant, oh, it means you could yeah. make miniature pandas and zebras using all your leftover oh, once you've great. made your porcupine. Yeah, yeah, because I bet this doesn't take up much yarn, actually. Hardly it? any yarn. So to make a mini, it's you're only using really 12, 12 grams to 20 grams absolute maximum. So you'll be able to make yeah quite a few little minis with your leftovers. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, absolutely make the most of it. You do obviously get your card as well with your pattern on there. Um, OK, shall we do the orangutan? <laughs> Yeah, so Blake is in there. Now, this, the next pattern we're going to see is in the book. Um, so you will get this one in the book. And this was really a chance for me to talk about revising and revision and what I've done to patterns. So Blake the orangutan was yeah. the first thing that Aww. I ever completely crocheted in loop stitch. Um, and I think it's one that probably divides people between the first book and the second book. But I'll just explain really why I decided to revise it. So the original, the first one I ever made, it truly was the first thing that I'd ever used this loop stitch technique, which again, might get a chance to show you um, very quickly so you can see how to do that. And I was so proud of having mastered the loop stitch and done it all over his body that I didn't really think too much about his head. Yeah. I just finished it off. So what I really wanted to revisit with this new edition, and this pattern is in the book as the revised edition, was making it a true male orangutan. So it has those big um, flanges around the face like that. It's that proper, not too cartoony, it's mm. a proper, a bit more realistic orangutan. And I think that then sits with the rest of my designs even better than the original did. So this will give you a kit for this. So you're going to get 100 grams of the fudge and obviously you'll get the camel in contrast as well. Um, you'll get the pattern separately with it, um, but it just means that you'll have a chance, I guess, to make one that for me really summarizes the release of 10 years, because it was one that I was allowed to revise and really apply everything that I'd learned mm. over 10 years back to the design. So do you still do the body as a crochet yeah, let me, body? I'll, sh I'll show you really. So you don't add it on afterwards. You actually do it as you go in. And I'll ah. show you because it really isn't hard. So he, it's so cool, he would be it? a level three. Yeah. And the only thing that makes him a level three is those loops. But all you're doing, sorry, I'm such a, you see how messy I am when I do a <laughs> show like this. So what makes him a level three is a loop stitch. To do one of those loops, you put your hook in the stitch that you're going to do a loop in. And you need to do a thumbs up like that. Then you take your thumb over the top of the yarn and back towards you, and that creates a loop on your thumb. And then all you're going to do is your normal double crochet, but you leave that on your thumb while you're doing it. So yarn over, as we would normally do as part of our double crochet, pass that loop to your other hand so it keeps it in the front of the fabric, oh. and then just finish your double crochet off. Oh, that yeah. is That's it. So even when I say level three, nothing is hard. The only thing that makes him hard is the fact that you... 
in the pattern it will say to say do them every third stitch so if you're thinking about your numbers here to make sure you've got the right number here doing this on top of that is going to make that a Another bit trickier but once of. you've made one level one you'll be able to do it no problem yeah. at all so don't feel like you've got to approach the book by going right the way through level one and then doing level two and then level three i mean by all means a lot of people do and i think they quite enjoy that yeah but if you once you've done a level one if you fall in love with a project like this blake you can just dive straight in on level three after you've just practiced those stitches once to make sure you know how to count them before you've got the added complexity of putting the loops in right oh my gosh these are brilliant yeah. aren't they so I you do them. it as you go along that's it it's not the as well yeah. discounted as well down to 33 pounds if you love the orangutan the revised version is the pattern that you're going to get it is included in the book but if you just want it separately um with the corresponding wool as well it is there in your kit for 33 pounds um We've got literally a couple more kits that I believe that we've got and some tools um, and then we can revisit the book again. What other kits have we not done yet, Ben? We haven't done the African Painted Dog. So that should be there too. I believe that might be on that bottom shelf. So I put Savannah the African Painted Dog on. Yes, there she is. Oh. Because it's another complicated one, but that was new for this book. So this isn't available at all. It hasn't ever been available before. It's just with this book. And this is a level three, um, because you're going to be doing color changing and then loop stitching on that tail. This gives me the excuse to show you quickly how you would do a color change as well. Which, oh yeah. Again, it's very, very easy. So if you're doing a colour change in this style of crochet, all you're going to do is swap. Now, I haven't quite got the right thickness there, but I'll use this colour so you can see the theory. Say you were going to do a colour change. As part of your normal double crochet stitch, you'd go in the stitch like that, yarn over to the point where you've got your two loops on your hook, and all you do is drop the colour you're using and pick up the next colour. That, honestly, is it. And then you'd go in working that stitch in the new colour. Hang on, have I just missed something? Or is it literally that, That's it. that simple? That's level two. So now you, I've actually truly in this nice long um, hour and a half show been able to show you the whole of level one techniques, the whole of level two techniques and the whole of level three techniques. And obviously you can watch the show back at any yeah. point, but also you do lots we of do online do separate, content. Yeah, we do separate video tuition for all of it, where obviously you can rewind wind it and replay it as much as you want to. What do you get for Savannah then? So Savannah, you will get the camel um, yarn. So you're going to get 50 grams of the camel and then you'll get the charcoal and the cream, um, which is your double knit ingredients for her. And then obviously get the separate card for her as well fabulous but she is in the book as well lovely uh, yes i know a lot of people who are getting the book and uh, maybe for friends you must have a lot of people who say oh, will you mm. teach me or will you make one of these for me will you do this whereas actually just get them the book get it's them like, the book and then they can do it themselves <laughs> <laughs> um the book is just 17 pounds 99 it is the new edition it hasn't even been published or printed yet um elsewhere we've got the first look at it here at Gemporia Craft, well, at Sewing Street first, then Jan, um, it's going to be over on Hobby Maker later. But if you do want all of those brand new patterns, there's actually 17 new animals included in the new edition. Um, of course, that now makes 50 easy to make soft animal crochet toys, which are suitably, uh, they are perfectly um, suitable for young children. They don't have safety eyes. They're all embroidered on. It's lovely, lovely 100% um, wool yarn that, 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 that they're worked up with. And they are absolutely lovely that they all have their own little personalities all have their own little stories, all named differently. Great photography as well. I just love the layout of this book. I think it's easy to work from, isn't it? It is, and I really didn't want to break that in the 10 year edition. So I really, really tried to keep it true to how it was originally because it wasn't broken. It wasn't that I had to revisit yeah. it to fix anything. It really was just exactly that. It was updating the photography because cameras and print quality is so much better yeah. in that decade. So the pictures are now absolutely as crisp as you could ever want them. You can see every stitch. Um, you've also got your techniques. So this, don't forget, is a, be is a beginner friendly book. It's for everybody, everyone who has never done crochet before, right down to how to hold your crochet hook, your mm -hmm. basic skills. There's photography, step-by-step uh, -step tutorials throughout the book, as well as just your pattern guide. So, I mean, that is, again, a book in itself, isn't it? It is, and even this, uh, so here you've got a picture of all the backs of them, <laughs> because sewing of the tails is something that, obviously, it's lovely having that picture of the front, but I wanted to make sure I included a picture of yeah. where you would sew all those tails on the back as well. Oh, that is a really good idea. Um, uh, you've got the face details, how to do the embroidery on. Yeah, it is. And again, like looking at that, it's amazing what a difference it makes, really, in terms of sewing their eyes on. Just using that black thread, you can turn the 
personality of your um, oh, yes. yeah of your animal exactly how you want it to be. So you've given options of how to embroider the face as well, yep. not just one fits all. I think everybody's is even though they've got the same body and same arms, everyone's is going to have their own yeah, sort of quirks. Will, absolutely, yeah. You'll find that you get your style with them. My big warning is how addictive they are. Like I can't <laughs> warn you enough. You don't really want to make one. The second you finish one, you're like straight away, you want to start the next one. Oh, enjoy. Honestly, I'd love to see any of your photographs. And I know that you are all, always, always say, please share yeah, please them. Share. Yeah. Please do send in your messages and your photographs. Um, just to reiterate, the brand new book is £17.99. How? When was this first, did you say, Edwards Menagerie? When was that first launch then? Um, so it, ten years, did you it say? It was ten years ago, yeah, so in wow. 2014. So, yeah, when Edwards was two. And yeah. I suppose your journey's changed drastically. Yeah, it's ab since then, it's absolutely changed everything. I mean, when I wrote the first book, I couldn't crochet really that well. Obviously, I could crochet animals, but I couldn't really crochet much else. I hadn't ever really taught people face-to-face -to, -face to crochet, whereas since then, I've run hundreds of workshops, even for up to kind of 300 people in wow. one-go workshops. So I've taught so many more people face-to-face -face how to crochet. Toff now do the 12 colours. We didn't do that originally. Um, so it was on a much smaller palette, the original ones. So it really is just, it's been a lovely chance for me to revisit and just bring it right up to date, make it even better as a classic going And forward. I suppose doing face-to-face -face tutorials, you get to hear, you know, what it is that people... Oh yeah, absolutely. Someone... Like I, I've now put into this book everything that I realised I could have been better in that first one, like the lines that people struggle with. Yeah. The, the first one didn't actually include how to hold the hook and yarn, weirdly, right. because I I didn't I'd almost let frog that and yeah. didn't think that that Presumed was necessarily a given. Yeah. So yeah, I've been able to put all of that in. Um, and I guess just, yeah, with the tweaking, make them even simpler as well. So it's even better for a beginner. Brilliant. There's hundreds and hundreds of you that have already got this. In fact, I think we're now eating into the hobby maker's <laughs> stash. I'm sorry, Andy Love. He's really annoyed with me already. He's very excited about the show. But we're eating into your stash because they have been so popular this morning. Well, and everybody who's got involved, if you haven't yet got your book, there is still chance. I'm amazed at the value for money. Bearing in mind, you know, your pattern cards, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be looking at selling these for no well, not at all and it really is pattern. yeah it 50 patterns will keep you busy for such a long time yeah. that you're going to get so much entertainment from it and that's before you even start to make them in different sizes that's just if you decided to make them all in one yarn thickness and it isn't yeah. a different pattern that you're going to need to be able to make the family it is literally the different size crochet hook and yeah. the different yarn that yarn you thickness. use yeah <gasps> all you've got to remember is you will need a lot more yarn to make a big one and a small one yes yeah, yeah. but these are super chunky aren't they yeah so it's going to still Come, uh, you know, work quite quickly. Yeah, it though, doesn't take any longer to make a big one from a small one. In fact, the small one probably is a bit slower because because the stitches are a bit smaller. So you have to usually slow yourself down a little bit. Right. Honestly, I do love these these larger ones. Bearing in mind, we're looking at thirty five pence a pattern in that book. Thirty five pence a pattern for all of those animals and the animals that you're not going to find in lots of different crochet books. Do you know what I mean? No, so it gives you all the classics. Like, so it's obviously got a dog, it's got a sheep, it's got a cat. Um, it's then got like lots of apes. So you've got chimpanzees, you've got loads of farm animals like donkeys, goats. Um, so it allows you to really theme them. So say you were wanting to make a few of them, you could do safari because you're going to have the um, the giraffe, you're going to have the zebra, um, you're going to have the bison, you're going to have lots of different ones in there, wildebeest. Then if yeah. you wanted to do a jungle, you could do the monkeys, you could do the orangutans. If you did farm, you could then combine the oh, pony the nanny goat. Yeah, with the nanny goat and the sheep. In fact, I should probably say hi to my gran. The gran's my actual, um, that's my actual gran, the nanny goat story, just to give Audrey. a Audrey! When, when your book arrives, hi, Audrey. you can have a little smile um, about that one. Can you read, can you read this watches. one? Are we, can yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. One? So, Audrey. I feel Hi, really Audrey, bad for my grand now. This is really my grand. Um, she's um, 90. Um, oh, Audrey God. is a sharp-witted old goat with a penchant for sarcasm. She's a bit of a prankster and will take a schoolboy trick further than any 11-year-old would dare. <laughs> she takes all her hot drinks black and bitter, this is, this is very true, and saves up her annual dairy quota to be redeemed in one big cream liqueur binge in the days surrounding Christmas. Absolutely. Children have always found her a bit scary, as it's impossible to judge whether she's being serious or whether she's just got hold of your leg and is dragging you down the river towards a tasty-looking piece of foliage. Audrey Sound. That's my grand. Great yep. gal. She is, she is. She's, um, I'll be seeing her this afternoon, so I look forward to that have one. You, have you taught her to crochet? Right so, 
<laughs> That's what's weird, actually, is it's not... I learnt to crochet using a YouTube video 12 years ago. Right. And that's where my journey started. Normally it runs, My mum can't crochet, my mum can't knit. Neither of my maternal or paternal um, grandmothers could knit or crochet either. I mean, I think they can knit of sorts, but okay. not necessarily follow a pattern. So it's not that... Yeah, I didn't... It's not in your blood. It's not in me like that at all. I just found my thing. I found a building block in that stitch and I could suddenly make 3D shape really, really quickly in a way that I couldn't as a knitter. It's not that I ever knitted toys and then turned them into crochet patterns or anything like that. As soon as I had the stitch, I was, I was off. I could make shape really I'm quickly. I'm thinking in the world of, you know, ever since you must have seen a difference in the last four years since mm -hmm. lockdown, mm -hmm. you know, all after something that is quite mindful. How many hours do you lose scrolling or yeah. sitting snacking? I just said, I've got to do this so that I stop snacking. Yeah, absolutely. Hands moving without and it's so satisfying. Like to say that you can make even just the satisfaction. Well, this one's inside out, so I probably shouldn't show you uh, this one too much. But the satisfaction. How do you know the difference? Do they so look that's why I had this out? here. Like, again, I have ever, had everything prepped just in case. So, yeah, if we're talking about inside out kind of thing basically this one here is the right side out just to give you an idea of what, what that white tracking line is is that's my stitch marker you know where you saw me pull up that yarn yeah. on everyone that's my stitch marker so if you do that you can just pull that oh, out at the, at end, the end like that yeah and then it's invisible you can't see it at all but the right side you should see horizontal lines like that and the wrong side you should see vertical lines like that now Confessions time. The first five animals I ever made were entirely inside out and I couldn't <laughs> see the difference. Then probably the following five were half and half and I also couldn't see Does the difference. Does that matter? So don't worry at all. The other way to spot it though is if your tail is ah. on the outside, it's likely to be inside out. Okay. And then with that decrease that I showed you, it is invisible on the right side. So you can't see it on this side, but you see these little lines on the wrong side. That yeah. is um, the inside of your product. And the best thing, is the fact that you don't have to sew in any ends. So there is always an inside, and that means if you're doing those colour change ones where there's loads of mess on the inside, you don't have to sew in any ends or cut anything or worry about that at all. You just pop them all in on the inside. Tools. Ben, have you got our crochet hooks, please? Now, are these individually or are they? They are all available individual. individually, um, and it depends oh. on the size of project that you want to make. So the Toft Essential one is the three mil. This is what, you can never have too many of these. Right. <laughs> Everywhere you want to Do go. Do you have multiple three mil hooks then? Oh gosh. I must have a hundred. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I have the one by the bed, one under the bed, one <laughs> on the edge of every sofa, uh, one in every pocket, one in my makeup bag. Yeah, I can never have too many three mil hooks because that means using a double knit yarn, you can make whatever you need at any time. And so remind us, that's mil. what's going to make all the animals, all that, are the animals that are on set. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. It's a double knit yarn and a three mil hook. Really can't have too many of those. Then to go smaller, so to go to that little small size of elephant that that's I've hidden from mini, us um, somewhere, I don't know where I've put her, that would be a two millimeter yarn and a fine yarn. Um, so that's to go smaller. To go bigger then, an Aran weight of yarn, you're going to need a five mil. Is that our sloth? Yep, so that's your sloth to go up to that size. And then your biggest one to go to the biggest, biggest elephant on set, that would be your chunky yarn and an eight mil hook. The five mils on set at the moment, which is to make the sloth. And then if you love the big elephant, your super chunky yarn um, is again there on screen. And those of you that haven't worked with Toft crochet hooks before, they have this lovely super soft coating. They do, they? and they're flat. So um, traditionally, a lot of crochet hooks are a really skinny piece of metal that you've got to hold on to. And it's not very comfortable because you're having to hold... People worry that they've got to hold it quite tight to get hold of it. Having a bigger handle is really easy. And having it flat like this, I actually much prefer to a totally round one as well. It means that the important thing when you're doing this crochet is to be able to get a really comfortable 180 degree turn like that. Because when you're doing those stitches, when you yarn over, you've got your hook upwards, you need to be able to really comfortably turn it downwards. And having a flat handle like that makes all the difference. It means that you can be comfy. And I must say, you know, when you start something new and you end up getting almost like a blister. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. All on, right on your hands because you're holding, you yeah. create so much tension. So having that lovely soft, and my big message is, if you're using a pure wool and you're using the right tools, you don't need to pull those stitches tight. So if okay. you're sitting there and you're thinking you're battling with it and you're trying to pull it tight all the time, just relax. The yarn does the hard work for you. When it's springy and bouncy, it means that you it goes under tension when you're working your stitches and when you finish the stitch, it bounces back. Do you see how much yes. spring there is in that? And that's what means you're going to get a soft closed fabric where you can't see your stitches, um, but you don't have to pull it tight on every stitch. Now, I know that we started the show 
show at a sort of funny time, didn't we? At half past the hour, which is a bit unusual because we've done an hour and a half show today. So for anybody who missed the start of the show, mm -hmm. for anybody who is not a crocheter or hasn't tried crocheting round, if I said I've only done, you know, a granny square before, yep. what would you be saying to people? I'd be saying <laughs> Edward's Menagerie is the absolute best place. Uh, it's the best book to start. Um, it will teach you how to crochet from the very beginning. We so say it's a bestseller. You don't, yeah, it yeah. honestly has been, yeah, a crochet bestseller for 10 years. And this is it even better than it has been before. It's set up in levels. So you've got 12 level ones at the start, then level two and level three. But in honesty, even the level threes aren't difficult at all. All you need is a crochet hook and you can also use any thickness of yarn. So in the book, it fully explains the fact that you can swap up and swap down your thickness of yarn to make them get bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. I've made them all with a very limited um, natural colour palette, which is what makes them all so soft and makes them sit really well as a group. But you can obviously use any thickness or type of yarn with those patterns as well. So you can make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them just using this one stitch. Double and I do love the fact that you can make your family. So, you know, me and my husband and my little one and the tw I've got twins as well. So it'd be so lovely to be to able have to have a do. little family group. Yeah. yeah, absolutely lovely. And it really is one stitch. So it's the double crochet stitch, the British double crochet stitch. That's all you need. And think about it like a little Lego brick. You're building them as 3D shapes. So they're not flat where you have to do lots yep. of sewing up or bits and pieces like that. It's a 3D hollow shape that you pop the stuffing in, very minimal sewing up to put them together. They all look great as a family as well because the body shapes are the same same yeah. um, and the colour palette is beautiful have a look at all of the toff yarn that we've had on the show there are a couple of great kits available as well underneath us but for me it's about getting the patterns for less than 50 pence a pattern getting that whole collection because yes someone's going to ask you uh can you make me a hippo can you make me a dog that looks like this can you make me a pig yes you've got your classic animals in there but you've put in some really unusual yeah there are yeah well. so it's great as well if you're teaching children about animals you can take yeah. them by surprise because they might not know what an african painted dog is and a lot of the more unusual ones are actually endangered species so read up about pangolins as well because they are very much um oh. yeah a critically endangered species <gasps> of pangolin so it's a great one to raise awareness yeah. and actually talk about environmental issues with animals like that as well. All of your patterns are there, techniques in the back. Of course, follow Kerry and Toft on social media and you're going to get lots of great video tutorials as well and help along the way, as well as seeing everybody else's <laughs> animals for Yeah, that's the best thing. Like That's something that when, when this book was first published 10 years ago, Weirdly, a hashtag wasn't really a thing in the same way that it is now. Like, yeah. if you think about how long ago that was when yeah. I first signed this off. It was 12 years ago. And at the time, it felt like I didn't quite understand it, I'll be very honest. Did you when put, we put the hashtag? Yeah, there yeah. was a hashtag in the original, but I wasn't entirely sure, sure what, that why I was doing to. that and if that was going to be a big thing in the future. But that hashtag in that first book has meant that I can now see hundreds of thousands wow. of people's pictures that have been made using this across so many different languages. Well, it's not about the UK, as in you can can watch people that have made them, yeah, from different versions in their language, editions of these books, but the same. Well, you've pattern. got over 80,000 followers on your Instagram, haven't you? Yes, and lots have. of people who have, uh, you've inspired to crochet. And I know hundreds and hundreds of you who have got the book today will not be disappointed, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Also, to the 150 people who have got it in their basket, who are sitting on the fence or have forgotten to check out because you're watching Kerry, now is the time to check out because in a few minutes, we're handing over to Hobby Maker. They will load it onto their pre-order and it might disappear off our website. So just be aware, if you've got it in your basket and you want it under our postage and packaging today, your daily postage and packaging, check out now. That is your cue to check out because over 150 of you have got it in your basket. Oh, I've absolutely loved it. Is there anything else that we want to quickly recap, Ben? I'm going to be busy signing them all, aren't I? That's you are. <laughs> so they oh are all arriving as signed editions as well, just to re remind you all. Yeah, Thank they you will for be reminding us of editions. that. Uh, so I'll be busy tonight getting them all ready for tomorrow morning. And they will be leaving us as soon as that. They're going to be going straight out the door. You, yeah, you've got to get a good pen read at the ready because you've got hundreds and hundreds to sign. And you're going to be on Hobby Maker at six o'clock Six till seven tonight, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. As I say, I know that um, Alex is probably going to be, or Laura's going to be popping them on to pre-order, isn't she? So definitely grab them whilst they're on Sewing Street. If you want to make the most of your one postage and packaging throughout the day, check out now. There's toy stuffing, there's crochet hooks, there's kits, there's all sorts all underneath us. Andy Love, can you crochet? No, I can't. Not yet. You will be able to crochet <laughs> yes. this yes. evening. 
<laughs> 15 minutes, that's all you're going to need, and you can learn to crochet at home all of these animals. Laura's like, I can't wait to learn to crochet later. This is going to be so much fun. Um, thank you all ever so much. Thank yeah. you, thank everyone you. at Tufton. Thank you, Kerry, yeah. for coming on. This is amazing. We've absolutely loved having you here. We have got the menu for tomorrow, I believe. Who's here tomorrow? Delphine Brooks is going to be here bright and early, 8 o'clock, with a brand new um, launch for you at 8 o'clock. John Scott's going to be joining Delphine and Catherine Wright. And then you've also got a new guest launch at 10 a.m. So the Crafty Witches are going to be here. Now, that is a jam-packed day full of guests. So John's going to have uh, great fun tomorrow. Do make sure you stay tuned where you are, though, for more crafting on Hobby Maker. Andy Love is about to take over and he's got a fabulous show. But you will see lovely Kerry later on. You're going to have a few hours now, going to have some lunch. Show you some crochet, obviously. Of course. <laughs> yeah, Make a few more animals. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you um, later at six o'clock. Thank you all so much for your company today. Thank you so much for Wendy Orlando as well. It was great to see her, as well as Jane Greenough. We've had a fab day, haven't we? Andy, we'll see you right after this. <laughs> Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app, now Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way